Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Nga. <laughs> I, in no reality did I think I was going to need a part three, <laughs> but we need a part three. This is part three. Hello everybody, welcome to part three of the 2023 Cursed Conlang Circus! I'm I'm losing my mind. I did not <laughs> I did not think Oh god <laughs> To those of you who are waking up the next morning to this still playing That's me. That's literally going to be me. <laughs> because part two is going to go throughout the nighttime Arizona time, and part three will be playing when I wake up on the morning of Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas Eve to everyone who, like me, is waking up in the morning to the Cursed Conlang Circus still playing. <laughs> okay, let's let's finish this. Let's finish this. I don't want to touch this freaking jacket for another year. Goodbye. Look into my eyes. Does, does this convey what the circus has done to me? As Squidward once said, even my bags have bags. There we go. Here we are. The last day. <laughs> Let's hope it is the last day. It, it better be. I'm also I'm wondering if people can see your setup get, getting predominantly more scuffed as I, the video goes on. I think for anyone who's still around at this point in the video, um, either they're listening and they haven't seen the deterioration. <laughs> the podcast or, at this point. Or, or yeah, it, it's probably pretty obvious. And you'll, you'll see that on the screen, the logos and like text and things have just like gone away day two on uh, recording my face on my iphone it's it, 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 it's all it's all happening we're on a different okay. microphone too from like the first couple of sessions that's but that's good. that's probably an improvement i don't know i haven't fully figured the out the configuration good, of this so one. no problem there i'd say all right that's good Okay, we've had some we have some interesting submissions coming up today, like several programming related and also the linear algebra one that has been that is actually the first thing you're recommending right now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, we'll get to it. That one is a thirty four minute video. Dear Jesus Christ. Okay. God. Okay. All right. Well, huh. let's see if we could do this. Again, we're gonna yep. play the videos most likely at around 1.5 times speed, unless you talk really fast. If you talk really fast, thank you, by the way. Um, <laughs> and again, if you it's, talk it's, really it's, fast, it's a long video. That's bad, Agma. That's bad. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that's true. If it's still long, <laughs> um, but again, it's nothing against any of you. It's nothing against your voices. It's not necessarily anything against your presentation style. It's just, uh, you know, we're we're just. We We've been doing this for such a long, long time. <laughs> we have made it through 18 hours of footage. Exactly. That's probably 1.5 times that in terms of how much we've actually recorded. So. Uh, exactly. So, again, we're a day of recording you. probably now. And the vast He's majority of you have your videos on YouTube already. So, you know, we'll, I'll have like the playlist with all the original videos so that everyone As can always, yes. go see your main channels with your videos at normal speed, assuming that they're listed, which I highly recommend listing your videos if you have them unlisted still, because some people have gotten some like massive views on these things. You know, if you want to start a YouTube channel, you know, just do it um anyway we should get started so that we uh yeah. don't no. lose any more time i gotta pick my mom up at the airport at midnight too so <laughs> oh okay that's good cool. all right let's do it um so our first one for tonight appears to be whatever that is supposed to be by maple <laughs> good god all right Let's see. Let's see. 
what have I done? Oh, Shout out to Starry Snuiriza from the Agnesha Discord server for inspiration for this disaster to come. <clears throat> okay. What for two party star with things? Um, yeah. This one word is one word, isn't it? I think it's also the whole sentence. <laughs> yes, I know the whole sentence is one word. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, you did bug. You hugged the food. It's bad that I'm managing to read along. I've done too much curse on my own. At this point, even the most chaotic string of letters is just like, yep, okay, I know what's going on. You can read along in hyper pirate or hyper formal, then this isn't too bad. Yeah. Fucking shit. Hello. My name is Maple, and I've created an atrocity of a language. Uh, I, I, I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm, what can I say except, I'm sorry, Daddy, I've been a bad girl. Haha. <laughs> Um, so what in the sync of hell just happened? Uh, this this is the B movie intro in Vmuhut Vaid Yurzlt. And actually, that string of fucking sounds. Jeez, look at that! <laughs> I hope you don't have to say it every single time, Maple. <laughs> oh no, that's the thing, kind of part of it. Yeah, is a cursed conling and made for Agmashwa's cursed conling circus. Um, Number two, I, I suppose I should specify that. Um, don't worry, uh, this will probably be like the first thing I upload onto YouTube, and it won't be the last. I probably don't always do this level of insanity, or do I? <laughs> it might just take the only one anyway, find out. So the language. Uh, so uh -huh. the humans, you know us. We're not always able to express the things in the language that we intend to. Um, sometimes you just get overwhelming feelings when you're texting with someone that you have feelings for. You're talking about that with a friend after the fact, and you, you just kind of become like a liquid, and you you slam on the keyboard a little bit. <laughs> or maybe I'm just a bottom. Uh, but our brains are marvelous <laughs> at filling in the gaps. Um, that Naturally. is one of the languages in use every time you see a keyboard smash like that. Um, there's a variety <laughs> well, of them in most of the system, like a dialogue containing one of the very <laughs> much but there's like isolates, it's not, none of it's universal, there's, there's a lot going on here. So if someone replies to a text with a seemingly random string of characters, this may be probably the language that's going on here today. I'll focus on the general American variety, which is commonly used as like a lingua franca for formal communications. But that's a little bit of a um, overgeneralization, and it gets really complicated for reasons I will get into. Uh, welcome to hell. Um, <laughs> so the phonology um, consonants are ma na pa ba ta da 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 ya ka ka ga ga ka fa fa va sa da sa za ha 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 ta la ra ya ya. There's a lot of consonants. <laughs> um, there's technically oh, six yeah. vowels, but yeah. there's like an epithetic schwa that I don't know with a superscript because it's not a phoneme in its own right. So you have e, u, u, e, o, a. There's not much in the way of syntactic constraints. Um, yeah, I can tell. Long clusters of just out. stops will be broken up by an epithetic schwa, but like it varies from speaker to speaker. <laughs> If those are your syllabic consonants, then I don't think anyone cares about phonotactics. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, at that really. point, I don't think it matters. <laughs> oh, imagine. Um, like, where that goes. The um, standardized variety that I displayed in, in the, uh, the the intro was just something adjacent to what my vocal tract is capable of producing. <sighs> Emphasis on adjacent. Um, also, the um, the high front vowels will lower a little bit surrounding their corresponding semi-vowels, and that's kind of it. These can appear in, like, any order. It's really bad. Um, <laughs> the orthography, not particularly regularized um, mm. in some dialects, that like the historical spelling is so like thorough that it's entirely unpredictable how it's pronounced based on what you see on the screen. Um, so the sample that I first found, uh, it's a largely phonetic use of the Latin alphabet, but this, this convention is by no means universal, even in the standard variety. Okay. Um, and uh, and yeah, or, uh, uh, often 
written the same way as the corresponding vowels or with interchangeable glyphs. That's not, again, not universal, but that is by far more of a common thread than anything else that I've observed. Um, and that's all that can really be said about that. So that the full complexity of the grammar of this is decidedly beyond the scope of a single relatively short video. I don't want to be consuming an entire afternoon of someone's time. This is a relatively low scope limited uh, mm. presentation designed to appear alongside a lot of others in, a, in like a competition. So it's there's only so much that I can actually explain here, but there's more than enough to unpack to indicate what's going on in just the name of the language and the sample text, like the, the translation of the B movie script to illustrate what fresh health I've unleashed on this material reality, <clears throat> the, the stunning beauty and complexity of this me. language. So let's get yeah. into it. The audio is currently, um, I'm not sure how to best describe it, oh, but um, it's, it's, it's lost the, my, it sounds like my speakers have lost their will to live, except that I know that it's not my speakers. <laughs> uh, the problem here. Hmm. <laughs> because whenever you talk, it's perfectly fine, but the video <laughs> just starts becoming progressive, like the audio quality just goes downhill. It's just, it just decides that latency It's like an inverted becomes... parabola, it just, it just at some point it becomes unintelligible. <laughs> also, let's let's take a look at this transcription here for a second. Yeah, I love the, the the long syllabic voiced vela stop. Oh no, fricative. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's <laughs> it's rough. Uh, I, and and I love these like the pharyngeals and oh god yeah it's also hold on uh all the h's can you go back to the phonology oh, god. because is that only pharyngeal h yeah <laughs> just Plus. pharyngeal <laughs> of course, of course. Yep. Oh, how... would you ever need anything else Could, couldn't ask for it to be any other way <laughs> yeah 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 uh-huh <laughs> um it's it's thought by uh leading scholars in the field that um the name was about the last thing to develop about this variety of the language. So it, it would be fair to describe everything else as aforementioned. Um, but that, that might just be a little bit of like waffling and maybe there's a bit more going on with it. Who knows? There's a lot that's unknown about like maybe the culture behind like this because it's so subconscious. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to study because you can't like directly interview people. You've got to do all kinds of silly shit to that's go about that and that's beyond the scope of this project. Of language, um, I like that. But examples also illustrative of uh, there, there being several types of noun classifiers and a few number markings. So you have a singular collective oh and a plural God. number and then okay. uh, for like incorporated noun classifiers, which appear whenever a noun can be assumed by context or when it is not incorporated into the verb complex. You, you have a living being smaller than a rotten grapefruit, a living being larger than a rotten grapefruit, a non-living object, grape. abstract <laughs> classifier, and a classifier specifically for specifically thought. Specifically a rotten um, one. Who knows where these all came from? Uh, yeah, who knows? And then you have subject and object forms of each, so that you can... Like, it, it serves as a form of role marking, and some of that does exist within other stuff. We'll get to it, kind of. Um, so moving on to the first line of the sample text. Um, you see in, in, the, in the gloss and the, like, the transliteration, there's a lot of like whereas and going on, as if this is like a clause <laughs> in like, a, a legal document or a bill that's being proposed oh, or something like that. Yes. Um, stating like a, a Love it. <laughs> reason for something or, or something like that. Oh, um, actually, uh, uh, the, this uh, is... The official Discord server rules. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the, like uh, every section starts with whereas. Yep. <laughs> and then every clause starts with, starts with that. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, God. Part of the meaning when you incorporate that. So the more formal speeches, the more like incorporation generally happens to a degree. There's this obviously limits because of like the lexical meanings of some uh, clause structures. Um, but formality means that things are, are incorporated more often generally. Uh, every lexical root and any like grammatical morpheme, like a, like an article or a, um, anything anything at all has like a bound morpheme form and an isolated form usually um not always but usually pretty much identical in their like like what sounds occur in, in them and stuff um identical except in whether they're they're bound and how like the stress works with all of that and so on fully isolated morphemes and, and uh, lexical roots are considered profanities therefore every morpheme or uh, every every single thing in this language may also double as a profanity um <laughs> 
<laughs> so, <laughs> that's sure something. Um, that's what that when, is. Uh, okay. Everything in a sentence is incorporated into one giant chunk, as in the example we just saw. It's it's yeah. it's one of the it's a, like a whereas kind of clause, um, <laughs> carrying an inherent lexical meaning that that kind of just places something like whereas or like like a similar kind of outlying a condition or a, like a like a part of a rationale for something, um, and any any like linking form, uh, connecting connecting words like and. Um, are included by that, and which one is relevant is determined kind of by the context and by what else is going on. So we have whereas and in this first example. Um, moving on. Um, I'm, again, not going to pronounce this again, but uh, you, you can see that this is this is the second one, and you don't have a linking clause because of what follows. I will explain what follows in more detail, okay. but this one, um, between these first two, you can get a lot of information about the order that things come in. Um, so in incorporated form, adjectives follow nouns that they modify, um, and they precede the verbs that they that they uh, modify, and any incorporated nouns that are modifying a verb and not serving as subject or object, um, or incorporated adjectives can do the same thing. Um, we'll proceed it, and especially with adjectives, this is not necessarily the most strict thing ever. Um, as we'll see, word order can actually vary with the level of formality you wish to convey. <laughs> um, of course. <laughs> but the, it's a general rule of thumb here. Um, incorporated clauses will precede the main verb and are always formed as a converb. Uh, and there's a there's a very wide variety of converbs. The full scope of the ones that are included is once again kind of beyond the scope of this because there's a pretty big variety of ways this can operate. Um, I don't have time to get into it, and it actually hasn't been fully cataloged. So um, uh -huh. <laughs> this is a difficult field of study. Yeah. Um, but yeah, incorporated clauses are formed as converbs. Um, incorporated nouns precede the verb, and incorporated objects precede the subject, typically. Uh, object, subject, verb is a common word order for reasons we'll get into. Tense, aspect, and mood affixes, again. except the imperfective, follow the verb. The imperfective usually comes... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Okay, back on. Anyway, let's see comes first. And then negation, pretty much invariably, if it's oh, incorporated, if it's, oh, if it's bound. There, Ren! Hello! Hey! Hello! Welcome to the to the final Relo. day! <laughs> Rel Relo! <laughs> I made it to the first and the final. That's right. And none of the ones in between. <laughs> yep. Oh, good times. It's been, good times. Um, I think, almost 80 submissions. <laughs> Yeah, wow. yeah, something like that. This is like number ninety-seven. Seventy-two. It's been seventy-two. <laughs> God, good times. All right, uh, watch my stream. That this one's almost done, but um, yeah, and then <laughs> and, you, and we're gonna take a little break, like right after this one, so I can eat food. Um, but then we'll be on with the rest of them, and you can judge with us. <laughs> And also just eat while you're watching a submission, I would uh, argue. Not, not this one. We, we gave up and we're just digging into a whole rotisserie chicken today. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> not this one. Honestly, uh, that's just fair. Exactly. Like, at this point, I've got nothing left to lose. <laughs> oh, God. All right. right. Anyway, let's finish this one and then make that happen. <laughs> All right, let's do it. How's this one so far? To take it's been a pretty good one. Yeah, we're, we're, we're yeah, yeah. It's it's a 16 minute long video, and we're like 13 minutes through, so you missed like the bulk of it. But I think you'll get the point. All right, let's see. Place in the class. Moving on. So this is what follows that. So you see the reason that there's not an and at the end of it, because it it, it starts with therefore. It, it tends it becomes the next thing, and because it's broken up into a few chunks. This is not a whereas clause, Therefore. Um, but like the, the laws of formality are still followed. Uh -huh. um, now, object, subject, verb, word order is considered the most proper and formal word order, but there's other things you can do. Actually, so the verb must always come last in the in the complex unless only one noun is unincorporated as a profanity, in which case it comes last. Um, <laughs> So inherently putting the subject last tends to suggest that you are not being formal, you are cussing uh, in, in um, this 
sort of changes it to a um, swear word. So or... there's there's no inherent lexical meaning to most clause forms. Um, mostly just to like a fully isolating clause, or to the one where everything is included, because you get a you get a profanity or you you get whereas. Therefore, and despite in terms like that, we'll always precede the verb typically as a prefix, but sometimes as a profanity. Um, Incorporation of either subject or object is allowed in this context, but incorporating or aforementioned is considered ungrammatical except in a whereas clause. <laughs> and here's the last sentence. There's a couple of examples <laughs> of profanities in here, and that's oh my the God. one thing oh. separating this <laughs> from being yet another whereas clause, because most of it comes as one chunk. That is so the most funny. proper and therefore the most common way to do things is you, you unincorporate oh, a couple of descriptors what if, what if, or the subject. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes? <laughs> Uk for it. Yeah, no, I get to um uk for it, and then I can't get any further, um. even though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 a lot. <laughs> Object, except that um, it would be more proper, and and not vulgar if you were to include, say, a definite article, and to incorporate because as a prefix, as it as it would be as a non profanity, um. When you have a noun that is not incorporated, especially if it's because it appears as a profanity, you have to have one of the noun classifiers. Okay. Um, so is the thing with this language that um, everything also, can be profanity if you say it wrong? That's that's one of the main in the wrong two order. things. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the things. Yeah, it's it's like the the grammatical aspect is that it's like half cuss word, half like formal contract speak depending on like the the context <laughs> of the word order <laughs> and, yeah. and, and the other half is just the absolutely disturbing like agglutination of and lack of phonotactics <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah but that's pretty much the gist of it so if they don't appear via context uh like context clues because it's rude to repeat um so that's the information we have <laughs> I'm gonna go drink some tea now and end this horrible project. Oof, ouch, owie, my vocal tracks. What the hell have I done? Relatable. Uh, I will do something Very less cursed soon. Probably. Relatable. <laughs> Goodbye. A OBS moment. We gone meta. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like that because right. theoretically, theoretically, somebody could say, I love the Agma Schwa channel in the wrong order, and it would be a <laughs> massive insult to your channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, recording is on. We've returned. The chicken is consumed. Let us go on to. Oh, <laughs> Polum Langua? No way. Is this about chicken? <laughs> I think the next one's about chicken. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that would be uh, great. I could be. I'd have to check. Humanity has existed. It is. Also, one well, of the I'm longest ones we have to do tonight. Yeah, it is. The language of chicken. <laughs> oh my god, Agma. <laughs> immediately after I ate <laughs> half of a freaking chicken. Okay, good timing. Great timing. Mm. All right. It would have been a so you could have eaten this while we watched. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Well, I guess for it this would have particular worked. situation. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's see. We're at one point two five time right now. We'll speed it up if we need to. But let's see. Let's see what happens. For a really long time. Times with war, peace, abundance, scarcity, ignorance, and wisdom have passed. And finally, after all these years with every part of the world divided, humanity has risen above the ashes, only to realize they had the perfection, the beauty, the desire they had been seeking for so long right beside them. <laughs> the chicken, like AI they everything. eat rocks, they are perfect. And it's just like that how humanity took chickens as the divine example, leading them to absolute prosperity. They adapted <laughs> themselves to their culture, beliefs, and priorities. And in that process came the great communication reform. It gave people a universal language, a single voice that united them all. The Pulum Lingua, the language of chicken. Chapter one. That's worse than over. Oh god. <laughs> so, let's get started. There are seven kinds of building blocks for <laughs> the language. The three main ones are consonants, vowels, and stops. They form the words oh. for nouns, verbs, and describe words, which I'll that reform. Doesn't bode well. Oh god, stops as a I think different it category? Means, oh no. I think it means stops as in like stopping the sentence rather than pul rather than like pulmonic stops. Maybe, let's see. Myself with we'll their see. general term, adjective. 
Then there's accented vowels, head movements, rooster choirs, and wind flaps. They compose oh, the remaining God. kinds of words. <laughs> Each one has its own unique purpose. In the language, there are three main consonants, Q, P, and T. Q's pronunciation, however, can change between ka and ka, as will be explained later. On the other hand, there are stops. They can have five different lengths. The vowels are somewhat oh, more difficult. In the first place, we have the default ones, also known as shy vowels. The main ones are a and o. However, each one has its own open and closed variation. A and a oh, man. for a and o and o for oh. o. They are okay. romanized okay. as shown. By default, they don't have tone. However, in certain situations, they may acquire a rising to or a oh. sinking tone. To. Oh god, it's sounds like the vowels are also part, differentiated yeah. between clear and opaque. A uh, oh. and a uh, opaque what? vowel sound as if Shakira sang them. Okay. Additionally, these vowels are also differentiated that, by that, pitch oh, change. That really verifies it. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. The next vowel can be higher, staying, or deeper. Oh. Then there's the less common thunderous Interesting. vowels. They have the same four variations. However, they are only separated in gargled, falsetto, and fussy vowels. And oh. like the shy vowels, they also have the clearness variation. Moreover, they are always long. Separately, there's rooster choirs. They are three loud simultaneous rooster crows tuned to different notes of the A Japanese pentatonic scale. Tuned to A <laughs> equals 380 <laughs> hertz. Why 380 hertz? Well, it looks like a chicken nest. The chords what? can be based on each degree of the scale, and the second and oh, third I notes can be either one or two degrees higher than the previous ones. <clears throat> then there's the not sound based word building blocks. Head movements have eight possible variations. Up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards, clockwise, and counterclockwise. And lastly, wing flaps can be downwards, round forwards flaps, and round backwards flaps. Chapter 2. <laughs> There's seven types of words. I love these Nouns imagery. representing existing images. concepts, verbs representing actions, adjectives representing describing words, Indicators that connect words by adjectivizing the noun that precedes it, verb announcers and concluders, sentence announcers, and sentence concluders. Those last will be explained shortly after. To construct nouns, okay. verbs, and adjectives, there's a meaning buffet available. It consists of base concepts buffet. which what? possess abstract ambiguous meaning, meaning like buffet. height and quantity. It's the meaning buffet, obviously. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. Then, there's the modifiers. They are physical things that would be relevant in a chicken's world. They either express its own meaning as a noun, or can be paired with a base concept and specificate the spot of the range of its meaning. Okay. There's also a few base concepts that Every may behave occasionally or usually like modifiers. They labels. can be paired, however, <laughs> to other base concepts like a modifier could. Hmm. An example is thing or livingness, which would have the meaning of how living something is. Uh -oh. However, it alone evolved to mean something living. It would have to be modified to convey another nuance of its whole originally intended meaning. These building blocks are then set in a chain that will paraphrase First the meaning of a word. The night's Between going. them, they can have the following relationships <laughs> conveyed by the stops that follow every block. An absent stop is used only after modifiers that modify a base concept that follows it. If more than one is employed for a single base concept, every but the last modifier acquires a syncing accent. A relaxed stop is used to create a string of blocks constructing a complex block. It can contain both modified and unmodified blocks. They are written from more to less subordinated and may leave some, although must be the minimal, room for interpretation. A medium stop is used to connect each complex block or just a block directly to the last most elementary block. If there's more than one complex block, the first block of each subsequent one acquires a rising tone. That okay. means the first one doesn't get any tones. Oh then there's the long tones. They just separate words. And lastly, there's the really long tones, that separate sentence, after and before the sentence concluders. And an additional rule is that before an indicator, there can only be an absent stop. As this may be a difficult concept to digest, I'm giving some examples and thereby explaining a few more things. These are a few examples. You may notice that, while some words are really short, some other ones may become, in contrast to English, really long. Also, you may notice that it is usual for adjectives to end in state, Verbs in action and although way more variable, nouns in thing or idea sometimes. Chapter 3. 
The most important aspect <laughs> is the syntax. Every sentence must hmm. have the same syntax. It consists of the following parts yes. in the following order. First comes the sentence announcer. Oh, yeah. Besides, would hear that? You know, it wouldn't be a, a cursed conlang circus without every possible technical difficulty happening at least once. <laughs> So, theoretically, if somebody made a language where the audio cracking was part of the phonology, <laughs> uh... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I'm not- I'm not continuing that train of thought aloud, <laughs> okay. I'm just figuring out how that would work. Naturally. We'd be left up to suspense at that point, just... <laughs> okay. Let's- let's continue information regarding its context. English conjunctions and linking words are the equivalent. It consists of a verse required followed by some wing flaps. <laughs> then come the complements. Subject complements. In general, complements are adjectives or adjectivized nouns by means of indicators. They are arranged for most to list direct with the subject. You must remember, however, that the adjectives also have to go paired with an indicator that indicates that it is describing a word. Then comes the subject. It is only one word, but may have as much meaning as possible, made by the meaning buffet within itself. <laughs> in literally and formal writing, you may not use adjectives. Every piece of information should be contained within a really specific noun. Then there's always the verb announcer. It has the verbs tense and recurrency information. There's three tenses, past, present, and future, and two recurrences, once and many times. Each announcer is a mix <laughs> of them. There are two kinds of verbs, continuous and specific. Continuous verbs express a constant state that an actor portrays. Its verb announcer conveys what time areas in reaches. Then, on one hand, if it has a once oh, recurrency, the verb's continuity is kept. It just reaches all the time zones that were discussed. On the other hand, if it's marked as many times, it the verb is cut up into segments chickens. that exist throughout the time zones <laughs> talked about. It is no longer continuous. <laughs> then, specific verbs express an action that lasts a set time. In their case, once is one time that lasts through the marked time zones and many oh times God. that it is performed recurrently through them. However, wild. before the verb in the sentence comes the verb complements one. They give contextual information about the verb. <laughs> that follows them. <laughs> I already explained how they work the verb. Oh so my let's God. Move. After the verb, follow the verb complements two. They oh give information <laughs> about the means of performing. <laughs> However, it must be noted that the order of the complements is the other way around. The concept that is the most direct to the verb goes first, then the more distant ones. The indicators are the other way around too. They go now before the adjectivized or modified word. Every verb section oh. finishes with a verb concluder. It expresses the type of sentence and how and how much its content concerns the speaker and others involved. After this, the object follows. There are sentences without and with an object. When there's an object, you can imagine a dog, the attacker, the subject, and a prey, the chicken, the object. It's reminiscent of accusative. Their object complement follows. And like the verb complements too, they are written the other way around. Lastly comes a sentence concluder. Its job is not only to indicate the sentence's end, it is to indicate the relationship between the, the sentence's relationship event and the subject and object, object correspondingly. It consists of a brief sentence of appreciation to chickens. This syntax is unchangeable, and for translation... I don't know if something just happened, but the echo just got like pretty whack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some interesting thing. From Hold thing. on. <laughs> it's on your I end. Just... Yes, I know why. Because I turned off echo cancellation to test if that would help <laughs> with the crackling, but apparently that's not a good idea. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, yeah I like... think it just cancelled the echoes. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Alright, anyway. <laughs> Sentences must be arranged to fit this system. I quite like it. It looks like a chicken. What? <laughs> then, there's a few more rules okay. that must be taken into account. What? In the first place, there's ka and ka alternation. In order to express continuity among sentences oh my that God. means to state that the idea is still being expressed, you alternate those two phonemes. It is done through the ancient binary code. It is the Polish word for chicken in binary, repeating itself throughout the continuing sentences. <laughs> Each number is a syllable that begins with Q. What even is the Polish word? I'm assuming by in binary they mean just in ASCII uh, or UTF-8 or whatever, <laughs> and that encoded in binary. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> the ones that would be then a one are changed to a. Another rule consists of subject repetition. 
If there's more than 30 syllables after the subject, it shall be repeated before the sentence concluder for easier oh, comprehension. <laughs> Similarly, if a pronoun is used as a subject, the concept it was referring to shall be repeated as well. So it just refers <laughs> to the mind of the listener. Just However, if forgetting. the logical thing was to use a pronoun, it must be used. If not, the sentence is considered ungrammatical. Besides, it can also be noted that quantity and other more secondary information about words is not always needed to be explicit. They can be deduced from the context. Then we have negation transmission. If a clause negates the following subordinate clauses, they shall be written as positive. The Q differentiation binds them together. Next up, to convey the humor of the speaker, <laughs> it must be rated on the scale from 1 to 11 and portrayed via oh big God. syllables. Similarly, there's writing judgment. On a scale from 1 to 19, it must be portrayed how good the written sentence is for the speaker. If it is a conversation, you rate the writing of the last sentence said, the first one and the second ones, and last but not least comes the numeric system. A base 8.93 <laughs> Hold on, hold on. The value. <laughs> okay, this is, this is bad enough, but let's go back a sec before we look at this abomination here. Um, it says, writing judgment is based on how good the written sentence would be, but it also says only in speech. Oh god. Oh no. So, which one is it? <laughs> no, you just have to think about when you're reading it aloud, you have to be like, oh, how good would this sentence look on paper? There you go. <laughs> you're, uh, you're judging your reading only. of the script. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's and go back this. to this. <laughs> this is pretty horrid, like 8.93 <laughs> divided into 17 segments. First of all, uh, for someone got the reason the numerator is 8.93, right. And yeah. also, 17 is a prime number, so that's about the worst choice for a base that he could have possibly <laughs> made. Yeah, mm. really. Is 8.93 related to chicken somehow? I'm interested to see. I have no idea. We'll find out. It's First, like, if it's not related to chicken. Beast. Yeah, exactly. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh well, let's see. This graph explains it well. This way, their 12 would be equal to around 9.9805882235 for us and our one would equal around 1.15624945 for them oh God. chapter 4 the language has a quite straightforward writing every sentence mm. consists of a chicken based dish for every syllable, what? a component is added, <laughs> and each oh, part no. of the dish corresponds to each part of the sentence. Oh, oh no. no! These are the components. <laughs> Drink for sentence announcer, side dish topping for subject complement, <laughs> side dish for subject, cutlery <laughs> and miscellaneous for verb announcer, the sauce for the verb complements 1, the protein for the verbs, the protein toppings for the verb complements 2, Dear the cutlery replacement for the verb complement, the salad for the object, <laughs> the dressing for the object complement, and the like salad one for the sentence language. Yeah. These components of the sentence are then arranged as follows in the plate. Additionally, the love oh and care God. the plate was made with, on a scale from 1 to 11, uh. expresses the humor grammatical aspect of the sentence. Then there's the writing of stops. The way the components of the sentence are placed indicate them. This table shows all of them. And next up are the indicators. It's literally a cookbook. By placing <laughs> the syllable closest to it on the indicated oh subordinate God. word. These variables express them. They are a nice addition to the plate. It enables a better digestion for the reader. As I won't be able to write the whole thing. But the reader's another ch uh. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so this is it's a freaking, like, recipe for, like, an enormous feast. Made of chicken, spoken oh. by chickens. <laughs> They're cannibals. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> no, no, it's it's spoken. No, it's spoken by humans who worship chickens. Ah, there we go. So they're eating the chickens, oh, but they're the respecting the chickens by speaking and writing yeah. the language while eating them. Translation of the text. I'll write a small example sentence. <laughs> so now, kindly close your eyes and permit your imagination to embark upon a splendid gastronomic journey. A symphony of culinary preparations begins as we prepare to dine. <laughs> Delicate fingers are tenderly cleansed with the refreshing essence of lemon infused water, while the soft, meticulously folded paper napkins grace the table with their elegant rectangular <laughs> forms folded to the right. 
glistening in the real space. It's the rest of the, the rest of the inscription. It takes the center stage. It <laughs> might be. It's <laughs> gracefully on the left, and the knife's gleaming blade facing it. Uh, good God. The I was hoping for a more, like, Our chosen a, elevation is a, a reading or out or of the translation. Adorned with a second orange slice that delicately clings to the glass's sugared rim. This, this, this is some beautiful, citrusy beautiful this imagery, though. Presented before us is a plate of decadent they, fire paint. They went through so much it's effort to find chicken images for every for every <laughs> slide, and then now it's like, <laughs> then oh yeah, it's now, now you have flat. to do all the visualizing in yeah. your head. Imagine, imagine Good that. Plate <laughs> and onions. It'll be funny if they don't tell us to open our eyes back up. Yeah. <laughs> it is accompanied by succulent slices of grilled chicken breast, Good tender pan fried cubes of chicken breast, and delectable pan fried chicken wings. Cut the same way, <laughs> all artfully arranged. Cascading over this array of gastronomic delights are sauces of the utmost distinction. A velvety stroganoff sauce, Felix's signature almendrado peanut sauce, <laughs> and a wine reduction that beckons with an irresistible allure. This is like a allure. specific restaurant, too. As the final touch of culinary artistry, we bestow upon this masterpiece a garnish of freshly chopped tomatoes, fragrant dill, and the set from the vibrant citrusy yellow lemons, elevating the dish to a symphony of flavors and colors. On the side, awaits a refreshing <laughs> cabbage salad, kissed by the sweetness of honey and the subtle notes of oregano. Lovingly dressed in vegetable oil and adorned with crispy curtains, luscious parmesan cheese, sesame seeds, and a medley of exquisite nuts. And completing this epicurean journey, a precisely curated assemblage of individually selected pebbles adorns the plate in an artful composition. Did you just say pebbles as Chapter in five. rocks? Bubble, Excuse bubble, me. Bubble, bubble. Yes, pebbles. He, oh he mentioned that earlier, God. the pebbles for... The pebbles are for digestion or something. Uh, but now I wonder, how would you say that? Actually, that How would you describe that restaurant in this language? <laughs> and then you could, like, have the description oh of the recipe of describing God. that recipe. Jesus Holy crap. No, it, it, it infinitely... It's <laughs> infinite. Infinite no, no, that, that, This is... The classic problem of how do you describe a language without... You, <laughs> yeah. you have to use a language to describe a language. Yep. Oh man, okay. Let's I'm gonna continue. translate the example sentence given by our benevolent circus master, Ike Meshua. Hi. It consists of three sentences. The first <laughs> one goes, According to all known laws of aviation, there's no way a bee should be able to fly. This sentence <laughs> is then separated into four segments no for a natural sense. translation in the language. The second sentence, Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground, is similarly separated into three. And the last sentence, the bee, of <laughs> anyway, course, flies anyway, be because bees don't care what humans think <laughs> is impossible, into two. So, let's get started. Oh, fuck the rooster notes. <laughs> I forgot about the rooster choir. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
This is the fluent speech right here. It sounds just like actual. It sounds just like actual chickens. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Keep in mind, we can't we can't even like see the head motions or the wing flapping right now. So. Just like that. Not today. On to number 99. Oh, uh, Agma, would you be so kind as to read the name of the language? Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks like uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, six? No, 1 o'clock? No, 1.30. Yeah, like 1.30. Um, or maybe even 12.30. Uh, we got 9.30. Uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, 3.30. 3 o'clock. And... Uh, like eight? Oh God, it's a clock language. <laughs> By Osarik. Let's see what you got. Osarik. Did you, did you zoom in for that, or did you try to read it from? I just tried to read it from all the way out. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's see what we got here. Welcome to Marangre, a cursed conman. Not that fast. Too fast. How about one plus five? If you don't already know me. I'm Osirik, a volcano and geology nerd who likes languages. Okay. So yeah, Still feel free to ask me about volcanoes. Past, I think. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's go back and get, do like at most 1.25 speed. Yeah. Welcome to Marangre, a cursed go. conlang. If you don't already know me, I'm Osirik, a volcano and geology nerd who likes languages. So yeah, feel free to ask me about volcanoes. But yeah, being a geology student, the optional rock theme excites me. Anyways, okay. two or three weeks ago, Naturally. I started getting suggested a lot of videos about submissions to Agma Schwa's Curse Conlang Circus 2. <laughs> a lot of videos. I'd never heard of Agma Schwa, his Conlang Circus, or anyone making these oh. videos. Naturally, I decided to join in. This Curse is my submission. Nice. So the things I wanted for my language were for it to have a possible legible writing system based on existing Unicode characters, phonology possible for humans to pronounce, mm -hmm. and a sentence structure and grammar possible for humans to use. But I also wanted to make them the worst. <laughs> yep, yeah, sure, the worst. Although, one note, I did want to still make them theoretically possible to be used by humans, while causing as much emotional damage as possible to both the speaker and any listeners. I started I'm off with the writing system. With that, yeah. I knew from the start that I wanted an Abugida because I like Abugidas. They're personally my, my favourite writing system. For those of you who don't know, an Abugida is a script in which consonants and vowels are written as a singular unit rather than having the vowels separate, like an alphabet, or only sometimes or never represented, like in an abjad. Specifically, the vowel is a secondary feature on the glyph of the consonant, on the, on the consonant, modifying a consonant symbol to show the vowel. Some abugidas include mm. Devanagari, Yiz, Inuktitut, and Tana. Yep. These are a few examples of how abugidas can work mm. with a vowel modifying the consonant. Mm. As you can see with Devanagari, the vowels are represented by a diacritic on the consonant, whereas in Inuktitut, the vowel is represented by the orientation of the letter. <laughs> Obviously, I also want it to be weird and kind of oh, silly. Brother, see where this kind of is going. Of this competition. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I thought emojis might work well if I could find the right ones to use. And thus, ta da! <laughs> okay. Glorious, isn't it? 
I thought clock emojis were a great, terrible way of doing an Ambiguita, given each, simil each character is similar to each other, and there's different times throughout the day in which the minute hands will be the same, but the hour hands will be different. Now, I had to figure out the sounds to make it as fantastically horrific as possible. I'll show you the vowel sounds first, given they're slightly easier to take in than the consonants, and they're both easier for me to pronounce isolated than most of the vowels. Mm. As you can see, both vowels are diphthongs. <laughs> the clocks that represent the time no. at each hour have the vowel sound as A, and those at the half hours have the vowel sound push. A is easy enough, but push is for sure not a traditional vowel by any definition. But it can theoretically function as one. And since it's neither efficient nor easy for a normal, non insane person to use as a vowel, that's exactly what I'm going to use it for. Yeah. And hard. here are the full letters, oh, including no. consonants. Oh, oh my gle, god. Re. 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 A. A. Le. Angre. Re. Fe. Fne. And yay. I'm. Um, not going to bother doing some of the push <laughs> sounds right now because, well, yeah, I just can't bother. So just wait oh, a few slides. Oh, like also, yes, uh -huh. I mispronounced some of them. Several of the sounds are not used in any languages I speak, and I haven't learned how to use all of them yet. So we just have to live with that. <laughs> I would, okay, the next thing on. that yeah. we need to understand. Let's, let's go back for a second. <laughs> I would be very concerned if if you spoke a language where "sha" <laughs> is a sound. <laughs> Or where, or where the f -n -a sound combined with <laughs> is like an actual word. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Okay. Yeah. I, I I like the one in the top right. Oh. I I can't do lateral fricatives with my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. something like. Help us all. All right. The next thing that we need to understand the language before we move on to anything else is genders. My language is a gendered language, like Spanish or German, and has six grammatical genders. The genders are mm. masculine, mature, animate, feminine, mature, animate, neuter, mature, animate, immature, animate, sundry, animate, and inanimate. Or in other words, men, women, non-binary adults, children, animals, and inanimate objects. Really? Up until someone's 18th birthday, their gender is immature animate, and after that they decide which, an which mature animate gender is best applicable to them. Nice. If you want to be rude about someone, you can refer to them using sundry animate gender, and if someone is dead, you refer to them using inanimate gender. <laughs> Got One thing to note is that while inanimate objects normally are of the inanimate noun class, they aren't always, and can be of any noun class. Animals are almost always of the sundry animate noun class, however, unless they are dead. Likewise, humans are always uh, of one of the four other animate noun classes, unless they are dead. But when referring to humans as a species, you use sundry animate noun class. Noun gender is very important in Morang Ray for reasons that I'll get back to later. I'll get back to it after pronouns. This is the pronoun chart. Mm. Oh, like with the letters, oh, no. I'll slowly <laughs> fill it out so it's slightly less daunting. We'll start by filling in the positions I that are empty. Daunting enough, candidly. That's a nice, simple start. Oh, Let's no, go on to first-person no, no. pronouns. So, yeah, now we've got some of our first uh. words of Marangre. Let's read them out. The first-person singular pronoun for humans of any gender is Fingeyilsh. <laughs> Animals and inanimate, and inanimate objects don't have a first-person pronoun, given that they don't speak. Um, one thing to note, though, is in Marangre, birds that talk like parrots and bedroom jars are actually considered non-binary adults for grammatical purposes, <laughs> if the individual bird for is known to speak. Purposes. Marangre also has clusivity, so its first-person <laughs> inclusive and exclusive plural pronouns are respectively and Okay. Time for second-person pronouns. make sure that the birds use the right pronouns. The three adult <laughs> human genders share a single second-person pronoun, uh, Children and animals share pfeifunge because children deserve as little respect as animals do. For context, that's a joke. And I actually believe both animals and children deserve just as much respect as any adult. The pronoun distinction in Marangre is because both children and animals are viewed as, are viewed as innocent by nature. We also have Pfeifungsch for the human second person plural pronoun and Pfeifungsch for the uh, animate second person pronoun. Finally, for the behemoth third person pronoun column. I'm just going to read out each of the third person pronouns in turn because as of this upcoming uh, number, the script is currently over a thousand words long so far and it's going to be a lot longer. Mm. So the masculine mature animate is a klush. The feminine mature animate is klush. The neuter mature animate is unglush klush. The immature animate is 
Reichels. The sundry animate is Kleichels. Oh, the inanimate is Wolfskels. Human plural is Ungolfskels. Wolf. And animate plural and inanimate plural are both Ungolfskels. <laughs> Now, you may be wondering what those extra three mysterious columns are. Those, my dear friends, are each pronoun's rock meaning. So in Marangre, um, each pronoun uh, is a homonym for a different type of rock. Um, the, th the first person pronouns are all okay. sedimentary rocks, sandstone, limestone, and dolomite. Okay. The second person pronouns are metamorphic rocks, schist, shale, gneiss, and slate. Oh God, not, the third not person singular pronouns are all again. extrusive igneous rocks, <laughs> aka volcanic rocks. That's right. Basalt, rhyolite, oh, no. ensite, phoidite, phonolite, and trachyte. <laughs> the third person plural pronouns are intrusive igneous rocks, aka plutonic rocks, granite and sienite. Marangrite also has a fourth person pronoun, which is they a uh, which has the rock meaning of migmatite, which is an interesting rock that is sort of the partway point between a metamorphic rock and an igneous rock. It's a rock deformed in very high temperature and high pressure conditions, so much so that some minerals in it have melted and recrystallized, but not oh, all the of them. Buzzing fact. I will say interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, uh, I've said this before like 10 hours ago, for like 10 hours, 10 hours of recording ago or something <laughs> like that. Uh, I, I did not have to know what a metamorphic rock and an igneous rock and a sedimentary rock is and how they all relate to each other. I do. Why do I know them now? <laughs> now, now you know. I, I was, no, I was educated God. on the subject throughout elementary school and middle school. And, and, and yeah, we yeah. didn't have geology ever or anything like that. It was, it was just kind of like a part of science class. I don't know, but we 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 did have to hmm. learn. We had to we had to like do like a project once so where we had to go out and find one example of sedimentary rock, metamorphic rock, and igneous rock. Sounds or, like or a very thing. Arizona thing to do. I mean, that's all there is in in, in the blasted wasteland. Uh, okay. It's just rocks all over. I'm uh, sure okay. of it. So uh, that's not particularly okay. I mean, we did, that, we did that in we did that in Virginia too, actually. Ha! Um, Got him. Hmm. Truth, truth to them. is that also a desert? <laughs> no. Uh, very much not a desert. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. Pranked. Take that. Anyway, mm. yeah, let's let's continue. <laughs> Saying from the pronouns, this is where I got the name Marangre for the language from. The first four letters of the word together are the first person plural possessive in plain language, it means our. The last three letters it means speech or language. Together it means our language. It's pronounced, okay. and I'm going to butcher this and I'm going to butcher it slowly. Speakers often call it which means language, and it's where I grab the English name from by butchering the pronunciation how I'd imagine it might be done. If you can't tell, I'm very good at butchering pronunciations. Okay, back to genders. Time for some syntax. Gender and syntax generally aren't a common combination, I think, but earlier I did say that I want a truly terrible grammar for my language. This is how it's coming through. For those of you who don't know, different languages can have different sentence structures based on where in the sentence the subject, object, and the verb go. English is an SVO language, which means the subject comes first, verb comes second, and object comes last. Let's take an example sentence. Cats eat birds. This is SVO, mm -hmm. since cats is the subject, eat is the verb, and birds is the object. Here's how that sentence would look if English ha used a different sentence structure for each of the other five potential structures. Uh -huh. An example of a language which, which uses a different structure is Hindi, which uses SOV sentence structure. In Hindi, that sentence is Bilyan Pakshion Kokhati uh, Hain, which word for word basically means Actually. cats, birds to eat are. I started doing a bit of research into which would be the worst structure to use. Eventually, I realized something. The worst one to use is all of them. <laughs> There are six possible sentence structures and six genders in Marangwe. Naturally, I came to the conclusion that the gender of the subject in a sentence should determine the structure of the sentence. This has the unfortunate, or perhaps fortunate, side effect of allowing some sentences to be really ambiguous depending on the genders of the subject and object in a sentence. For example, if I was to say, the man hit the car, because the man is masculine, mature, animate, it would be said as, the car the man hit. However, since the car is inanimate, it would also be said as, the car the man hit, if it was uh, the car hit the man. Hmm. Ah, okay. 
I'm not going to bother with most of the syntax stuff beyond what I've already covered, but I have decided to show off the three main possible noun phrase structures and verb structure. The first and third ones are like what we have in English, with a normal noun phrase and a pronoun noun phrase. The second one, however, has the noun at the front. In Marangre, uh, you put the determinant and the adjective yeah. phrase before the noun in all situations, except for when the noun is a rock. If the noun is a rock or a type of rock, then the noun comes oh first, because God. I'm a geology student and rocks are important. With verbs, the verb just goes at the uh, end, everything else comes okay. first, obviously unless there's a prepositional phrase. I'm not including the noun phrase of the verb phrase because, as per the last slide, it can move around depending on the subject gender. Okay, now that that's all over and done with, we can move on to the required translation. The required text for me to translate is, According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. So. I changed the sentence structure of each of these sentences to suit my language. So here's the rewritten structures, and please ignore the, the graphs here. Heavily simpl simplified, they're not professional in any capacity. All known aviation laws B should not have flying ability according. Okay. Are its wings too small for ground its exactly. body leaving? Oh no. The B obviously oh. anyways flies because bees don't care about oh. humans' possibility beliefs. Oh, man. Technically in the translation, it's, it's impossibility it's rather than possibility, <laughs> but having it in English so <laughs> oh, man. oh god, not the non-binary syntax trees, god. <laughs> like, oh, syntax trees with more than three elements or on, under a single node are an abomination in my opinion. <laughs> but alright. <laughs> it's beautiful. It doesn't sound as good in that context, so I just put oh, it as possibility. God. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> Time for the proper translation. Let's do this. Go. <laughs> Just lay, 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 Fuls and Ray Jules Jelay Rus Ray Fingay Jules Rus and Ray and Fuls Lay Rus Fingus Fay Ray Fuls Rus and Ray Fuls. All right, that was fun. All the kind of exhausting. Oh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and suffering through this with me. If you made your own language in this competition, I wish you all the best. My Discord and Twitter links are in the description for anyone who's interested. I'm always up for a chat. Also linked is Nga's announcement video for this competition. All right, I'll see you later. Nice. Cool. <laughs> Good content. I was not expecting the clock-based mm -hmm. language to actually be that. <laughs> Boom. All right. Bathroom break over. N3. Submission number 100. Radiator. Oh, did I just seek <laughs> Lightning McQueen? Oh, no. What? Oh, I did. Uh, <laughs> the okay. language of Radiator Springs. Yes. I've always, I've always wondered what language they speak there. Yeah. Yeah. What, what that dubbed movie? What is the original language of that dubbed movie we call Cars in English? Everyone, <laughs> welcome to my submission into Akmashwa's Curse Con Lang Circus. This is Radiator, the language of Radiator Springs from the hit Pixar movie Cars. Now, Cars are not humans. As such, they have their own car mouths that make a car sounds. Now, the consonant positions are pretty different from humans. However, it works in a similar way with it going from front to back. So we first had the manifold order. Uh, those are kind of like the bilabial sounds. They have a little bits of metal that can open and close, and that can allow them to get more or less air for their engines. 
Uh, we also have the griller. Um, <laughs> kind of like dental sounds, except instead of being able to move their jaws, uh, which they can't, um, they instead <laughs> have to retract their teeth to like stick out their tongue or do anything. So their tongue just kind of touches that. Oh, well, um, we also have the Corsair. Uh, like that is idea. when the tongue touches <laughs> one of their air filters, the uh, front one. And we have the Finero, which is when they touch the back one. And it's named the Corsair and Finero because it's the coarse air filter and then the fine air filter. And then there's the Engel, which is the touch, the tongue touching the engine. Oh, oh God. There's also some managed articulation. Uh, the only one of note that isn't one that humans have is the Gapiv, where because of the way cars' mouths work, they can actually put their tongue in between the air filters, and they can have the root of their tongue touch the engine uh -huh. and create a trill stop thing with the vibration from the engine. <laughs> oh no. Now, vowels is where it gets a little bit interesting. So, uh -huh. they only have three vowel positions, front, mid, and back, and that's just mainly where the tongue is in the mouth. However, the vowels can also be differentiated via gear. Now, there's six <laughs> gears that the cars have, and most vowel systems for cars go and distinguish by gear, so they constantly have to switch the gear their engine is in, in order to talk. Here's what the car phonetic alphabet looks like, <laughs> the car from top to bottom. <laughs> the, the CPA! <laughs> the car phonetic yeah. alphabet. Oh man, this is... I... that has given me some uncomfy imagery already, the freaking... <laughs> oh god. Okay. I don't like the tongue touching the engine. I'm just trying to space out at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you must feel it. Feel the pain that N3 wants yeah. us to feel. <laughs> well, I certainly feel the fear. <laughs> oh god. Left or right? This we'll have to wait like. until we can actually hear it. Yeah. Oh. Oh no! And now, <laughs> the B movie, as pronounced by a text-to-speech, because I'm not pronouncing that, I can't make those sounds. That all this sounds like uh, uh when well, what is that freaking game called there's like this it's like this car game on steam where you can like mess with like the physics affecting the car like the gravity and everything and whenever it glitches the sound of the engine just goes insane and it sounds like that <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Oh my god. Alright, let's see how this cursed gloss turns into the grammar. All of the text is color-coded, and that is for all of the various grammatical particles. We'll touch more on that in a bit. But first, we need to go and talk about mechanical life. Mechanical life is something we need to touch on because some of them are sapient and some might not be. So cars we know for a fact are sapient. They can communicate with other cars. With planes, they're definitely sapient. However, they can't communicate with other cars because they have their engine above their mouth instead of behind it, like cars do. <laughs> Boats, they might be sapient, they probably are. Uh, there's no way they can communicate with cars. The engine's on the complete other side, so they would have nothing to produce sound oh with. God. Um, trains, we haven't really seen much of in the Cars universe, and <laughs> one time they had a train, I did not see that, so I could be sapient, could communicate with cars, I don't know. And submarines, the, from my understanding, the only time we've ever seen a submarine is um, as a shark or a Nemo poster. So, <laughs> there's no way these things are sapient. I'm sorry, they're sharks. And they can't communicate because they don't have an air filter. They're, they're sharks, but are themed. <laughs> Cars probably respect other mechanical life, but there's no way for them to really Parks. tell that the others are sapient. So, that's why this bit comes in. So, genders and radiator are based on animacy. The first gender we have, the most animate, is the car gender, which is specifically for other cars and planes, which sounds like... The next one we have is the metallic gender, which is specifically for non-car and non-plane mechanical life, which is... We also have animals, which is specifically for non-metallic animals, which is... Yeah. 
um to to the cars that's completely different it's it's contrastive it's that's what you make obviously <laughs> yeah totally totally uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> the next one we have is plants which is specifically for plants wow and the final well, one, one is the other one. It is the yeah. other gender. It's specifically for inanimate objects. And it sounds like... <laughs> Radiator has a couple more particles, that being oh, the cases. So, there's three real cases here and also a marked mood. So we have the nominative, which is... We have the accusative, which is... And we have the genitive, which is... You may have noticed that they sound real similar. That is because they are only distinguished by the gear of the vowel. Uh, there's also the <laughs> optative mood, which sounds like that's the only one of these that has a consonant. Uh, there's also some other affixes. We have a negative, plural, and definite. Uh, the negative sounds like, the plural sounds like, and the definite sounds like. So that's really about it for the grammar. Um, there is a couple other things first. Uh, let's take a look at car anatomy. Oh, no. so, we can see they have large brains, we can oh, see God. the mouth. We'll get to the mouth oh, itself in a bit. Um, one thing to note is it says plus room when the car is at the top. We're going to get- Why is the brain the vast majority of the whole body? <laughs> the entire cat? A big brain, that's why. <laughs> the the <laughs> transmission. The <Latin> <laughs> Cool. The, Latin name, the Latin name, by the way, is Plaustrum means like a, a vehicle, a wagon. <laughs> oh god. And the, and the freaking tongue inside of the <laughs> At least it doesn't have a nervous system. Oh man. The nervous system looks like it just goes into the wheels. <laughs> that brain stem just kind of dips right into where the, the axle probably is. Terrifying. Oh, <laughs> Egg sack. It, I ah. guess it's not. I guess it's not. <laughs> <laughs> they lay eggs. <laughs> the car. Eggs. Oh God! I didn't see that. <laughs> they, they pop God. out of the trunk whenever they're, they're ready to hatch. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's, it's horrible. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I guess they're not the four-wheel drive, but I don't know why they only have... It looks like they only have direct control over their back wheel. Yeah. I don't see any way that it connects to the front. Unless it just so, goes through an axle that's not labeled on the diagram. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, God. Don't worry. So, but here's where we get to that. So, car taxonomy. So, they're all in the Perry Palace family, and there's three geniuses, <laughs> that being Arena... Ferrampelis, <laughs> Aqua, Plaustrum, and Arinus. So I'm guessing that means like aerial, like car and, and, and water. Like, yes, pretty much. Plaustrum is like car to wagon. Gotcha. And then Feria is just iron, so like metal. Like, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Plaustrum and Aqua. So. The main ones of the Feria Palace family are uh, Arenas Lemonade, which is planes, Arena Sigma Sair, which is blimps, Plaster Moon Pars, which is, as we said earlier, cars, Plaster Flores Partis, which is trains, uh, Aque Splundum, which is boats, and Aque Interfluctus, which is ups. Oh god. So I'm here's the diagram of the car. I will say, um, <laughs> technically, the Latin word for, for skin is pellis. Not pelis, it's two L's. A one. <laughs> Metal skin. <laughs> I'd like to see the larger yeah, tree that's, where they that's, evolved that's from. That's what it means, the metal skin. Oh, man. Okay. This is, this is terrifying. Oh, cavital vent. I read that as car it all vent. <laughs> uh, same thing at this point. Car mouth that I was saying we get to. So, we can see the manifolds and grill in the front. We can see the grill cavity where the grill uh, retracts into. We can also see the Corsair and Veneral filters. Uh, the tongue is interesting in that, uh, unlike human tongues, the tongue is actually kind of still attached to the sides of the mouth. So, there needs to be a cavital vent underneath the tongue to make sure that the pressure doesn't create a vacuum seal with the bottom of the mouth. Oh god. Because of just the air pressures we're dealing with due to the engine. Oh, that's so, horrible. that's where all of the manners and types of articulation came from. So, that's that's really about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is... 
Once again, this is a submission <laughs> for Agnes Schwa's Curse Con Link Circus. Uh, um, the is... It couldn't be anything else. The speech program, uh, yep. the pack that I use for the text where, where, where yep. else speech is program, and a dictionary will be in the description. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> so, That's. Oh, God. Uh, How did they even um... make the sounds for this? <laughs> I guess they just got slammed together in the freaking text speech. The language is bad enough, but the card biology is worse, I think. Yeah. I okay. Mean, yeah. That that's but another this is one. Like, a, like is, this is the second one that has made me physically like shudder and cringe. Ah, uh, yeah. Which if this good, was like what was the other one, guy, uh, that was the. This was like the like. Like, I don't know, like, artifacts inversion of this, like, cursed world building? That probably would have gotten a 100 on everything yeah, from me. The cursed world build. Hello there, my fellow circus freaks. Are you aware that I have YouTube channel memberships? And some may call it Patreon. If you didn't, now you do. If you go on over to patreon.com slash nah, then you'll see my Patreon. Would you look at that? If you become a patron of mine or a channel member, you'll get some weekly updates from me. You'll get to join a secret Discord chat where you can see some behind the scenes info on what's been going on with the channel. For example, the massive epic process of making this happen and much more. You get to choose the memes that go on the green screen in the background of my normal videos. You get to I, I don't even know. If, if you think of something cool, you, we can make that happen too. Um, so yeah, if if you wanna if you wanna be a real cool person, you, wanna, you can click that join button, or you could go on over to Patreon.com/nga, or if you wanna support Eternal and his programming for the Discord server, you could go on over to patreon.com slash I'll have that spelled out for you on the screen or something. Um, yeah, support is great. It makes us feel good. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Our next one. This one is interesting. This one, I may have to explain some context for, maybe they're gonna explain the context for it, so we'll see, but this is entitled The Brain Fuck of Conlang, which is not particularly pro good god, yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid. Do you know what brain fuck? I am worried. Oh god, yes, I've heard of brain fuck. Do you know uh, what brain fuck oh. is? Yes, the, 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 I may the code have to explain this one. coding language. Oh god. Brainfuck is an uh, esoteric programming language, which is basically the con the, the the programming equivalent of a cursed conlang, but it's a cursed programming language. Uh, if you Google brainfuck programming language real quick, you'll see what this is on about. Oh god. Let's see. Let's just go to the Wikipedia page, for instance, then if you scroll down a bit, you'll see an example program. Uh, further down, 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 down. Oh. Still down. There's that a bit there further one... down, there's the Hello World. This is Hello World in Brainfuck. Uh, this program prints the string Hello World to, to the console. Uh, Brainfuck basically was, well, the, the creator had the objective of creating a language with the smallest possible compiler. Uh, this is basically just a Turing machine. That's all there is to it. <laughs> oh, God. With, like, a simple loop functionality. And uh, it consists of, yeah, eight characters, and you do everything with those. Uh, eight to six characters. Yeah, eight characters, see. I think it is. Uh, yeah. Now I want to uh, see the programming equivalent of intercal. So, yeah, hello, this is Hello World in Brainfuck. <laughs> for readability in quotation marks <laughs> and that's what it is <laughs> that's what it actually is that's the code oh, God. yes oh, that's, you know that's a more a, a reasonable language which is right print hello world something to that equivalent this is how you do it in brain fact in brain fuck. so if their language is the brain fuck of conlanging then i'm worried <laughs> let's let's see yeah let's see let's find out hello everyone 
Welcome. Today we'll be documenting whatever this is, also known as computer response in English. Okay. This is essentially to be known as the brain fuck of con ranking. It was a language made by me. <laughs> okay. For the, the curse conic circus, as I remember. I'm speed you up a little bit. This, but this video was uh, once made mm -hmm. to have lore or something. But the deadline's coming up, so I'm just gonna do this. Now, let's get mm -hmm. on to the purpose. ESL okay. PSN is primarily used as a hypothetical language spoken by computers with 32 bit and 64 bit technologies. Okay, it's technically impossible like to speak again. it. However, if I. However, if I ever hear you vocalizing this language, you're not human. Also, good luck dealing with the fourth dimensional entity behind you. It is inspired by the old dial internet technology, which now might be no longer used in daily life. So there's that. Might be. Now, let's get to the phonetics. Have, what is the background noise? So. Is, is it like, is there, is there <laughs> like whistling? A or is sound. it like, a, is it a dog <laughs> whining? Or is it like just humming or whistling? Oh no, oh, I God. don't know. A very quiet audio track of somebody playing the slide whistle. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> ESL primarily uses a set of geometric shapes represented by Unicode characters, as sample suggest. That means there's no regular phonetics. So, I'm just gonna <laughs> pull a middle finger to you and say, "Fuck you! No regular phonetics. Okay. We're talking cursed here." <laughs> These shapes are used to convey the language's meaning. The language doesn't have traditional phonetics or phonology, and it's not meant for human vocalization. Again, if you ever vocalize those sounds, you're not human. <laughs> okay. And so the samples are init, CRE, RESP, CRD, ASL, CL, MS, AC1, ASM, CM, JM, Info, PSN, RSN, TRSM, SYNC, SQL, IL, SDIF, PB, CB, EQ, and RAMP. The, uh, okay, this so one, this one, the what? And the like, the names of these like are a bit strange. Like it's just from all over the place. I'll say like ACK stands for uh, acknowledge, which is typically what you have in in like protocols to acknowledge that a, a message has been received. Whereas something like SDIV stands for sign division. And uh, typically, the, um, the 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 slash is used for division. Uh, then we have EQ for equals. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. So the, these these some of these abbreviations make sense, but uh, not necessarily in the context with these symbols. Okay, I yeah, I, I get the point. <laughs> Called guy dollar, which probably stands for give us your money. It is ironically, or ironically, I am, I am, I'm, look, it's a Windows logo and it is not standard. What do I do? All right. So the <laughs> orthography. Awesome. Give us the okay. money and the Windows logo. Yes, so PSN uses a combination yeah. of unicode geometric shapes to set samples and about characters made for obfuscation. The obfuscation part adds emphasis to uh -huh. the words spoken with the samples. <laughs> the samples and obfuscation characters actually interact in nonlinear ways. Oh no. To convey semantic. Mm. What is this? Look. I don't know uh, how I made this. Okay. I don't know why I made this. <laughs> One thing is that all <laughs> this language Jeremy, could potentially summon <laughs> <laughs> whatever lives in a tesseract. You know. Now let's get to the grammar. What? <laughs> no, not your grandmother. Your grammar. Yes, so PSS grammar is inspired by machine assembly code. There's that. It mostly follows a script oh, subject no. for object word order. However, it is four dimensional. As mentioned before, uh, it can change to any order as long as it is. The uh, orders are SV, VO, SO, SOS, oh no. Mustard, <laughs> Car, Panasonic Blu-ray, <laughs> whatever this symbol is. It doesn't have an intellectual or argumentative figure. Sync just is our structure logically and securely, but there is no card with it. You know. <laughs> okay. I'm genuinely confused. <laughs> now let's get to the vocabulary. <laughs> vocabulary. 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 That's the vocab. Yeah. The 
Just as a side note, in case I need, because maybe I need to explain it. Machine assembly code is basically just uh, machine instructions, but in, in a human and readable form. So that's what the CPU actually executes. That's things like add two numbers together, multiply two numbers together, divide two numbers, uh, number by another number, branch if this number is greater than zero or whatever. <laughs> Stuff like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Core vocabulary consists of geometric shapes and a limited set of symbolic characters, representing my brain not being able to understand the concept of creating comics. New words can be formed by combining existing symbols. <laughs> so go use the window symbol if you want. For example, you can do this. Okay. Which essentially means it's literally just what? English for I want to kill myself. Okay. <laughs> now, for the script and finding um, system, I feel like this was created in like a few states. Yeah. Exactly. This. This. this, this is, <laughs> It, it, it feels like Jeremy was uh, is like hiding from the police right now, explaining this. <laughs> it's like... Oh man! Which are the Romanized, the Romanized, and the symbolized. There are also hypothetical uh -huh. ones. <laughs> what is happening? Like the binary, the, the decimal. The summary, binary, which is so my face being <laughs> slammed into the keyboard, and I'll. Uh, okay. well, let's just give her the name. Yeah, what was that? Uh, uh, let's see if we can well, pin, let's just give pin that one. The decimal, the summary, which the is comma and my face to being go back and forth frame. Um, the, the thing is, that might mess up the recording because of the hot key. Oh it's my like god, the keyboard. Fine. And I'll. <laughs> it says I can pull it up if you'd like. It, ha it had the lore to the in keyboard. it. And I'll God damn it! I <laughs> shall I do that, Agma? Do it, do it. I need I to can know. Read it out to you. Hold on. I need to know. We, well, we no, I think you should I just turn down the speed of the video and then click on it. It would probably Hold make on. it easier. No, 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 no. I have uh, got it. Got it. Which is. My face. I've got it, I've got it. Big... Oh, you got it? Okay, so it says, I have been locked in the basement for two months. I haven't <laughs> seen my family since then. If anyone can help here, the coordinates 37.629562. <laughs> Uh, minus one hundred and eight point eight four nine. Type it up. Let me search that on Google Maps. Yeah, type it. We have to find it. Yeah, it is in. Uh, <laughs> it is in in here. Yeah, hold on. Is this Groom Lake? That's the real question. It is. Oh, yeah, that is like right next to. That is right next to. Google Maps. Mud Lake. It's not. Okay, Area Fifty One is Groom Lake. I'm not seeing Groom Lake in you here. Know, we can't, uh, okay, uh, oh, maybe wait, no, you that can... Isn't, isn't I, type... I typed in Area 51 and found a location very close by, so... <laughs> this is freaking... This basement is located oh. deep in Triangle 2, that's what it's called. Triangle 2. I it am appears true. to be a missile testing site. <laughs> and it is just a <laughs> giant triangle. <laughs> and this giant triangle has been reviewed once. And somebody, some, someone with a Korean character and Soon just gave it one star three days ago with no, no other context. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That, that is the only thing they've ever reviewed. But it says they're a local guide. <laughs> wow, a local naturally. guide of Triangle 2. I love it. Right. <laughs> okay, let's let's get back to God. it. We, 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 got, we got a lot to go through. <laughs> let's just do this, but that's beautiful. Slammed it to the keyboard. Yeah. And I'll... Uh, well, let's just skip to the naming conventions. Now... Okay. Okay. You're wondering what does this uh. mean? I'm genuinely confused yes, as you are. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or the last two. <laughs> the sound. This so it means computers are basement around. trapping. But the language is so complicated. It's not, this doesn't only mean computer server. This also means there is no god. There is only void at the Why end of the they world. They were tapping uh, me. You were only at the purgatory <laughs> waiting to be god, born. What more stranger? It was probably was at this point, honestly. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Camel subconscious basics policy remix. Stop it. Hey, <laughs> and with what? 
Which are just essentially words surrounded by a gap. That is totally letters, Morse code happening right whatever. now. Let's just get on to the tenses and the aspects. Yes, of PSA does it have verb tenses, aspects, or words as it focuses the precise and concise communication. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. So the syntax. Seller, this is follow ah. strict <laughs> SPO structure. However, <laughs> I would like to mention the language is also four dimensional. And you know how it goes. Questions are fought by adding a question mark symbol at the end of a sentence. This guy's actually trapped <laughs> in the basement, and we're just laughing. <laughs> this. Honestly, at this point, yeah. like. This. And this. <laughs> yeah. Job. So, pronouns. Those are relatively simple. We have the singular, the plural. Okay. And the one for attack helicopter, which is essentially oh the curse God. of Ra. <laughs> yes. What? If you're an attack helicopter, these are your pronouns. <laughs> it's the full thing. Not what the, what yep. the heck? Is it, are those like... I'll teach you the Uber rules. Okay. The SLPS said uses yeah. the base 64 counting system for 64... The, yeah, what are those called? I must say it. Oh, man. Hi hieroglyphics. The, there, there you go. I said the thing. There you go. <laughs> Okay. First of all, except they said that basic <laughs> two computer system, which is this. Numeric values are represented by using the corresponding geometric same same symbol symbolic characters. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I was definitely now, screaming, right? For this an ARG. Sample. The required translation I have is, according <laughs> to all known laws of aviation, there was no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Now, here's the spoke is <laughs> Which translates back to English, the conventional wisdom suggests that with its small wings in proportion to its body, bees should not be able to achieve control of flight. However, bees have long demonstrated that ability to fly in spite of scientific expectations, in least of human predictions. What, of what? Uh, whatever. So, this represents B, this represents to suggest, this flight, small body, blah 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 blah. And thank you for watching. What the hell is happening? This is an ARG. <laughs> What is happening? One take. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. Oh, uh, yes, one take, clearly. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mo most, most certainly. Obviously. The language yeah. of what is this? Official documentation Good. here. Okay. Does it have any comments? No, it's unlisted. Oh, how does it have 59 views? Oh. <laughs> Interesting. They watched it 59 times. <laughs> done in one take with PowerPoint. It does say done in one take with PowerPoint. Yeah, God. Oh, God. I have to see oh, what this link no. goes to. Just, just real quick. Oh, it's actually... What it actually is the documentation. <laughs> it's just a nightmare. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a picture of a cat God. to help you stress out. Thank you. Okay, anyway, points. Uh, and even... <laughs> oh, move on. This one was oh, no, that was one of the strangest... Oh. It feels like one of the strangest oh. ones. Let's see if I can open this on Brave or if I... Alright. Oh god, that's, okay, the, that's so... the word for B. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. Alright, let's do it. Oh, Here god. it is. The clone that I have been working on for the past two or three months or something. I didn't really know what to name it, so I just chose the word that means B. And here we can see an example sentence. But as I will explain in a moment, this is all not technically not really true. But first, something about the slide that you can see here. All those images, those are not decorations. Those actually have some meaning. Those are actually relevant for the language, oh, which hopefully illustrates how cursed it is. Oh, no. So to joke, what is it all about? In this language, you don't communicate by speaking or by writing or by signing things with your hands. In this language, you communicate by creating other conlangs. Oh so God. instead of words, you have conlangs. Okay, instead of good. sentences, you just have a, a bunch of conlangs, which can maybe be a conlang family, but not necessarily. I like to call this type of language a klanglang, which is short for <laughs> constructed language, constructed language. And from now on, I will say klanglang instead of this word, because I am not going to say that many times. 
Okay. And in the beginning, I told you that most of this is not technically true. Well, that is because this word, the name of the language, is not actually the word that means be in this Kurt Conlang, but it is the word that means be in the Conlang that means be. Oh, and no. this example sentence <laughs> is a sentence in that language that means be. No. I hope this makes a bit of sense. So I got the idea for no. this conlang during the previous CCC, in which I did not participate because I was thinking about what I could have made if I participated. <laughs> but I didn't actually make any of the language before we could start working on the conlang for this CCC. And I know that it's not really a joke, it's not really funny, but I think it's quite good. And as far as I know, no one has done it before. <laughs> so just like how normal languages have a phonology with phonemes, this conlang has a conlangology with conlangemes. So a glong game is like a sort of <laughs> conlang, but oh glong games and longs, conlangs, are not the same in the same way that phonemes and phones are not the same. However, glong games are not really equivalent to phonemes because most of the morphology of the language actually happens inside of glong games. So one glong game is like the equivalent to one word or phrase in English or other languages. So all the following slides are about glongology. So how do you systematically create conlangs? What systems does the language use to make conlangs? And after that, I will talk about the morphoglongology, which is about um, how the language uses these systems to actually say things. And to save a bit of time, I won't go into too much detail about everything. I will just tell generally what happens in the language, but a lot of it is written on the slide. So if you really want to understand how it works, you can just pause the video and read it. So, phonology. How does this conlang systematically create phonologies? To do this, it uses phonological features like plus or minus obstruent or plus or minus anterior. So how that works, a clone game chooses a set of such features that it uses distinctively. So that means that those features that it chooses are used to distinguish between different phonemes. It doesn't mean that the other features don't exist, but rather that their values can be predicted from the distinctive features. And not only the values of non-distinctive features can be predicted from the values of the distinctive features, but also the values of the distinctively used features can be predicted from the values of other distinctively oh, used God. features. This works by using a sort of if-then conditions or predictions. Some of these conditions are universal. For example, if minus consonantal, then minus obstruent. That is just by definition. But some conditions are not universal and specific to certain languages. And conditions with distinctive features in the then side, they make the phoneme inventory smaller. So which features are used distinctively and which if-then conditions with distinctive features in the then part the language has make a phonology. So these are all the features that can be used distinctively. The order in which they appear on this slide is also important later in the language. If you want to read all of this, you can pause the video. So apart from a list of features, there is also a table of if-then conditions, with all possible combinations of features and values. For each possible condition, it is indicated whether it is automatic or universal, or impossible, which is the opposite of automatic, likely, unlikely, or something in between, which then indicates how likely a language is to have that condition. So here it is, the big table that I probably oh, spent God. almost half of my time working on instead of working on the rest it's of the online. How do you even, it's not even readable, it's so huge. Oh yeah. God. It's just a grid of all the possibilities, I guess. Oh man. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so just a summary, how do you make a phonology? First you choose which features are distinctive. Then you create tables with all the possible combinations of values of those features oh, to create God. all the phonies that could be possible. And I say could be possible because some of those are already automatically deleted because of those universal conditions. Then you choose if-then conditions with distinctive features in the then part. And then you choose um, conditions with non-distinctive features in the then part to create <laughs> the actual phonemes, sort of. Because then there is still room for variation for one phoneme. And it's up to the Klonglang speaker to decide the actual pronunciation of those phonemes. So in the end there are still multiple possible phonologies for one Klong game, and those different possibilities are called allophonologies. And since a glongi must always have inherently syllabic and inherently non-syllabic sounds, we can define the syllable and word structure not using consonant or vowel, but by using non-syllabic sounds and syllabic sounds. Okay. And we must also define a few things mm -hmm. about phonotactics, which is done in different places of the glongi. And all of the restrictions that apply to words also apply to roots, so the bare root that suffixes and prefixes are attached to. So, vocabulary. In order to systematically handle words and the meanings they have, we need to do a few things with numbers. So oh, first we take all again. the distinctive features uh, of the language and order them. Yeah. Oh god. But not just me, so it is you, Agnon. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, too late now. <laughs> We've come too far. This computer is dying. <laughs>
<laughs> uh. Alright. Hopefully that's enough time. Let's do it. Them from left to right in the order of the slides shown before with all the features that the languages can choose from. And if we then take a minus a value of a feature as 0 and a plus value of a feature as a 1, oh, no. we get a sort of binary counting system number system thing. Yep. But how we can use this is by looking at each individual phoning and by doing that uh, number system thing, each phoning gets its own number. So here you can see an example of how it works. Oh, and those numbers of the phonemes are used to build words. So here it's explained how you can use the numbers of those features to create another sort of number system. There are a lot of number systems in this clone lang. To give each individual phonologically huh. possible root word its own number, oh, which is man. used later on in the language. So actually, this is all that I can explain about how to systematically create clone games without having to talk about how to put meaning into those clone games. So from here I will explain both how to put meaning into clone games and how to systematically create clone games because sometimes you have to understand the one to understand the other. So first something about syntax, how sentences are built. So the clone games are placed on a map as if they were a bunch of real languages. Okay. So only the geographical center of the area in which they are spoken are, is placed on a map. So the actual borders of the area in which it is spoken are not important. And the grid in which they are placed acts as a map so it uses north, south, east, west instead of something like x and y. Oh, no. So there are four types of clone game. There are nouns, sentence initial verbs, sentence medial verbs, and what? sentence final verbs. Oh no! So all of the clone games don't have an absolute location, but only a relative location. And nouns are placed relative to the verbs that they belong to. And the verbs are placed relative to the first verb in the sentence that those verbs belong to. So in order to know in which order the verbs within one sentence come, you just go from the sentence initial verb to the nearest sentence medial or sentence final verb. And from sentence medial verbs, you just go to the nearest sentence medial or sentence final verb. Unless the nearest one is already used in another sentence, or if the nearest one is the previous one. But also, what this means is that if a sentence does not have a sentence final verb, you can just create sentences that are circles that just go round and round and round. And the order of sentence initial verbs, so the order of the sentences, can be seen by the number of speakers. So the order of sentences is indicated by an increasing number of speakers um. with every initial verb. So each clone game has a core meaning, which is like the root of the clone game, and it is indicated by coupling phonologically possible words to meanings. Uh -huh. And basically everything else in the clone is used for inflection, sort of. So the core meaning is literally just an image, at least for nouns, an image with 64 possible colors on a grid of 20 by 20 pixels. And for verbs, it's a sequence of three images oh. with 20 by 20 pixels, and where the colors indicate certain nouns that the verb refers to. And because of this, this clone lang does not have a lexicon, so I can't send in a list of words, unfortunately. So this core meaning is indicated by a basic vocabulary of <laughs> 395 basic words, and actually also by some of the grammar and syntax and even a little bit of okay. the phonetic tactics of the clone game. So there's a list of roots that each language gets, and also a list of grammar, syntax, phonetic tactics things. Oh but that list is flexible and there's like multiple sections of the list, and each section has multiple options. So which option you choose also has some meaning in the clone lang. So the redness of each pixel in the case oh. of a noun, or the values yes. of the first image of a verb, are used for the basic vocabulary. The and this is where the individual <laughs> numbers of the roots are important again, because as indicated by the pixels, you start at some value and then go around all the possible values, uh, assigning phonologically possible roots to each meaning. And a similar thing is done for the grammar, syntax, phonetics list. But this time, sometimes uh, the pixels can also indicate things about grammar or syntax or phonetics. And here in the PowerPoint, it's actually explained separately for nouns and verbs, but it's actually mostly the same thing. So about the grammar, syntax, phonetics list, um, here it is. It's very much unfinished. You can't read everything that it says on this screenshot, so Tunga, if you want to read it, I sent it to you. And this is what the different oh, options God. for the different sections mean. Oh, God. So now we're going back to the distinctive features. Um, which features are distinctive is used for reference. So each clone game can refer to up to four other clone games. For nouns, this indicates relations such as possession, origin, or similarity. And for verbs, it indicates uh, what each pixel value refers to. The features n high and n back are used for locating the first two reference, which is explained here. n long and <laughs> the first three features are used for locating the third <laughs> reference. Grid with its color and coding. features f 4, 5, and 6 are used for the fourth. <laughs> Features 7 to 22 are used for indicating what, what kind of relation there is between clone game and its reference. So this is like a sort of a noun case system. So if the clone game is a noun, it indicates what kind of possession or similarity okay. there is or something else. 
and for verbs it indicates how the referent participates in the action. And to bring a bit more variation into the clone games, one of the features is chosen as a number 1 and the others are the number 2 to 22. So it's not always the same features indicating the same things. And if then conditions, those are separated into two kinds, the ones with distinctive features in the then part and ones with non-distinctive features in the then part. These conditions indicate the scale of the noun, so how big the thing is that is drawn, or for verbs it indicates the time between frames. The ones with distinctive features are used for the horizontal scale or the time between the first and second frames. And the non-distinctive ones are for the vertical scale or the time All between the second and third frames. Again. And because sometimes... I, I wanted to say anyway, this is like... This is like 4D conlanging. This is... Yeah, this is very complicated. Good the, God. This is like... This is a different like cognitive angle than I've had to take the entire time watching all these other submissions. <laughs> I'm like... Uh, mm -hmm. I've just gotten... I, I've just... My mind is just so blown that like... I feel like I'm not even... I'm disassociated. <laughs> you've 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 gone into another fugue mm. state, just vanished. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna start tapping my microphone in Morse code. <laughs> start just tapping in Morse code, please. <laughs> Help me, mm. oh, God. Less distinctive features are chosen. This means that sometimes there's just less precision. So here is so if you can find a bunch of real for... languages that follow the specific specific. Uh, distinctions. You could probably use real languages to yeah. communicate with this. Yeah, there's like there's like no so just... reason for it to be distinguished at that point. It's so deep. Yeah. Uh... Wait, that then that means uh, if they had just used actual languages instead of making more conlangs, then it would have, I think, in some ways, sort of been a, a posteriori. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Ah, uh, rip. Unless technically it's... this is innately a posteriori because it is entirely yeah, made up of yeah. languages anyway. Yeah, they're kind of a uh, posteriori yeah, that doesn't... themselves. I, th we'll, I we'll, see, we'll see where the end result of this goes, but I think it counts. Just It's in such a weird four-dimensional way. It's so weird. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's continue. The ones with the distinctive features in them parts. So again, you have to do something with a number system. And the highest of this number indicates that size or time is not applicable or not, not relevant in some way. The lowest possible value indicates some sort of middle value, like one meter or one second. And everything else indicates big or small values, as is explained here. And some of the phonotactics outside of the grammar syntax phonotactics list is used for plurality. And also for emphasis, negation, and interrogation. And for verbs, instead of plurality and definiteness, it indicates aspect. So here you can see how plurality works for nouns. And here it indicates how definiteness works. Oh, so instead God. of just definite and indefinite, there are three things. Indefinite <laughs> means God. that it's not, not just any specific thing. It, it doesn't really matter which specific thing it is, so you can translate it with any or some. Unknown means that it is a specific thing, but that the speaker just doesn't know which thing it is. And definite is just a normal kind of definite. The whole last three so here's explain how negation, like... interrogation, yeah. and emphasis works for nouns. Um, this is aspect for verbs. And also uh, some things about how the verb relates to the sentence and negation. And one thing for both verbs and nouns, because sometimes it's not really clear what, what is wrong. So using some phonotactics, you can indicate how much words are needed to describe the thing that is wrong in the language that both the speaker and listener speak. And then finally, something about oh, allo dialectal ontology. Different <laughs> dialects can be used to indicate things that the speaker is uncertain about. So if you're not certain about a certain thing, then you just make different dialects for one clonging with the thing that you're not certain about being different in each dialect. So that was all of the conlang. Now we've gone to the translation, which is actually okay. incomplete because making one clone game actually takes a lot of time. <laughs> the only one that is actually complete, or at least as far as it can be complete, is the conlang that means B, which you saw at the beginning of the presentation. Oh, no. I also managed to make the phonology for some others, but not the actual words and morphemes that they have. And I don't have the phonology for any of the others, which means that they also don't have any words or morphemes. Only some grammar and syntax and some phonotactics. So I hope that it's considered complete enough. So I here you can see the map with the idea. clone games. You can see what the clone game means, what reference it has, and sometimes some things about modality or evidence. 
and also what sentence they are in. So if you literally translate what this says, you'll get this. According to all laws of aviation, about which I can say this, any bee cannot get <laughs> off the ground into the sky, its wings are very small, <laughs> and its fat little body cannot get off the ground, and the bee does fly, actually, and it doesn't have what humans think is impossible in its mind. So let's start with the clone game for B. In the bottom left, you can see the image that is encrypted into the language. <laughs> and more specifically, <laughs> the clone game means no. any bee. And the can, as in the bee cannot get off the ground, is also in this clone game. This language has the consonants. <laughs> and the vowels. <laughs> uh, and uh. I saved the pronunciation of the name of the kanlang and the example sentence for now. So here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> so for the rest of the content, the most important thing are the noun cases okay, that you can see in the okay. table in the middle, the enough. pronouns, the pronouns added onto verbs, and the phonotactics in the left of the screen. There are also some numbers on the screen which I needed for translating, so those are not important. So next up is the clonging that means sky. It has the consonants t. Oh, T, B, K, or T, and or and the vowels. That is a strange alphabet. Which I cannot yeah. pronounce. And ah. <laughs> I managed to make a few morphemes for the clone game, but not much. So next up is the clone game that means grass. It has the consonants <laughs> T, S, H, H, and I. E. And the vowels. <laughs> That's a, a tiny and, phonology. Uh. So next up is the laws of aviation. Yeah. Which is one of the unfinished ones. <laughs> and then the word that means fly. It has a big phonology with short, long, and overlong distinction, ingress of sounds, uh, pharyngeal consonants, syllabic consonants, oh, no front yeah. vowels, and probably a laminal epical distinction. In the drawing, you can see the B, the Y dot, oh, going off the ground into the sky and flying around. So next up is the longing, that means wing. This one does have a phonology. It has the consonants F and H, and the vowels R, A, and N. So all the following ones are unfinished. I do have a general idea of what the phonology is like for most of them, because I do know which distinctive features that they have, but that is all, so I only have a general idea of what the phonology is like. If you want to read what the languages are like, you can pause the video. This one means to be small for the wings. This one means fat little body, but the drawing is not exactly little, or the smallness must then be indicated by the if-then conditions. This one means to get off the ground. This one again means fly, but this time it's emphasized to say that the bee flies anyway. Here I try to make a drawing depicting what humans think is impossible. <laughs> and here I try to say to care about by drawing what the bee cares about inside of his head. And that was the whole translation. Oh, God. Until next year, hopefully. <laughs> wow. Okay, wow. That was just beyond comprehension. Holy crap. And recordings on. On to Diana's language language. Let's see, let's see what that's like in comparison to the previous language. My Conlang circle submission is a language language, uh, short into R, which is also how the language is named uh, in itself. Yeah. There's something interesting here, and it's, it's the channel name, actually. Uh, if you're a programmer, you'll recognize this without going into too much detail. This is a, uh, the name of a very cursed implementation of a quick reverse square root function that basically calculates 1 over the square root of x via <laughs> evil bit twiddling x. Let's put it that way, and it was originally found in, I think, the Quake source code, so... I see how I thought it was a very programming part reference. Part. <laughs> okay. Alright, anyway, let's see. Which is a apostrophe constructed language based on a programming language APL. It mixes the syntax of APL with the oh, no. like instruction oh, no. to create horrible experience of vagueness and yeah, I don't know anything it. about APL. The language is basically stolen from Polish. <laughs> oh, oh, I can explain that one. <laughs> if you go back a bit, go back one slide, oh, that was a good example. God. So up there we have Python, we have, uh, what are we doing here? We're sorting numbers, I think, we're, I'm not an expert in Python, but I think we're reversing it or something. And then we are just adding an array of numbers together. That's like the Python code, where it says sum i greater than zero for i and whatever. Below that is how you do the same in uh, BQN, it would seem. Oh god. 
Okay, this is, this is a very there again. It's 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 not exactly not necessarily a great language because unlike Brainfuck, you can actually program in this one <laughs> in APL dialects. APL, by the way, stands for a programming language. I know, very very <laughs> inventive. Uh, BGN is um, a descendant or oh, dialect. Oh gosh, or isn't variant. APL like a really old language? Well, I think it goes back to like the seventies or eighties or something. Yes. Oh god. Um, so for for a programming language, that's pretty damn old. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, okay. it's not a new concept. The first programming languages have been around for a while. Intercal being my favorite there. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it was yeah, developed in the sixties. Sixties even interesting. The thing about APL is that it's very dense. It has a it uses a, a wide array of different characters that you typically don't use in programming, um, and it is able of, to express like very complex operations in very few characters to the point where uh, if you just if you don't know APL and you look at APL code, it just seems like a random bunch of symbols. Oh, it's also not, it wasn't designed as an esoteric language at all. No, it wasn't. APL is an actual really? programming language, though it's not widely used. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Yeah. Mm. Oh, God. Well, let's see what this is about then. To create horrible experience of vagueness and ambiguity. The phonology is basically stolen from Polish. <laughs> Each word in all conjugates by its required mm -hmm. arity. The number of arguments that it accepts. Ending word with E makes it nilating, taking zero arguments. Ending with E makes it monadic, uh, with oh. one argument. And ending with O makes it dyadic, taking two arguments. Oh. One of the words in all is all. By different conjugations, it has different meanings. Uh, Niladik oli means water or flow. Oh, okay. Monadik ole means uh, something swims. Diadik olu means something swims towards something. It is only one of the meaning that all can carry. Olu may mean that something is dragged by someone, like river drags whatever falls into it. This is similar to how Tokipona handles very overloaded words. Hmm. Vocabulary in all is really small. One of the reasons is that this language was created only to explore idea and submit it for Conlang Circus. And partly it is that it takes from a language philosophy similar to Tokipana. It consists only of 18 words, uh, which six of them are pronouns. Uh, pronouns have monadic meaning, uh, which can be used to express possessive relations like me'ali my language. They also have niladic and dyadic meanings. To express more complex ideas, you combine words. For example, B is not a word that it's inside the basic word list, so you express it as male hole ini, which means friendly flying insect. Combination of words is also used to amplify the strength of idea that you want to express. For example, lake is he oli, which means uh, lots of water. Sigi is he he oli, and ocean is he 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 oli. <laughs> All is written in uh, form of in order binary tree traversal, which is the same as math expressions <laughs> R, which oh, means that all actually. has the same ambiguity problem that maths has. <laughs> it's solved in the writing system of all, but romanization does have that problem, and this fact is celebrated by users of all language. To write sentence in all writing system, you first have Funny to because, convert um, your sentence. <laughs> uh, recall correctly, it's been a while since I looked into this, but most programming languages have operator precedence, meaning if you write A plus B times C, B times C get, gets evaluated first. But I think okay. APL doesn't. It just uh, does them in order, uh, like you, how you write them out. Okay, so that explains that segment a second ago, I see. I see how it is. 
it's to explicit binary tree. Then you start from the root node and for dyadic nodes you make them two times bigger than children and place nodes in columns below that node where left child goes to the left column and right child goes to the right column. Then for a monadic child, you write monadic character and below it more monadic, dyadic or niladic characters. Niladic character is the last one that is written in given column. It has no nodes below. The translation of famous B-movie quote is male hole ini ordu, holi nodu hode ale holi. Ne orde ini ordu, hol nodu hole hemai. Hole male hole ini nodu, ame ali. Wow. All that I have said uh, can mm. be found also in it article uh, in below. Like Thanks for watching. <laughs> wow. There you go. That was very concise. I was not expecting it to come out so smoothly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wait, the next one might just be rock related. <laughs> oh, rock fighting language. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's find out. Has anybody like submitted a language team. related to like rock music? Because I feel like that would be there. There have been fun yeah. spin on the concept. Oh my god! There have been. There have at least they've used like genres of music, and rock was one of the genres. <laughs> All right, let's see what this right. is. History and overview. Okay. <laughs> I'm rocking up to this competition a little unprepared, so my presentation might be rough around the edges. But for the language itself, that's on purpose, since that's pretty typical of naturally occurring silicates. Uh, now imagine uh, a world. <clears throat> People have owned that rocks for most of history. A sport develops around it, in which stoners let their stones dig it out. People gamble on it, and the whole thing gets a kind of sleazy reputation. This sport is called rock fighting. The joke, naturally, is that rock rhymes with penis. Due to concerns about the cruel treatment <laughs> okay. of rocks, and because gambling falls out of fashion, <laughs> rock fighting becomes out loud. But the demand does not disappear, oh no. Oh, I see. And Rocks today remains a popular <laughs> spectator sport, and people pay handsomely to attend these events. So, the gopher method of communication develops between owners, so that they know where and when to rock up for some gravelly silicate on silicate action. This language, known as the rock fighting language, is what the rest of this video will be about. As a way to keep rock fighting exclusive, owners want to make it difficult for outsiders to use the language. And what better stoners. way to require the speaker to stone in order to speak? <laughs> That's why rock fighting doesn't have a phonology, instead, it has a stonology. Stoneme okay. is defined by two things, <laughs> material of articulation and manner of articulation. Okay, okay. There are nine yeah, but... materials of articulation. These are Jasper, Eviolite, Citrine, Peridot, Jade, okay. Jarquas, Lapis like Lazuli, Amethyst, and Rhodonite. The main distinction is made in color, so materials of similar use can be substituted from one another. But these nine materials are the canonical ones with which to speak rock fighting. There is also one more non-chromatic material, which traditionally is obsidian. The language has four manners of articulation. The silica manual stop, the silica manual trail, the silica manual flap, and the silica manual primitive. <laughs> to keep it simple, we'll call them the squeeze, the rub, the bat, and the present. present. One important note, while you could theoretically communicate using silicates, this is usually avoided, because contrary to popular belief, silicates are not actually rocks. It used to be tradition wow. for a stoner to only carry a maximum of six stones at a time, which is not enough to form every stoning. Luckily, diff stones combine into the color that's equally similar to <laughs> both. To form a diff stone, you place two stones mm -hmm. on top of one another. For instance, placing a piece of jade on a piece of lapis lazuli is interpreted as turquoise. If there isn't a middle color, the top stone acts as the tiebreaker. If you stack lapis lazuli and jasper, it's unclear whether the result should be amethyst or rhodonite. So if jasper is at the top, the material becomes rhodonite, and if lapis lazuli is at the top, it becomes amethyst. To form obsidian, Actually, colors of nearly uh... opposite hues can be used. For example, a jade jasper if stone, or a jade rhodonite if stone. Why is it using a French AI voice? Stones. Only the bat and rub. Yeah, but I, I was wondering. I was like, something is uncanny about the AI voice speaking right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's friend, didn't you hear it say turquoise? Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and peridot. Yeah, peridot. Interesting. Manners of articulation are used, as squeezing or presenting a large stack of stones is quoted as being rocky by one native speaker. <laughs> okay. Quarter of stones and onward are considered dialectal. Hmm. Besides, putting this stone aside your trace stones causes an issue. It's unclear exactly which two stones would combine to form one of a different color. So instead, some variance in material of articulation is allowed. For example, the canonical way to stun answer the question particle is to stack turquoise, peridot, and amethyst, and rub them. <laughs> However, you could also use a stack of lapis lazuli, citrine, and another lapis lazuli for this, since each material of articulation is only one place removed from the canonical material. The existence of polyp stones allows stoners to use idiolects based on their identity, emotions, and which stones they like the most. What is going on with the AI fighting, voice? You must understand polyp it's like, I feel like it's getting more and more sus as time goes on. 
Like, <laughs> like it's like it feels like it's simultaneously like switching languages. Like I'm. It might be honestly. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past like the this cursed conlang hmm. circus submissions. But it does wild. Like it, of stones and how it keeps switching between saying like Lazula, Lazuli, Lazul. Yeah. Like. <laughs> okay. I affect the meaning of words, or rather, how they don't. Stone in Spinoza become lengthened. This is pretty straightforward. You just do the thing for a longer amount of time. There is actually one more stone in that is entirely different from the rest, and it has some lore to go along with it. Back in the day, some st owners would toss their stones into the rock fighting <laughs> ring, which often caused them to crack or chip. If geological records are accurate, these people were usually rich and wanted to show off that they could afford to treat their stones poorly. Records. People weren't impressed, however, and the practice quickly became taboo. You could gently toss out a stone in your hand or mimic the movement with an empty hand to refer to the action indirectly. This euphemism, which far predates the rock-fighting language, quickly became synonymous with negativity. It became incorporated into the language as the main way of marking negation. There's a joke here that most people probably won't understand, but the moral of the story is this. People should have rights. Ah, uh, damn it, hold on. Like this. And there. All right, that's better. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, human rights are good, and trying to take them away. They added the king and the junior. I get it. Yeah. Before yeah. anyone is trying to prove me wrong, let's look at the grammar. Let's start with a general overview. Word order can be changed for emphasis, but is usually subject Did object that verb. Just say the general overview. Can be blocked, since the subject complement is formed <laughs> by juxtaposition. So. For example, that well, man like, is my brother tap, becomes that like man. general. Oh, oh, it was supposed to be general. Yeah, okay. Yeah, general, but general. <laughs> this uh -huh. is, it's it such a sounded more like AI. genital. <laughs> where, do, where do people even find these, like, text-to-speech voices? It's crazy. <laughs> All right. Man, my brother. Most parts of speech can be regularly derived from a lemma or even an entire phrase. Exceptions include pronouns, prepositions, and determiners. There are no articles or any grammatical distinction between definite and indefinite. A language is mostly head final, but adverbs go after the head rather than before. And lastly, a language uses active state of morphosyntactic alignment. Nouns end with a patting obsidian suffix. Exceptions mainly include words that only make sense as nouns, such as pronouns and abstract concepts. Nouns also take the following case marking suffixes. The active case is formed by presenting citrine, the stative case is formed by presenting amethyst, the reflexive case is formed by presenting citrine and then amethyst, the genitive case is formed by lengthening the preceding stoneme and then squeezing obsidian. <laughs> the noun is made plural by lengthening the final stoneme uh. of the root just before you add your obsidian. Most nouns are an exception and always use the singular form. If the final stoneme of the root is already long, it becomes overlong. Pronouns have an extra case, the reciprocal. It's formed in the same way as the reflexive, but all reciprocal forms squeeze the preceding stone, while all reflexive forms rub it. I'll move through these tables quickly since the pronouns aren't very cursed, but you can pause oh, if you want to study them. Adjectives end with a squeezing obsidian suffix. For the comparative, you lengthen the squeezing of your obsidian. For the superlative, you squeeze obsidian and then pat it. Verbs end with a presenting obsidian suffix. Huh. Exceptions include the copula and copula-like verbs. Rock fighting has past, present, and future tense, and imperfective and perfective aspect. Now, this table I'm showing you here is kind of cursed, because this analysis of rock fighting's tense and aspect system is now dumb as a brick, Irish. but it's the intended one. Just look at how regular everything is. The past is formed what? by patting turquoise and rubbing peridot. The future... The, the text-to-speech voice, it's still it's, saying... it, it switched to sounding kind of Irish-like. How does it, it sound still saying... Irish? Or quasi in Perido. Imperfect, imperfect. No, I, I, I don't understand, but... Like... It, it, sound, it sounded Irish to me as well. Yeah. Weird. Good God. Cure is formed by patting Perido and then rubbing it. And the imperfective is formed by lengthening the last stoneme, which in the case of the present tense, is just the verbalizer. Why is this so <laughs> dumb? Well, let me show you some example phrases. The imperfective past should actually be called the present perfect progressive. It's neither past tense nor imperfective. And the perfective past is actually just the past symbol. The imperfective present is imperfective, but uh, so is the perfective present. Well, actually, the imperfective is just progressive, so <laughs> let's fix that. The imperfective future label makes sense, but we can call it the future symbol. The perfective future label is also good, but let's call it the future perfect. So, a more Whoa. accurate table would look like this. These are the real tenses and aspects. Okay. Things have been shaken up pretty significantly. But, you might say that this isn't actually all that bad, and I do see your point. I'll bring back the conjugations, which I've been strategically hiding from you. So <laughs> now, the conjugation rules don't make any sense anymore. Good luck with that. I'll just be going back to the first table, and as long as I just show you out of mind. After all, we all know that if you can't see something, it doesn't exist. Using particles to mark modality <laughs> so is a recent addition to Obviously. the language, and has replaced a number of old language constructs. 
model particles, leap verb to which they're attached. Irad modalities in rock fighting. Robin a stack of turquoise, peridot and amethyst, marks a question. Robin a stack of jade, lapilazuli, and heliolite, marks a hypothetical event. Robin a stack of lapis lazuli, jasper and peridot, marks a condition. Robin a stack of lapis azuli, citrine and jasper, marks <laughs> a command. Robin a stack of rhodonite, yeah. heliolite, and jade, marks Those an event that is desirable or should follow from a previous statement. Robin a stack of jasper, jade, and lapis legal, marks an event that is undesirable <laughs> or should not follow logically from a previous statement. <laughs> this is the part. It's it's also the <laughs> lapis lazula, lapis lazuli, lapis lazul, <laughs> lapis lazul. <laughs> All within like 10 seconds. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm so confused. Anyway. As well, but that's the entire video. Most oh. importantly, though, it's the part where I blatantly rip off an existing writing system to make it worse in every way. I'm talking about everyone's favorite circuit-based writing system. Okay, let's see. Oh no. Oh um, without further ado, <laughs> um, I present to you the Rome writing system. Flesh on silica communication by itself worked for a while, but its owners eventually realized that they needed a way to write things down as well. They wanted the writing system to be summarily exclusive <laughs> to its owners, so they took the obvious solution of encoding messages <laughs> by carving them into silicates. And rather than inventing Why is writing stone systems specifically for like rock that? fighting, they modified an existing one oh, that suited oh, their stone needs. Owners. Rowan was usually carved into throwaway carrier stones, rather than into one's prized collection of fighting stones, but people don't like mutilating silicates at all nowadays. Luckily, it can also be carved into other materials, without affecting the meaning of the message. The home writing system has four achmi, which lines up very well with rock fighting's need to encode for four different manners of articulation. But each <laughs> achu only has five members, so Rowan expands his number to nine for its nine format oh, materials of articulation. After oh all, no! Writing means you have the superior writing <laughs> system. The fourth letter, or, is the inspiration for the obsidian letters, which are special for some reason. Oh. Each manner has a different amount of lines in the diamond. Mm. One for patting, two for presenting, three for rubbing, and four for squeezing. You might be wondering why the line down for obsidian is out of order, but that's something I won't explain later. Additionally, <laughs> the letter Ilian is used for negation. <laughs> there is also the letter Ava, which is used to connect <laughs> stones that are in a stack, so that a stack can't be confused for consisting God. of three distinct stonings. This does mean that all the pop of stone weirdness carries over into Rowan, and now you don't even have colors to help you make sense of it anymore. As for the lexicon, <laughs> the stone names chosen for words are not entirely arbitrary. For example, the word for B is rubbing citrine and obsidian because it's a fuzzy yellow and black creature, and then presenting turquoise because it can fly. But these are more like <laughs> hints that can help you remember a word you already kind of know, and a real learning aid, and most combinations are downright misleading at first glance. I'm not going to bore you by having you sit through a dictionary recital, so I'll link the word list in the description. But there's one particular entry that's important for the upcoming translation. Since rock fighting has no such phrase as, of course, I have to choose a different phrase. I've elected to use the idiom, stone is solid, which means that something is obvious or reliable. Oh. <laughs> there are a few things I would have further expounded on if the video wasn't already so long. No regular adverbs exist in the language right now, but they're derived with a rubbing obsidian suffix. I haven't created Roman numerals or words for numbers yet. But big numbers are easier to write than small ones in reference to how long geological timescales are compared <laughs> to our experience. I would have liked to dive hmm. deeper into the lore, around the silicate rights movement, the similarities between cats and rocks, the logistics of using character stones to send messages, <laughs> the way rocks can have <laughs> elemental advantages in battle, and much more. Instanition relates to how your choice of stones reflects on the context of the conversation. All the stones are key for this, but in alternative stomach. vocabulary can also be used. Instanation can get very complex and often turns into a psychological battle for dominance. And lastly, I would have liked to produce a translation that follows the custom of only carrying six stones at a time, which, although no longer relevant, would have given the translation a more authentically first quality. <laughs> so, here's one more thing I am adding. What's the point of this if you're not going to hear me make a bunch of weird noises, right? Luckily, there are situations where you can only communicate uh. with sound. So after the inventing of the radio and the telephone, stoners had to figure out how to actually speak their language. Their answer was simple enough. They substituted the chromatic silica manual stop with the pulmonic stop, okay. the chromatic silica manual trill with the pulmonic fricative, the chromatic silica manual flap with the pulmonic vibrant, and the chromatic silica manual fricative with the pulmonic approximant. Oh. Two items of note are the amethyst and the mm. silica manual flap, which <laughs> don't have a corresponding pulmonic vibrant that a human can pronounce, <laughs> so they get extra short pulmonic fricatives <laughs> instead. The non-chromatic stonemes are next. Presenting your obsidian will make the ah sound, because that's the sound you make when you're presented with something nice. Patting your obsidian will make the <laughs> e sound, because that's the sound of a yelp and an unexpected touch. Rubbing your obsidian will make a ooh sound, because that's <laughs> oh, the sound God. you make when you get a relaxing <laughs> massage. That only leaves squeezing your obsidian. For any self-respecting four-vowel system, there is only one real candidate for inclusion here. So, of course, here's the vowel you've all been waiting for. 
No. Pay attention. You know that we're fighting against no. the self-respecting language. No. So of course, you've got to squeeze your throat the same way you squeeze oh. your obsidian. How easy? dare you? <laughs> Who'd want to make pronouncing their language <laughs> easy? In keeping with tradition, the negation marker gets the dental click because that's the sound of the disapproving t -t 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 you make when some <laughs> stupid rich kid smashes their stone on the ground for the fifth time. And lastly, we have the glottal stop. Rock fighting's full of stones are piled up in one spot, but following Roam, here they're kept apart for clarity. <laughs> there are a few issues with the system. For starters, the total lack of stomach tactics makes it really difficult to pronounce most words, especially with obsidian occurring only at <laughs> the ends of words to indicate their part of speech. This turns the onset of nearly every syllable into a mountain of a consonant cluster, with no rhyme or reason <laughs> as to which parts are voiced and which aren't. A horrible set of day names chosen oh, here only make the problem worse. Uh, Voices of proximants are hard to distinguish. <laughs> this is insane. I... Mm -hmm. I, I I like how the rock was the the basis for it, and then the actual phonology mm -hmm. is is added upon it just so they could listen to each other on the phone. Yeah. Oh my god! Do you like this Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't believe they put a strut there. Just absolutely <laughs> shameful. And voiceless vibrants like are just weird. Click. And then there uh -huh. are pairs that sound <laughs> extremely alike, like the voiceless uvular fricative and voiceless uvular trill, or the voiceless alveolar flap and the voiceless retroflex flap. <laughs> this means that your articulation has to be pretty precise not to be misunderstood. Compounding on that problem are <laughs> idiolects. This is pretty much just a spoken version of Roam, including obsidian being special for some reason, so all the weirdness that comes from bullet stones just carries over. With the stones themselves, it's kind of manageable, but for speech, it's horrible. Making it worse again is the glottal stop, since it's easy to make accidentally, and its presence or absence dictates which pay names are combinations of multiple sounds, including combinations like z, which turns into ooh. Compared to all of that, the inclusion of a random click for a specific morpheme is honestly kind of adorable. <laughs> to be honest, it's probably the least problematic sound here, aside from a, e, u, and t. Now it's finally time for the challenge. As I mentioned before, I won't be restricting myself to just six stones here. So I won't be using any fifth stones or variations in choice of trace stones for this translation. First in English. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee of course flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. And here is the complete stonunciation in rock go. fighting. <laughs> oh, that's good. And next, within <laughs> Roam, I'll also show the linguistic gloss. And a fairly literal translation back into English to help show the structure of the language. All known rules of flight are agreed, the bee should not fly. Its wings are too small to be able to fly its fat little body. Yet the bee flies, stone is solid. Because what humans think an impossibility, bees don't care. <laughs> and at last, solid. it's time for the game. <laughs> oh god. How did they get the AI to pronounce this? Yeah, really. <laughs> And that's it for the rock fighting language. I could maybe have made it more cursed, but I had to kind of rush the creation process. So I decided I'd be better off keeping it a little more focused. That's and I wanted to put some effort into sticking close to the theme. Anyway, I hope I won't be stoned for my alpha entry. I doubt I've rocked anyone's socks up, so I see Rocky Road ahead with steep competition. But perhaps by tossing that pebble into the pond mining pond, the ripples will reach someone and make their day just a little bit more solid. And really, uh -huh. that's the main objective mm. here. <laughs> uh, that was... Main objective. That was, that was a wild... <laughs> video. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Next we have a Y better than A. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. And no idea where that's gonna take us. Let's find out. Oh god. Alright, hello. Uh, I, oh uh, probably... no. Hmm. Hi. So, I originally made this presentation for uh, a script that wanders around like a lot. And as you can see, it's kind of uh, difficult to make changes. Okay. So, what I've decided <laughs> is, I'm just going to present this, and skip through a bunch of stuff that I feel like isn't important, and it's gonna, it's gonna look like I'm skipping through all the jokes, but, um, I don't think the jokes are too important. All that's okay. important is that I made this in a single slide. Okay, so, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it takes a while to load. Oh god. <laughs> Loading. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm creating a language, or I have created a language, for the Cursed Conling Circus 2023, and it has a couple rules. First, you have to translate the uh, opening monologue of the B-movie. Second, uh, there are bonus points awarded for any languages that involve rocks. And third, uh -huh. there are also bonus points awarded for any languages that are based on existing natural languages. Involve rocks. And Can I uh, did not uh, make a language that involves rocks. Okay. Uh, if I did, though, and also based it off a natural language, I would uh, call it English rocks. But <laughs> I'm not calling it that. Instead, I'm calling it a hmm. Y. Because the only sound in it is a. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. And it is a. Uh, Trust me, this is this is good. This is better than ah, uh, which uh, ba -ba 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 is what this was based on, but it is not the same. Oh. <laughs> uh, the language ah uh, was uh, last year's one of last year's submissions. Only one sound, ah, uh, only one word, ah, uh, only one letter, ah, uh, <laughs> so on and so forth. Translated to the required text for last year. Um, we have one of those this year, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, anyways, did we did. Uh, I'm going to you know do something a little different because I feel like a. Uh, this the creator of Aw uh, decided to run away from effort. I, however, will not. As you can see, <laughs> this is um this is a graph of some sorts. <laughs> okay. This represents Alright. Um how long you could say uh for. Like if you say oh, uh no. for nine seconds, it might mean tree. Well if you say no. uh for three seconds it might mean log. And that's this the, is gonna be the, the same the thing as the, the L one. Language. However, I decided Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Because that's that is pretty much it. The, the silence. I did. Yeah. Instead of just measuring it in the number of seconds you say a uh, for, I'm going to measure the prime factors of the seconds it takes for you to say a uh, for. Of and course. This is so um, <laughs> including plurals okay. and verb negation. Uh, has its own like a uh, integrated feature. I am not going to explain that in this presentation. That's what the description docs are for. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> are the goals of my language. First, to be incredibly inaccessible, <laughs> and second, to kill anyone who speaks it. And third, uh, which I did not write down here, is uh, to be just Noble as difficult goal. to understand as legalese, Noble if not goal. more so. All right. So, the grammar. Uh, first of all, you have to put before every single word, you have to declare its type of speech. So instead of running cat, you say verb running noun cat in uh, this language. And these are the okay. part of speech. First, interjection. Second, huh. recursive noun. Third, preposition. Fourth, adverb. That was not misspelled. Fifth, verb. Sixth, time, tense. Uh, but separate from verbs verb. in this language. Uh, there's also... Nouns are split into both seven and eight. Uh, seven uh, encompasses place, places, things, ideas, and dialogue, while eight encompasses just people. Uh, in order to say these things, declare uh, what the next word will be, uh, you have to, again, using only uh, you, um, you say it for this long for each of them. <laughs> oh god. This is only the beginning god. of a uh, very, very long, very long language. Uh, 2 to the 8th is 256, 300 is a minute. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is the sentence structure, uh, SVO. Uh, there is no intransitive verbs, you must have an object. So... Okay. Uh, he sleeps becomes he sleeps himself. Instead, it's <laughs> That's like reflexive. Halloween, yeah. There's no intransitives. There's also no adjectives. I replace mm -hmm. those with the verbs. Uh, if you want to ask a question, just rephrase your sentence into VOS order. Uh, time and tense <laughs> are after the verb. Uh, and recursive nouns, yeah, and all uh, those are a little complicated, so I'll just like uh, show an example. Uh, this is like a, a, an example English sentence. Yellow paint mm -hmm. paints the wall. Uh, <laughs> if you were to turn that roughly into a... Uh, uh, why it looks something like paint that is yellowed by itself paints the wall, or if you wanna you wanna be pedantic. Oh no! It kind of goes off the screen. So, oh well, yeah. Also prepositions have the same thing as conjunctions. So Matt, there's this is how my language kills people. That would probably be taken out of context. Anyways, you're not allowed to pause in the middle of your sentence. You cannot like pause oh, buzzing again. You can only pause at the uh, end of a sentence. Yeah. Uh, to do <laughs> no pausing. It's just, you just, no pausing. So just uh, say, uh, uh, until you die. <laughs> I can't help but notice that you paused on the frame that says no pausing. Ha! Take that! Uh, <laughs> you, can't, you can't tell me what to do! <laughs> <laughs> Freaking the, the scene from Drake and Josh where he, like, gets a package and he tells the delivery driver, like, oh, have a nice day. And guys is like, don't tell me what to do, and slams the door shut. Beautiful. Okay. Alright. Let's go. D to uh, declare a new word, instead, what you do is you change the tone, or the pitch, of your uh. And uh, that uh, means that you have to say the entire sentence in one breath. 
so. for writing, there is only one character, hmm. of course, the hyphen or the minus sign. <laughs> uh, the way uh, you indicate different <laughs> words in the writing system is by alternating hmm. between whether or not the minus sign or hyphen is bolded. Oh, so God. this would be oh, uh, God. three to the first, then three to the first times two to the first, then two to the first. <laughs> and uh, that's that's all that I'm going to put in this slide. So time for the translation. The, the dictionary is in the description. Time. This is why I have to translate. According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small this to get its fat like little body the off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Opening. Now, yeah. I, I provided two <laughs> English versions of this translation. The first of which is... Uh, Oops, my, my brain fart. So, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit this part out and, and, and video edit myself. Oh, oh, my life oh. is over. You know what? I'm not even. So gonna the first of which uh, is kind of like a, a rough Enjoy translation. It, it carries over the structure, but not everything yeah. about it. I'm going to read it aloud to you. The rough mm -hmm. translation. Loves that are of air that are known by us say bees should not be bees that fly bees. Wings that are part of bees that are small wings should not cause a flight of bees. Bees fly bees because bees ignore humans that think bees that can fly bees are impossible bees. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> that I is. Agree. <laughs> um, the half translation, but the more it's grammatically fatal. accurate translation it's is fatal. absolutely nightmarish. I'll just let you enjoy this. Oh, I am not going to attempt to pronounce it. If, if there's if there's, if there's two spaces, that's because it's you a period, by and the third I just couldn't bother to change the color of it to white. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna give you some time to read that if you want to. Yeah, no, I got it. That's about I, everything. I uh, I'm going to, after this, put the actual audio of the real translation, but because it is so incredibly long, it will be sped up 60 times, so every second represents and one And another 1.5 times one after hour. that. <laughs> yeah. Well, enjoy. Uh... Sixty times yeah. each second we're listening to is a full minute. <laughs> a full ninety seconds because we're at one point five speed right now. Uh, thanks for saving us a little time, big legs, big teeth. That that was beautiful. My my phone just ran out of freaking memory. <laughs> oh my god, everything is collapsed. Does that mean the recording got cut off? Uh, well, I mean the that, recording got cut off. The recording is fine. Um, it's just dead on my, my phone's end, so my face reaction just got cut off. All right, we're back on recording from the iPad this time. <laughs> oh man, this is insane. The way technology is betraying me in this in this journey. Let's move on to the next one, mm. which is that by the real Yandere, which I'm terrified. Yeah, which I've left a comment that you misspelled the. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, a very, very tragic misspelling there. <laughs> we'll find out. I like how we have the Kim Jong Un sister being late for her first day as dictator as the first oh imagery God. on the screen here. 
connects you to the language of which literally translates okay. to fish <laughs> what good to know about the language it's 100 percent phonetic al vowels always okay. in mandarin rising tone consonants always in mandarin falling tone what? no particular word order <laughs> Wait, what? can be used in <laughs> any order depending in the speaker's what? personal taste <laughs> and every word comes from the name of various stones the vowels of the language are oh god pretty easy right okay we're oh, gonna get now, god. let's move on oh, to the no. consonants and these are ah, easy as pie <laughs> easy as pie <laughs> and now let's take a look at the translation oh wow okay. the original according to all known laws of aviation there is no way a bee should be able to fly its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground the bee of course flies anyway because bees don't care what humans think is impossible the literal translate all to laws known of aviation according their way no a bee to fly able should be okay. too small are its wings to get off the ground fat its little body the bee of course anyway flies bee because humans what think care don't impossible is is that just like a random the constructed language like <laughs> <laughs> oh god, god. This is just phonemic silence again. Yeah, it's another phonemic silence. <laughs> but it has like a full spelling. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, I, I mean, see it's... how it is. <laughs> don't, don't phonemic silence languages usually have something to like divide up the silences? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh god. <laughs> and that's it. That's, that's the whole thing. Wow. Wow. Hohoba. Wow! Bear grass! <gasps> desert spoon! These are all plants that you can find in the desert regions of Arizona! It's almost like... It's almost like I have another second channel. You may call it a third channel, but I like to call it another second channel just to mess with people. It's called AZ Plant Reviews, where I, with my several years of Arizona landscaping and plant care experience, go and just casually talk about the various plants of the Sonoran Desert and other parts of Arizona and their uses in landscaping around the Phoenix area. I know that has like absolutely nothing to do with conlanging or linguistics or world building. I mean, it, yeah, you, you can make an argument for world building, but you're, you're really not in the target demographic for it at all. Like, I'm just gonna say it straight out. You, you, you're not the target demographic, but if you like hearing me talk and maybe if you're like trying to do some world building in a desert or something and you have no idea what desert ecology is like, maybe it could be helpful from that kind of angle or something. I don't know, but hey, we are hours and hours and hours into this video so i figure if you're still around at this point you're probably more likely than the average agma schwa viewer to you know hit that subscribe button so i don't know why, why don't you give it a try why, why don't you give it a try and uh, I'll, I'll put a i'll put a video up on az plant reviews and then leave a comment saying something along the lines of ayo why circus man with the plants and then I'll, I'll give it a heart react or something. So, yeah, I, I love plants. Plants are my other passion. So, uh, subscribe to that if you like me. If not, I'll automatically assume that you hate me and wish I was dead. Double negative. The next one apparently refers to you as Oh, God. Okay. Oh boy, I saw the word computation in there again. Let's. Oh. Have you ever been taught? Oh man. Here we go. <laughs> How to diagram a sentence? Perhaps you have. And if so, maybe you'll remember seeing something like this. Oh no. I will say. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense that all the programming related ones are later on because programmers like to procrastinate. <laughs> okay. So, That's true though. Makes sense that all of these are, are, are late. This one looks like it's got production value in it too. Okay. <laughs> maybe you've seen it, maybe not. Now it's debatable exactly which way is the correct way to diagram a sentence. In English, we front load the subject and verb. So it makes sense that we would go subject, verb, object, as we go down the tree. However, this isn't the only way of looking at it. If we take a little inspiration from programming languages, we might have the idea to front load the verb. Instead of modifiers going next to what they modify on the tree, we put them inside the nodes, higher up than the oh. words they modify. 
oh, will follow no. verbs and nouns come beneath. With this system, oh. sentence diagrams look more like this. Oh no. God. Now this example isn't the best of <laughs> how complex it is. Let's replace it with something easier. There we go. Interpreting this with verbs and modifiers <laughs> before the nouns, this would read, I hate you because you suck. Looking at trees like this, oh, you might notice that in general, we read them sort of left to right without too much regard to how high or low in the tree the word is. There is another way of reading this, starting with the root note, then go down the tree in the depth first manner. In this ordering, it would lead to hate I you because suck you. Uh -huh. In some ways, this ordering <laughs> is more natural, but it struggles to help you identify which nodes belong to which other nodes. Though this is technically true of any language, all human languages are limited by imprecise descriptions of simple syntax trees. Holy there crap. is, however, one fundamental limit to syntax trees. They're not complete. What do I mean by that? I mean, they're Turing complete. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god. They don't have the power to describe a complete computation in the way that a Turing uh. machine can. What do I mean by this? I mean that syntax trees are limited to being trees. In a syntax tree, each node can only have one parent, and they're always finite, and they just don't feel dramatic. Luckily, we have these things called <laughs> Turing machines. In fact, you're using one to watch this video right now. Turing machines are one system mm -hmm. we can use to turn a finite amount of information into an infinite amount of potential computational complexity. Turing machines can do Recursion. Oh boy. Turing, who you might have heard of, cracked the Enigma code, was openly gay, and got arrested by the government that he served for being openly gay. Just woke up in a steamy mood, yeah? Because mm -hmm. I live in a shop. Shop. Invented the Turing machine. <laughs> Very creative name. Oh, and at about no, the same no, time, no, a guy no. called Church invented Lambda Calculus. Lambda Calculus was a way of doing computation yeah. with nothing but functions. Like, that's it. All you have is functions being called oh, with other functions no. as inputs. It looks something like yeah, this in practice. And pause. This is yeah. a function that takes three inputs. <laughs> When, when we say lambda calculus use nothing but functions, that's true. Even numbers are functions. The number zero is a fu is a function that just takes a, a that takes a function and a value and just does nothing, just returns the value. The number one is a function that takes a function and calls it once. The number two is a function that calls a function and, and calls it twice, and so on. That's called church numerals. So when we say in lambda calculus, we only have functions. We mean it like there's oh, there's no God. numbers also just function everything oh, is function God. okay <laughs> that sounds completely reasonable and help us all it's more theoretical than practical no one actually programs with church numerals i'd hope i hope not <laughs> it calls the first input using the second input then calls the result using the third we write btf as a shorthand but it can also be written as either of these ways which mm -hmm. i prefer Oh, now, Lambda Calculus, you might notice, is a language, and because it's a language, its expressiveness is limited to that of any ordinary language that has a syntax tree. However, if we actually try to do computation using the Lambda function, it actually can create a new type of tree for us. Oh, Since this God. tree doesn't need to follow the rules of an ordinary tree, we can actually call it a computational graph. <laughs> Let's take a look at what the if function does for us, when we'll apply it to three inputs, A, B, and C. Huh. Well, that's a bit anticlimactic. We could phrase this as B, A's, C if you take that as being a phrase, but that's basic. Where does the interesting stuff come into play? Well, let's take a look at a more interesting lambda expression. And for the sake uh. of simplicity, we'll apply it to X, Y, and Z. Whoa, what just, what just happened there? Not oh, only do no. Y and Z share the same leap, <laughs> but here we're making that type of X responsible for handling something that depends on X, which is itself. What can this possibly mean linguistically? I'm not sure, but I'm damn sure I want it anyway. Oh no. Before we move on, I'm gonna show you two more lambda expressions so we can get a feel for how wacky these can get. Uh -huh. This one is infinitely big. The Fs just keep going on. Oh, not that and one, yeah. Down, but... <laughs> that one the funny thing about this is, if you try running it on your computer, one. There... Oh god. What the This heck? one is actually longer than necessary. You can just write this. Um, hold on. Uh, where's my lambda on my keyboard? I think I have it on the. Let... Let's bring up my keyboard layout. I have it on the. Letter two because I need some time on So it's this one just uh uh -huh. it's just this. This is this wish it just infinitely produces itself. That oh god. Uh, yeah, <laughs> lambda x x x lambda x x x because uh the well, basically what this means is you take the second lambda x, 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 and substitute that for each x, which produces just two of the same. So this just recurses infinitely. Nightmare, uh. nightmare, 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 nightmare. Oh god. So this is essentially shorter than this one. You only need what's inside the parentheses there. You don't need the lambda f, fx outside. Alright. <laughs>
<laughs> there are ways to get this computation to stop and give you a result if you carefully design Fs and use lazy evaluation. This function that creates infinite stacks when given a function as input is called the Y Combinator, and it's the basis of most recursion in Lambda Calculus. Okay, this next one is a little weird now. This one just keeps calling itself with itself as the input and never stops recursing. Oh, is that but it? But unlike the Y Combinator, this one doesn't really care about its other inputs. It's yeah. obsessed with becoming itself. If you've ever made an infinite loop while programming yeah, before, you know what it's like. <laughs> now, Lambda Calculus is cool and all, <laughs> but it's not entirely fit to become a language just yet. It has an issue where you can create as many variables as you want, but traditionally, each variable is mm -hmm. one letter, and my keyboard only has so many letters. Also, we want it to be possible for people <laughs> to speak the language, and having an infinite number of phonemes <laughs> does not sound like a good time. So, to fix those problems, <laughs> mm -hmm. learn the language yeah, using Ski Calculus instead. What is Ski Calculus? Well, it's a close relative of Lambda Calculus. It was discovered that all Lambda oh, God. is equivalent. Oh god, that you ruined that thing. Oh in no. Ski. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah. Function. It gives you back whatever you did it. Kinda lame. This one is more mm -hmm. like a memory function. When you give it its first input, X, it remembers that until you give it another input, Y. Then it gives you mm -hmm. X back. What Y is doesn't really matter since it gets ignored. This one is a doozy. It's called the substitution function, but it's really just used to duplicate and spread around its third argument, mm -hmm. X. Without this one, recursion wouldn't be possible. Oh, God. There are a couple of transmission rules that I'm not going to get into that let you convert this any random expression into ski expression stuff. and vice versa. But simply put, here's a Y combinator written in ski. <laughs> and that funny infinitely busy lambda expression I showed you earlier, the ski equivalent of it is... Uh... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How is this a human language? Literally, all we have is a bunch of functions. <laughs> this is what you're probably wondering. But here's where things get interesting. This language has a bunch of words in it, but none of them are spoken. All the nouns are implicit. So what the speakers do is oh, use ski no. calculus to create a syntax tree, or rather a computational graph, for those implicit content words to reside in. Oh, you can think no. of it like this. Imagine your dictionary is five words long. Your sentence has to be a function which takes five inputs and creates a computational graph which acts like a semantic meaning graph, demonstrating meaning in a similar way to the sentence diagrams we saw at the beginning of the video. In Lambda Calculus, we want a function to look like this. While the Lambda expression would be the same if written like this, we're just using words because it's easier to keep track of, but the words themselves aren't in the function. This corresponds to the tree when we apply the dictionary to our function. Mm -hmm. but remember, we're not speaking Lambda, we're speaking <laughs> Ski, so we have to rewrite this into Ski Calculus. Doing this, we get... That's, um, annoyingly large and complicated, but we'll just have to deal with that for now. <laughs> you also might be wondering how names work. Let's just say the dictionary includes the entire alphabet, so you have to write a ski function which takes in at least 26 inputs and spells out your name using function application. Have fun! <laughs> like the programming languages which inspired it, ski uses a prefix based grammar. Single argument prefix functions, aka parent nodes, modify their child phrases in some way, then take on their role in the greater phrase. These prefix nodes include four case markers. These are for the direct object, indirect object, result, and manner of a verb, as well as a logical inversion marker. There's also two non-single argument grammatical words. One is the copula, which has some kind of complicated behavior. The other is the pick function, which takes a relative clause and a number, n, and it essentially rips the nth input to that verb to be the word it describes. <laughs> <laughs> These seven functions are part of the basic grammar lexical oh my set. God. I'll get the rest of the lexical set shortly. Now oh we need to talk about no. pronouns. In Ski, other than the first and second person pronouns, I and you, hmm. you can only use a pronoun to refer to something in the same sentence. This is done by having the computation graph the reuse heck? an intermediate node in multiple places. Oh Think of no. this graph here. This means the apple I bought was rotten, <laughs> so I threw it out. Ski calculus allows us to reuse the entire phrase, so even if there were other nouns in the sentence, the word it wouldn't be ambiguous since it doesn't exist. God. So you can duplicate entire oh, phrases no. in a structure. There's nothing stopping you from reusing embedded clauses like this. It's recursive. Since the dictionary God. only has one copy of each vocab word, anytime you use the same word twice, you're drawing the from heck? the same source, so to speak. It's kind of weird to think about. In Ski, there's also a couple formulations which don't really affect the semantic meaning of the sentence exactly, but have a more idiomatic purpose. If you have a double link like this, it's how you talk about plurals. You can use a double link or the pluralizer. There's also the Y Combinator. When applied to one input, it refers to the concept of that thing, like foxes in general, rather than some specific mm -hmm. foxes. Yeah. <laughs> but some formulations with two inputs have other meanings based on repeated application. These grammar rules lead to some weird constructions. I may have forgotten to mention, but every word in Ski is a noun. The only exceptions are the words in the basic grammar lexical set and the words in the extended grammar lexical set. Nouns can be treated like verbs if, in the computational graph, they appear in a node that has children. Just keep that in mind. Has child nodes? Verb. No child nodes? Now. Also, multiple oh children with the same case can be added to a oh clause, and it deals with it via logical disjunction. 
So you can have and and or by doing that and combining it with some nested negations. Remember when I mentioned the lexical sets? It's about time we get back to that. Uh, it's now, buzzing again. Which reads uh, the entire okay. dictionary, then ignores it. Yep. Oh my god. For th this is insane. This is wild. An another another angle that I was not expecting to see in any of these submissions. Uh, all right, let's get back to it. Should be good now. Mm. Hopefully. Most of it is very unwieldy. So what they do instead is break up the dictionary into several lexical sets. Then the input to their ski function, aka sentence, is just the list made up of those sets. The way they specify the lexical sets is as such. The speaker says a ski function which takes the function append filter and each lexical set as arguments. Two, evaluate the function, then prepend the basic grammar lexical set. Three, oh, the new list is the dictionary used as arguments in the second ski phrase, creating the actual sentence. Append filter is somewhat complicated in order to make the first ski phrase simple. It takes the list of lexical sets to append and interprets it as a binary number of which to include and which to not. <laughs> the number usually looks like this. All trailing ones are deleted, so this would become mm. this. The specific sets are two, four, six, seven, and nine. Those sets are appended together in the order specified by the God. list. Oh, Why man. is the append filter so complicated, you may ask? Well, it has to do with extending the dictionary. Most lexical sets in Ski are completely empty. This is because if the native speaker ever wants to coin new words, they have to gather them up and put them in an empty lexical set at once to not change the meaning of the sentences that already exist. This is the oh, only God. way they found to guarantee the ability to add lexical sets and extend their language without making it incomprehensible. The result of using this system is that you have to give two Ski expressions anytime you want to talk. The first is used to pick the lexical sets used in the temporary dictionary, and that dictionary <laughs> is inputted into the second ski expression to actually give you the sentence. There's also this extremely irregular sentence that our researchers haven't quite figured out the reasoning for. Maybe you can deduce why it means what it does. That's all great and good. We have an arbitrarily long dictionary. Every sentence we have is actually two sentences spoken back to back, one to pick lexical sets from the dictionary and another to actually form the sentence. <laughs> so how do we actually say these sentences? Well, that's where the phonology comes in. Each of these sounds is associated with two characters oh, in the ski no. character set. The characters are left parentheses, right parentheses, mm. S, K, and I. Good God. Of them are associated with the end of a ski expression that only has one leftover character. The most common one is the sound of spitting. <laughs> now, looking at this phonology chart, we see a bunch of weird sounds. There's that weird American R sound, an aggressive lateral fricative, and a whole bunch of ejective affricates. According to Foible, only exists in 12 or so languages, and only exists in three. <laughs> this one doesn't sound like anything. It's just sticking your tongue out. And if you look at geo sounds, are usually considered a speech defect rather than phonemes. My now, God. Let's look at the vowels. I'm gonna have my friend double negative say them for you now. Uh, yeah, those are all very similar to each other. Oh, Good luck at hearing the difference in fast speech. In practice, each one corresponds to a single ski symbol. You can kind of tell the difference between the start and end of one because mm -hmm. is the open parentheses and mm -hmm. is the closed parentheses. Wait, never mind. Those are almost exactly the same. Uh, maybe the people <laughs> that speak this just have really good ears. Now, to end this all off, I'm going to translate to you one of the most <laughs> elegant and prophetic phrases the English language has to offer. According to all known laws of aviation, <laughs> there is no way a bee should be able to fly. <laughs> its wings are too small to get <laughs> that little body off the ground. <laughs> oh, the bee, God. of course, flies anyway. <laughs> because bees don't care. What humans think is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes, that is Vocaloid. I don't understand IPA, and Double Negative said there is no way he's reading all of that out loud in real time. If you want the full audio, <laughs> link it in the description. Anyway, here's the gloss for each sentence showing you the structure of the syntax tree in a lisp styled manner. It's a lot simpler to write it out this way, but unfortunately, ski calculus isn't very efficient. Mostly because the S function is very annoying to deal with, and because of the whole implicit dictionary replacing normal vocabulary. And that's the video! Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. It was really fun to put this all together in something that I wasn't really familiar with at the start, but slowly grew to learn as double negative taught me the wacky world of ski calculus. If you liked my style of editing and like my voice for some friggin' reason, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I mostly do holiday videos, but I'm looking to branch out pretty soon, and hopefully this video is a good way to help a new audience. Help me finish holiday, uh, and yeah, please. And thanks, and thank you. Ooh, let's hope, uh, ooh, bye! Uh, <laughs> I can't freaking beat the broken vessel I've been fighting the broken vessel on and off for weeks just try to do every anyway let's <laughs> that was uh insane
Yes. Good job, du double negative. Holy crap. All right. <laughs> On to Goob's submission. That. Z Whatever it's going to end up being. Hi. This video is going to be an overview of my call name. Z e e which is also my submission to Agmashwa's second Chris Conlang Circus. Apparent analogy. Apparently you can see it's there's a Lingo Labio e. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Pretty spot on. That, that's pretty much what you said. Yeah, yeah, pretty spot on. Perfect. Hmm. A dental labial series, a dorsal series, and an ultra labial series. Where ultra labial means articulated with the lips puckered. I'll read out the consonant inventory now. Ta, ba, pa, ba, pa, wa, ka, ga, ba, 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 ma, 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 ra, 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 sa, za, 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 ha, ra. The vowels are e, u, e, and u, and there are four tones and phonemic length. Syllables are CVC. Any consonant can start a syllable, but only nasals, fricatives, and trills are permitted to end a syllable. For the grammar, the number system is balanced ternary. The word order is usually why, BSL, why did, but mostly it's free. Why did they just switch to a worse no, microphone? You're certainly <laughs> very muddy, yeah. That is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Okay. We will survive. Adjectives after nouns, and their noun cases, blah, blah, blah. To express the case of a noun, you have to first find its animacy, opacity, and edibility, and then place those attributes around the noun in a specific order. Here's some big tables that show you how, and also the constructions you use depend on whether the current year is odd or even. Okay. There aren't any pronouns, you just have to conjugate the word which just means thing. <laughs> for adjectives and verbs, there aren't really any conjugation in simple constructions. There's a suffix for negation, and them is used to show excess of an adjective. Time would just be expressed analytically. So for the writing system, I'll briefly explain how it works. To correctly oh. write, you would need a large flat surface, five different colors of paint, and rocks, where the color of paint represents <laughs> the vowel, the stamped hand shapes represent the consonant, and the tone is indicated with rocks. I decided not to do all that, so here's a sentence written on paper, meaning its wings are too small, and it's pronounced we fifi Okay, on to the translation. Is Riz where rare? The bear rare pu me we rare. It's time to hear some fear. Where is Cree? Yeah, we rare the rear mirror. The rear where mirror is we where we we fu. Where mer mer where mer rir vim em er vim ri rir mer beef where mer mer where mer rir vim li vi rir mer rir rir mer mer vi rir where mer is vi where we three rear mir we rear where mir is the weir where rear feel is where mir where a rare beam rear where is a ear rear mir we rear where mir is the where we that took so long thanks so much for watching <laughs> all right oh and here yeah i left the comment here okay i wrote apparently i put a period after et and all okay okay i see how it is all right i've definitely That's i think that. this might be from the cake line server i'm not certain hey ron this is smart. but mm. i feel like i remember there was like a pigeon language in there called like like literally spelled exactly like that so, if it's not the same language, that's a really strange coincidence. Yeah, let's find out. Hey everyone, this is Smiles, and I'm bringing you today the unfathomably beautiful language that is Spreculis. Wait, it should be cursed, right? Not beautiful? Anyways, I'll give you all a quick list of what we're going to talk about today. Part 1. Explain the language. Part 2. Listen to the sample text. Mm. So, how does this Spreculis work? The first obvious feature you might notice is in the name. The word sprechidis consists of sprecher to speak and this, this. So it roughly translates to speak this. 
adding prefixes and suffixes into the mix makes Splecklis an agglutinative language. So we get words like Missourius Knight, a place that is very miserable. <laughs> or in a more <laughs> sense, social media. <laughs> Moving on, nouns. Oh has four cases which are optional and makes use of three number distinctions. The cases are nominative, accusative, genitive, and dative. The nominative is used for the subject and is not known. Oh yeah, the accusative they find comments on it. This is definitely from that server. Oh, nice. The dative is used for the indirect object as well as direct. I might have even had something to do with an early version of this language. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Either way, I don't recognize it at all now, other than the name. <laughs> singular, That's a definite funny. singular, and a plural, marked like this. Mm. Furthermore, nouns and splecklis have no definite indefinite distinction. Pronouns. The pronouns are mu, ni, es, ons, ni ons, es ons. Pronouns always come before the verb and are anti-drop. Verbs. Verbs can be conjugated by person like so, not distinguishing between singular and plural. However, this is optional. There are three tenses in Splecidus, past, present, and future. While the present is unmarked, the past is marked with the prefix g, and the future with the prefix sal. Splecidus expresses the conditional mood by placing the word check in between the mm. pronoun and the verb, and has no aspect. Adjectives. There are adjectives. Phonology. Splecidus uses... <laughs> there, are <adjectives. laughs> there are adjectives. And these are <laughs> sounds. It also has a vowel harmony, where back and That's sound good. may there never be within the same word, <laughs> except for compounds. Although e, e, and e tend to be ignored. Vocabulary. We looked at grammar and phonology. Let's now look at some words. Splecidis first came to be when some people on the K-Client Discord server yep, decided the go. thing it needed was a constructed pidgin language. While in its current state, a lot from the early times, some might call them the Dark Ages, has been lost. Splecidis still stays true to how it gets most of its vocab. By steel. <clears throat> I think the earliest version of this language used the letter V for favelar nasal. Like. <laughs> and of course combinations like, and many more board words from languages like German, English, Swedish, Polish, Czech, Georgian, Mandarin, Mauritian, Tokipona, Welsh, oh, Japanese, and many more. Oh, Conclusion. Beckidus is a constructed language used by people with different nationalities and different native languages on the K-Client Discord server. Due to the language's simple rules for word formation and libertine grammar, it is both easy to learn and easy to use. It thereby classifies as an international auxiliary language. But wait, <laughs> there's more. Splectidus has some culture as well. Bear with me and look at all these memes. Okay. Now, on to the second <laughs> and final part of all this from hmm. the beginning you've all been waiting for. The sample text. You will now hear two translations of the same text. One with case and conjugation affixes, which is considered a bit more formal, and one without and less formal. To show the difference in pronunciation between speakers, you're going to hear each version twice. Once by me and once by Wululu. Dick Velik Minen for uns, Lau uns, our Eros Benade. Nishi, you Jungut Bam, check this good name. As a scanner from Chi, Keskunions. As a Velik, Unke Tubatan, Afio Eroten. Jungut Bam, Moldova, Feshania, Nathan is Auchi. Then Jungut Bam, Naked is over on Chanons, Minen this Chi, this good year. Formal spread it is. Dick Velik Minen the uns, Lau uns, our Eroten night. Nishi, you Jungut Bam, check this good name. As a son of Fons, she goes to Yons, as Osses, Velikun, got Tuba, and you are Then is Auchi. Then Shungut one gives for warm channels, men in this city's good Then do Velik Minan the Yons, Lawans Netania, naked, motherfucking radical, Shungut one, check this good Netani. As can of Fons, she cask Yons. As a Velik, Unke Valan Afio Tenna. Shungut one, Moldova Fashania, Netani Auchi. Then Chukupan naked over on channels, men in this city's good year. Informal speak it is. Then do Velik Minan the Yons, Lawans Netania, naked. With a freaking radical chungut punch this good atani. As gana fons jikos kinions as veli kun kwebatan adiotane. Chungut pan, non of hashania, natani auchi. Then chungut pan negift ho warum channels men and zitis gotie. Before closing off, I would like to give a shout out to Wululu, Vilnark, Frots, and everyone else in the cake line Discord server that worked and is still working on this funding. Special thanks go to Wululu for helping with the grammar and phonology section and for providing spoken samples. Thanks for watching. Cue the outro. The buzzing is back. Tragic. <laughs> yep. It's thematically appropriate that there's so much buzzing uh, whenever bees. <laughs> when, we, when, we hear, when we hear the bee movie <laughs> script happen. Mm. Oh, it's still buzzing. Seriously? Usually yeah. it really goes away after like a pause for a little bit. Yeah, well, sometimes you, you have yeah, sometimes you have to pause for a bit longer. But anyway, I think uh, yeah, this is like the end of the video. A anyway, song. smiles made a song mm. in, in the language, presumably. Pretty 
cool. Pretty cool. Confirmed the Kermesh mm. with the best Oxlang. A tall, a tall order. We shall see. Hello. Oh God. All right. My name is Kermesh. Oh. Today I'm gonna. We don't need that fast. I present to you. Oh, a little faster. A perfect Oxlang. Literally, world language. This language was created in order to appear in the second Conlang Circus, connected by the famous Conlang YouTuber Ang Meshua. The problem that occurs to most people with the most famous Oxlangs, such as Esperanto, Ida, or Interlingua, is that the languages are inherently biased. Many words are borrowed from a few language families, especially those found in Europe. Some of the most important words are always unequal to the vast majority of the population. But with the current methods, it is impossible to be cool with everyone. My new method, relying on mathematical calculations, eliminates all discrimination and bias by compounding words from all languages into one object. Another point God. that some people make about the Oxlangs is that people often lose their identity, losing their native concepts that they are used to. The way that I'm creating the language creates the ideal environment where every subtle meaning can be represented by a word, up to the point that there's no natural language that makes all those distinctions. I must admit that this is not the ideal vision of this conlang. Unfortunately, because of lack of data and resources, it's practically impossible for me to use every <laughs> single existing tongue. Yeah. Yeah, that makes so sense. I was forced to use only a small portion of the world's languages. Also, I do not speak every language that I use in this conlang, so inaccuracies in the words might be present, uh, up to the point that it's an entirely different language. Finally, at some points, there might be some inaccurate pronunciations. Um, I try to be as close as possible to the original, but sometimes I might fail. As I said, it wasn't possible for me to create a language that is comprised of all languages on planet Earth, so I decided to focus only on 50. The languages that I use are primarily based on the population, but also there are some languages that are representing an area or a certain culture. You can see the complete list of languages on the screen right now. In order to calculate any word in the language, I just had to first find the word in every selected language. Then I needed to transcribe every word in terms of IPA. And then the magic happens. I transform every word into a list of vectors, oh. then I average them out. <laughs> After that, I multiply every sound that is represented by a vector by a matrix that transforms the phoneme space to an evenly distributed one. Oh, God. Finally, I find the closest phoneme to each vector. The final list of phonemes will be the resulting word. Because of the fact that some languages lack certain sounds, it shall be fair to include more sounds to have a more balanced pronunciation. So the phonology of the language is b, b, d, 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 g, g, b, 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 g, Is this just every sound found in the top 50 languages? Jesus Christ. This is literally just the entire IPA. It is, or at least every IPA sound used in the top 50 languages. Now, some of these definitely yeah. are not in any of the top 50 languages. That, that is likely true. These are some weird ones. Like, yeah, some of those vowels definitely are not in uh, every any of the top 50. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Maybe these are just like the vector average results. And no, I did not die. The grammar of the language allows absolute freedom in order to not discriminate and not propagate any worldview. But determiners are highly encouraged, although they are not forced. Any phrase can be translated at once, so technically the B movie text can be translated with just one word. <laughs> We can 
probably skip forward a little bit. Yeah, the, the, this is a certified, holy crap, certified one word here taking up about three minutes of time. Let's go towards the end of that. <laughs> and again, I did not die, <laughs> although it was close. But like this word is hard to understand, mm. and I'll make a more accurate translation in the end. There is also a ton of synonyms for every single word. Every inflection of form and all the synonyms are allowed to go through the generation phase. All the definitions might change depending on context. So, birre, ulule, verlui, uslajue, marvel, derre, erreuge, derre, uslule, all mean good. But they are completely different, as you can see. <laughs> because of the inherent non-neutrality of the decimal number system, this language uses quarter imaginary base, meaning base to i. Oh God! For uninitiated, to i is equal to square root of minus four. This system is also more useful in math and physics, as there is no need for negative or complex numbers in the way they are written and pronounced in the decimal right now. The way the system is organized oh, is also quite elegant. Zero is Schwab, and the following numbers are derived from spiraling out of the vowel space in the clockwise direction. From unrounded to rounded vowels. Oh, when the vowel is said, consonants are added from the main plane. Yes, elegant meaning no is nasals, the word no I literals, use here. no doubly articulated consonants. From the glottis to lips. Stop, stop, proximants. You can see the graphic here. The numbers are also used in determiners, where they represent how close to the speaker the object is. And it is highly recommended to use them in order to resolve the ambiguities that might appear. They can mean the distance to the object in the real world or just in one's mind. The object's position can be calculated by using the west as the positive real axis and the south as the positive imaginary axis. The numbers are also used in comparisons, with the real axis representing how much difference exists there and the imaginary axis representing the personal opinions of the author, or an additional parameter if specified. Alas, everything must end, and I'm presenting to you my translation of the example sentence we had to submit for the circus. <laughs> It's, it's enormous. I think I think we get the point, but holy crap! Yep, probably. Yeah, that that, that yeah. is a that is an interesting. Concept. This is just this is just what the average conlang's romanization looks like. <laughs> oh my god, that is like the fifth time I've knocked over my tablet. I need Rip. to I need to get better at life. <laughs> Got him. This is a thanks list. You have more patrons than me. So this was This was a really hard task to implement this language. Even though the main reason for creating it was for me to have fun, I hope you've enjoyed it. Maybe we can find resources times. that I've used to make the language, some links related to me or the language, and thanks to some people. I've put the links in the description below as well. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. There you go. So, second to last one for the night. Enzalad's Hexadecimica. <laughs> Let's see. Oh Hello, I'm oh, This is bad. Hexadecimica, the perfect international auxiliary language. So, let's start with the phonology. The there are 30 consonants. They are ma, na, na, la, pa, pa, ga, ta, ka, ka, ga, ga, sa, sa, Buzzing is sha, back. Sha, sa. I th the, while there is actual buzzing in the background of this, I don't know if this is oh. my, my buzzing or if this That's... is the actual mic buzzing. Because there is indeed real buzzing happening in the background of this one. In that case, so, it's probably the video. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. And also there are six vowels. Quite an assortment of sounds. Now let's go to the lexicon. So it's an international auxiliary language. So it has to have um, source languages, right? And they are Mongolian, English, okay. Welsh, Finnish, Belarusian, Korean, <laughs> Czech, and Esperanto. Oh, great. <laughs> and that's just, that's not the numbers. 
numbers are different. Even numbers come from Odia, and even and not other numbers come from Ortiz. So now we get to the word formation. So you have to take the word from a source language and adapt it to the phonology. Like the word example in English, you get example. Amazing. And grammar. It's an SVO language with prepositions going before nouns, obviously, and everything else after the nouns. Now, noun cases. It's an ergative absolute of language. It's not real ergative though, because here ergative func functions like reverse accusative and not like it usually is, like it's supposed to be. So absolute is marked. Ergative is chun, a prefix. Genif is sum, also a prefix. And div is the, a suffix. Yeah. Now we have articles and number. There are definite and indefinite articles. However, indefinite article is not used as real indefinite article as well. It's used for an emphasis, but not the, um, the kind of emphasis that is the definite article. It's confusing, I know, just... <laughs> yeah, so the indefinite article is sh, and definite is the, and there is also number. So singular is marked with the suffix o, dual is marked with a prefix prefix os, and plural is marked with a prefix love. So, yeah, and absentive, the absence of something, is unmarked, so that's the default. So, example is no example, but example is an example. So, also we have adjectives. Adjective, adjectives have to agree with the noun in case and number. And also, also, you can form adjectives from nouns and verbs. So, ung and thuz are, respectively, from nouns and from verbs. So, it says So, what's that? Cursed? Enough? Clearly not, as, as you can see, the video is not even close to being finished, so what else could possibly be here that would make this language an exquisite, del delectable, glorious flavour of Kurst? Well, you see, this was a lie. All that was just an appetizer for the main course, the true hex desinker, all that was just beginning. Now let's get straight to the word formation, we don't need any of that stuff, any phonology, like lexicon no, we don't need that because each consonant and vowel has a numerical value oh God, to it i'm not gonna list all of them however this is the cheat of them and you have to assemble the strings of numbers so you take the word example right that's the word we assembled in the fork text decimal and you have to separate consonants and vowels and switch the phonemes for numbers like this you're left with those beautiful strings of phonemes and then you get those beautiful numbers and then you have to convert them to hexadecimal yes that's why it's called hexadecimal after all Absolutely. because hexadecimal so does this has this turned into a one-way function like can this be reversed back into <laughs> i don't know if it can be reversed <laughs> oh god big long number strings like that oh man you get those numbers yeah beautiful. it's amazing a, it's each a hash function now yeah hexadecimal number has a phoneme assigned with the last one, the 10 or 0, being an exquisitely cursed one, like this. Beautiful. African. Kuh. Or this. Diphthong. Ow. Amazing. And number strings, you just convert them into those. Yeah. And then you have to assemble the word. So if the first numer numerical value of the vowel is bigger than the first numerical value of a consonant, the word starts with a vowel. Otherwise, it starts with a consonant. So, and you have to copy the sample pattern of the original word. So, the word example is VC, CV, CCC, so, and seven is bigger than one. So, it's CV, C, CV, CCC for the first cycle. I forgot another C there. And you have to assemble the word, and you get this. Then you have to determine the stress. So, stress falls on a syllable with the biggest numerical value. If two or more syllables have the same numerical value, the last one gets the stress. The syllable with the second biggest numerical value guess the secondary stress. So to determine the numerical value of a syllable, you take the hexadecimal num numerical values of each syllable's phonemes in order and transform them into decimal. Like this. So you get Beautiful. And you have to con and grammar. Conjugations are included into the transformed words, so the words can look like unrelated, completely unrela unrelated if they're conjugated. Fun. And word order is a fun one. The words in a clause are placed from one with the, with the biggest numerical value to one with the least numerical value. So to determine the numerical value of the word, you take the hexadecimal num numerical values of each syllable, put them in the correct order, and convert it into decimal, like this. Uh, I know, it's a beauty. This, this so, has got to be so one word. now we're going to get onto the translation. Hope you enjoyed this. Adam Schwa, and, well, prepare yourself for this. Tedbe wem to Gutses. Absehuyabi. Atsbuch pot.
There's like no and evidence left anyway. of like the original <laughs> language that came from. So to you, so hence chop, to you, which much been well, which hence net hook beh beh hook. So when we got here, we got here to get here. None of them could eat. I'm better to go get things. Dirty or not, let's see. Let's say, super, super, young, young choice. Teacher, chocolate, hoi, tennis one. Don't let me be, maybe, maybe next time. So, me check, me check, me check, me check. Okay, I'm pretty sure the buzzing is from the video anymore. Yeah, I mean, it is getting worse on my end, too. Oh. It is, it's, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I see. Let's find out. Only one way to find out. Hey, thanks for watching. I know this is probably not as cursed as the other missions, but I still think it's pretty cursed. Goodbye, have a nice day. Well, there we go. There. Should we call it here or? I think, yeah, I think maybe we should call I, it I here. Think, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate that we couldn't get to the end, but it, we still have two hours yeah. to go. It'll be a it'll be a shorter session that we will do to finish it mm -hmm. off for real. <sighs> oh, oh, oh! It's time again. Another one. Okay. Um. Uh, the Arjun book, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I make a lot of languages, a lot of conlang, some of them are cursed languages, some of them are more naturalistic languages. And you may notice the main one that I talk a lot about is Arjun, but I don't have a showcase video for Arjun. So you may be wondering like, hey, how come there's no showcase? And number one, there's the Arjun 101 shorts, so that that's kind of like a starter on it. And you got the comic, which is in English and Arjun. But to supplement both of those materials, I don't know if you knew this, but I have a book, like a published book. It's called A Grammar of the Autodune Language. It's for sale on Amazon for 25 US dollars. It's got the whole history of the Fulano Peninsula and the linguistic groups in the area, and like the history of like the civilization that it took place in and all the cultural context behind it and how it relates to other languages in the area. It's got cultural information, the, the 15 tet music notation, a list of names, a dictionary, the whole grammar of how everything works. That's where it all is. Like, sure, maybe I'll make a, a, an Autojun uh, Kaling showcase sometime, but for now, you got that book. It's a really good book. I wrote it for my thesis project when I was in, in college, and Eternal helped me typeset it. And it's a nice looking, beautiful book perfect for any language nerd like yourself, and it'll get you fully in, in tune with the lore of the world where my comic takes place, and where all the various naturalistic languages of the dog days world are spoken. So, yeah, why don't you go ahead, uh, there's another link in the description for it, go click that, it's over on Amazon, check it out, $25, it's not bad, get a lot of bang for your buck in my humble opinion. <sighs> But nothing is as good as a priceless view. So leave me alone. Get back to it. There's still more. Boom. There we go. All right. We are in. Everybody, here we are. Got a few more people than our usual two <laughs> for this final, <laughs> final. Yeah. It's going to be the final. Because it, <laughs> I just realized it was just us two for like 60 submissions. Nah, not 60, for like almost 80 submissions. Yeah, probably 80 submissions straight. It was just us, which I don't, yeah, blame, yeah, yeah. I don't blame anyone because yeah, it's honestly, a lot. 80 like, submissions yeah. is, is absurd. <laughs> oh my God. I was almost able to do it multiple times and then migraines yeah yeah you re rest in pepperoni but here yeah. we are yeah. gathered rest not even
Not even good pepperoni. It's like the old slimy cold pepperoni. Oh, God. Oh. And uh, we're we're joined with uh, with Ren today, Ringuistics, and uh, the the 2022 Curse Conlang Circus Heavyweight Champion Babalingua. <laughs> um. <laughs> <Existence> is pain. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, we're good about it for a curse conlang contest, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that that is that pretty much. Yeah. On that deep and, it, and brilliant note, <laughs> we have a 34-minute video about linear algebra coming up. So yes, yes. be prepared for some pain if you don't like linear algebra. Yeah. I that one looks like it might be pretty. That one looks like it might be pretty high. Uh, production quality so it'll so. probably be good it has been an hour recommended for a month yes <laughs> yeah odd. the thumbnail looks good is what i'm saying i've seen it mm, a billion mm. times but before that there's another one let's yep. see let's see what our first video of the day looks like and again let me know when the stream inevitably starts uh, making its popping yes. sounds or whatever, and we'll pause. Oh, yeah, Babalingua doesn't know that Agma's uh, connection is, or I think it's a Discord problem, maybe something is going horribly wrong, which means that when Agma just lets the video play for an extended amount of time, at one point, the audio starts crackling and repeating itself and just getting all sorts of messed up. <laughs> so if you suddenly notice that the audio just isn't there anymore and well, it's gonna be there it's gonna be atrocious just tell yes. us i mean everyone else is gonna say that too except agma yeah it happens for a bit <laughs> and it happens like clockwork at least like pretty much once a video yeah yeah, yeah pretty much at, at, at least we've had it happen several how, times a video how many hours of video have you judged so far uh, 21. 21. <laughs> if you go to the submission spreadsheet, you can... Hey, look, our recommended feed on the Brave browser is our next submission. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. So let, let's... Everywhere, everywhere I go, that video haunts me. Exactly. It's just in every I, recommended Yes, me too. Me too. And we're Good finally going to see it. Finally. Yeah. So let's, let's watch Quest for Conquest's Twisted Language for Twisted Creatures. Um, what's our speed right now? 1.25? Let's keep it that way for now. Why, hello there, everybody. Welcome to the video. Today, I have something very different for you. This one doesn't necessarily go out to my usual audience, though you're welcome to watch. No, this goes out to good ol' Agma Schwa. Gah, as you may know him, I, I, ringleader I, have, have of the cur- have you heard your name said in a voice like that before? Uh, that, that is a powerful Bren Daniel-esque voice, and I like it. That That's that's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's also not a question Agma should answer publicly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 and uh, colon three. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First Conlang Circus. The, video, the what? Are we talking Agma will typically we pause if we talk, but if yeah. you have something to say, just say it. Yeah, if if yeah. If, 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 it, if it's like a, a like a quick kind of quip or something, then we'll continue the video. But if if it's actually going to be like something like 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 a whole sentence or more, then then we usually like pause it to talk for a second. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but we definitely don't pause to say things like wow or incredible or <laughs> yeah, what the exactly. fuck is going pause on there is... pause wow. just just to hysterically Resumed. laugh for 10 minutes <laughs> no that one would actually make sense yeah, yeah. if that happens we should probably pause <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah all right anyway anyway back to quest for conquest to all those who enjoy it. Yes indeed. That means I'm posting my progress on a conlang for once. I'm sorry. <laughs> but without further ado, let's get into the language of the twisted abyssals. Of course, just in case my language didn't make the top 10, I decided to include one of your special themes. So you see, I based my conlang on the language of music. Okay. All right, there's probably no way I can swing okay. this to fit the definition. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll some see. might say music was the original language. Okay, that's enough. I made the language before making this excuse. <laughs> Though I can for sure say my language has something to do with rocks. Okay. In fact, there's a very particular type of rock we'll that influenced and irreversibly yeah, we'll altered the entirety yeah. of the Twisted Abyssal language. But I'll get to that later. 
Let's start with a timeline, starting with the first age. Don't worry, this won't be a novel, though to understand how this wild language evolved, we're going to need to understand those who originally spoke it, the knots. Knots originally formed in the weave of the realm of distortion, as twi- The what? <laughs> I'm nah, don't, don't dog him up. Okay, okay. Let's twisting <laughs> tangles in the fabric of reality. <laughs> Eventually, they got complex enough to latch onto souls and shatter free from the weave. This was extremely bad news for those that inhabit the weave, of course, as the knots began to hunt them down one by one. The weave is an ever-shifting maze of fractals and strange geometry. And of course, to live in it, one must change and alter their surroundings in various ways. Oh, man. This requires something that only mortals can produce. Spitha, which is a word that comes from my devil language, that means experience or knowledge. In reality, Spitha is a substance that mortals produce simply by living and experiencing life. But immortals need it in order to survive. Immortals have no set lifespan. They can live for however long they choose. However, to fuel this longevity, they need something that they themselves cannot produce. And eventually, the mortals learned to hide. This meant that knots had to become more intelligent, hunting in parties and using various strategies to capture their prey. Knots eventually developed hibernation behavior in order to sleep while mortals were repopulating and wake up whenever they've reached their population maximum. In the beginning, knots really only need words for things like sleeping and waking up and hunting. However, eventually, as they became smarter, these needs began to change. Since knots were simply twisted portions of the weave, they eventually had infinite sexes, and this translated to infinite genders too. These genders were expressed through tones, and originally there were infinite of them. You'd go as high or as low as you wanted. However, oh, no. not every sex was needed in order to reproduce, Absolute and thus, bitch. slowly, uh, genders okay. began to weed out of the language, most of them not really being in use. This started by whittling down to about 27, which were originally necessary <laughs> to create a knot garden. However, eventually, after civilizations began to form, this shifted down to 12, and it remains 12 to this day, though of course the uses have changed. As you may have noticed, I've avoided getting into the meat of things, such as what phonemes they use and how they communicate these phonemes, or if they have phonemes. Now, I'm gonna need you to prepare yourself because this is gonna be wild. Knots are shifted, twisted forms of geometry, and thus, the way they speak to each other is by vibrating that geometry. This geometry vibrates in very specific ways, which we call the various wave shapes. This means that the knots literally speak in idiom music. Yes, they actually speak in idiom music. Not to mention, since they're a part of the weave, they had writing from the very beginning, since they can merely twist the weave to say whatever they want to say. It's almost as though writing was their original mouth movements. I know, this all sounds very strange, and, well, I mean, that's on purpose. Now, of course, in order to not bore you with the very long history that I wrote, I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the phonology. In modern day, and since well before... What'd you say? The audio is already buzzing. starting to yeah. <laughs> degrade. I, I figured the time had come. Uh, mm. <laughs> yes. This, this is insane so far, though. Like <laughs> yeah, this is this is uh, let's say twisted. Yeah. Very much. Like these <laughs> these graphics are these like AI generated? Did the quest for conquest like it, it, make all of these like? This, it's, it seems like there is too much movement for some... I'm not up to date with what AIs can generate in terms of videos, but typically AI images are way less coherent and definitely not coherent enough to just stitch them together to form a video. So it might just be that he generated some fractals or this is some tech demo I'm not familiar with or some benchmark or whatever. Interesting. Isn't it someone on, like, coding YouTube, like... Uh... Maybe Code Parade had like a game they made with 3D fractals or something like that. I'm sure someone's made something to that uh, effect. So yeah. I'm not sure if they've made it or they just got it from somewhere. God. But yeah, I yeah. don't I think, think it was AI generated. For, I think it was an engine for rendering them. So I don't, I don't know if it's AI I could generated. see that being, yeah, I, I could see something like that being used for this because, <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right, we should be good to go now. Let's, let's die. Let's go. Let's do it before these knots began to inhabit the rest of the world, there are exactly five wave shapes that they use as phonemes, per se. The sign, the square, 
the triangle, the saw, and the squine, which is a mix between sign and square. They also often use static. And in order to convey emotions and things such as that, they have a kick, a snare, and a hat. <laughs> All of which are music terms, so good old Nga understands what I'm talking about. Now, the reason I mentioned 12 genders exactly is because there are exactly 12 notes from oh one note of the same letter to the next note of the same letter. I see. The knots, or as they're called today, the inkblots, use a logography as their language. All right, so they don't actually use a logography. I got that completely wrong. Most of this is because I changed it a little bit throughout the process, even through recording this. But a part of it is simply me just saying the wrong thing. Their language is more like an apogita of sorts, maybe an abjad. It's a little difficult to explain, but you'll see whenever the writing segment comes up. Unfortunately, I will continue to make this mistake throughout the entire video. So enjoy! <laughs> Every symbol in the logography indicates two to three sounds. Each of these sounds will have a tone, except for the first, of course, since that represents the bass tone. Tones in this language means jumping from the bass tone a certain amount of steps in either direction, up or down. Tones are not inherent to each syllable, but they do allow for greater specificity when indicating certain words' meanings. There are 150 syllables normally, however with tones that means thousands. I suppose we should talk about the symbols, shouldn't we? Since the knots were quite literally a part of the weave, they could alter their surroundings and twist it to their will. This was how they conveyed simple words in the past, and to this day, that system still stands. Which means they don't necessarily write as you would think. They grab any object and twist it into a word. Or more than just one word, of course. As all of these logos must be linked together in a single spiral formation, which means for mortals, we have to draw each spiral, <laughs> each arm, oh. one by one, painstakingly. Oh god, <laughs> what have I done? I've assigned each type of wave a romanization. However, these romanizations don't make sense. Not because I wanted it to be cursed, but uh, it's just kind of how my brain works. Sine waves are R, square waves are I, triangle waves are O, saw waves are L, and squine waves are Q. When static is used, it's usually an underline, or whatever I need to be able to realize that it's static. And of course, that gives us this lovely chart right here. How do you use this? Oh, right. What'd you say? That's actually kind of... Huh? I just had a moment of stupidity where I just asked squine, even though that's been mentioned already. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, insanity. Uh, just turn. All right, let's see. This chart. I hear you asking. Well, how the f? I'm sorry. I got a bit out of hand there. Here, let me just show you. When an ink blot writes out a phrase, the spiral grows and then slowly gets smaller and smaller at the oh tips. My. Along this spiral, like letters, you would add these specific markings. They go out from the center, but um, when phrases get long, uh, they tend to not be able to be read anymore. And you would be surprised how often they get pretty long. Now how, in the 27 <laughs> outworlds, is this possibly useful to them, literally in any way? Well, this is where the stone part comes in. Oh, no. After some time oh, of the no. knots developing societies and empires that stretched all across the weave, they eventually learned of the outside world. Specifically, they called them the Outworlds. There were 27 of them, and this world, the world of distortion, was only one of the inner ones, meaning they had access to any that they chose. And of course, that meant there was more space to invade. Oh God. <laughs> the Knots eventually discovered one of my core magic systems. They discovered the blue crist, one of the many colors of crist, though at the time they only knew of the blue ones. And this crist had the unique yeah, ability yeah. to twist and change its surroundings, mm -hmm. forming them into fractal shapes that spread across the land. Use just a little bit of this crist, inlaid into an object, and you create a formation that can capture light waves from across the outworld. What did we say? What? Huh? Oh. I don't think anyone said anything. Ah, oh, okay. I think yes, these people was just literally developed noises. interdimensional radios. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm outside right now. Became... I see, gotcha. Came a vast interdimensional empire. These small blue crystals revolutionized their language. 
they could perfectly recreate and print spirals of text from across the universe. And because of its fractal nature, they could zoom in as far as they needed to into any spiral. Meaning that to them, this writing system was perfectly viable. And never had to change. The name of the language itself <laughs> is... Which roughly means, birth of decisions. Of course, without tones, it could mean anything from to wake up to to see. And since tones are implied when writing, well... The clicking that starts slow and then speeds up indicates emphasis. For this word, the emphasis is on the decision syllable. The genders associated with this word are 5, 12, 7, and 3. To this specific word, those genders are innate. If you change those genders at all, the word itself will change completely. For example, say you got the fourth step wrong, and you went from a 3 to a 2. Then this would be a cute word to say to try and get your child to talk. And say you got step 2 mixed up with 9 instead of 12, now all of a sudden you're yelling at someone because you want them to think before they have a literate child. So yeah, it's a little bit important that you remember which step is which. I would love to get in depth in the grammar and things like that, but it's a bit of a mess. I'll be honest, this is one of my first projects. Well, I mean, if you don't count the years of experimenting. I've made other languages, but they weren't really quite as in-depth as this one. And this one's kind of my second finished one. I like to say Toth is my first, my dwarven language. But of course, the video's getting too long already, so I might as well go ahead and cut it here. And without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Oh boy. Wait. Yeah? Oh no. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Continue. All right, here we go. Let's see. <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Let's see if no. this is gonna be small race soul, but good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna make the actual flight of the bumblebee. Not to mention that kind of takes the depth out of it. Nearly every note of the bumblebee is separated by only one, which means that this is the equivalent of the ranting and braving of an old man. Not to mention there's no reduplication, which is a big thing in this language. So instead, I've composed this for you. Yellow and black like a bee. Well, with that done and done, oh, I'm going to talk a little about my process, if you don't mind. In a way, hmm. it's kind of the most cursed part of this whole thing. You see, originally I was going to make a language called Hi Howdy, the language of the partners of the West. Of course, <laughs> this didn't come to fruition for <laughs> obvious reasons. While it would be based on English, and that'd be kind of neat, it's, well, not necessarily that interesting. Not don't worry, we, are, we already got twang for that one, the, 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 the cowboy... Uh, future English. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good times. To mention, I already had a language project for my Twisted Abyssals. The Inkblots needed a language for a good long while, and I'd already kind of pretend made alphabets and such for them, though I never really delved deep into it. And I thought, well, isn't this just the perfect opportunity? And then I procrastinated until the 10th. Of September. One day I basically oh. just decided, all right, look, I have to submit this. The buzzing is so I'm going to sit down. Quiet oh. now. I'm going to listen to louder. Oh. I, I was, I'm saying I can tell why this, that, that they procrastinated because this is the 112th submission. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's after some of the programmers' submissions. And as we know, programmers procrastinate. So this is more procrastinating than a programmer, which is impressive. Very impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> Electronic musicians procrastinate like crazy, too. That's true. I see. That's true. That makes sense, then. One and the same. <laughs> All right. Basically. Good now. Mm. Music. And I'm going to just write. What do I need? What does this <laughs> grammar need? <laughs> How should these things speak? And, well, I got a little distracted. <laughs> 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 Fascinating. This is going on too. But long. after all that, I got writing. And oh boy, did I get writing. I ended up writing about 30 some odd words, all of which were sort of general, since I knew this was probably going to be a logography of some kind. The original idea was that I was going to create a unique spiral for every single word that they use, and then turn that into a language. 
I'd love to completely revamp this language, honestly. I love the idea, and it's definitely a cursed concept, but it'd definitely be more fitting in a spec bio or world building conling competition. My original goal was to make the writing system more like hieroglyphs, and to also make the tones more important in the language. I also wanted them to be able to speak with multiple wave types at once, and in the beginning, I was really pushing for the whole infinite genders thing, which could have been very cool. If I do this again, I can see myself revamping it and making it much better, but I suppose that's for next year. Of course, this is where I say goodbye. As some last words, I'm working on a very large project. And I've announced it before, but it was on a stream that not many people saw. So might as well put it here for anyone watching my YouTube channel. I have started work on a game. This game is based in one of my outworlds. I haven't fully fleshed it out, but I'll be working on stream on it every once in a while. If you want to see this game finished while also getting early access to all of my creative endeavors and sharing your input on the game and other future projects, please support me on Ko-fi. I'm planning on starting a Discord server for the Armada soon, so if you'd like to get access as soon as it's done and start rising through the Angel ranks, consider becoming a monthly member on my Ko-fi. It'll give you an XP boost and access to certain perks no one else will have on the server. I also plan to start a Kickstarter for my game once I've got enough material, so be on the lookout for that. If I could do this kind of thing for a living, it'd be a dream come true, especially since I'm not doing so good in the job department right now. Oh, and speaking of stream, in the description is a link to my Twitch channel, and down there you can also find a link to my comic that's been running for a good few months now and has a lot of pages. Please, please go try it out. I'm very proud of it, and I need motivation to keep going, I beg you. Not to mention, it also features my Christ magic system, so if you like that, why not hop on over? All the art in this video is either credited to its creator or made by yours truly, as the art you see on screen right now, and all music in this video is also made by me. If you want to see more of that, hop over to the Jargon True Seer channel, which is also linked in the description. Of course, all the music on that channel is pretty much old music at this point. But hey, if you want to see some of my most recent stuff, you're welcome to comment and ask for it. Please, I need the engagement. Please like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. But no, seriously, please. I, I badly need subscribers. No one watches this channel. Please don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Nice. Well, there you I go. I will say... Uh... <laughs> about a solid minute or longer of self-advertising, this person has got themselves figured out. Like, they know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That, 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 was, that was some quality content right there. I don't think any of the other videos are anything like that. Like, at the end. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, it, exactly. it makes sense to include, because a lot of people are... I mean, to be fair, this is submission 112, so if anyone's still watching, then... Uh, if you've been watching the entire thing, I'm honestly impressed, yeah, because right. we we have, well, at least me and Agma have had to sit through 20 hours of footage, which is, in recording time, is more than 20, it's probably like 30 hours or something like this point. Yeah. Uh, so they we know what it's thing. like to just watch Conlang. Uh, they, they stayed through it all because they knew there hours. was a Babylon Lingua at the end. The what? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. They stayed through it all because they knew Babalingua would be there at the end. Yeah, there you go, exactly. Yes, yes, naturally. <laughs> a, ni a nice unmute and then back to mute from Babalingua. A sign of <laughs> approval. <laughs> Dude. Sorry, I'm having some... Uh, sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties. I missed about the last minute of audio. What, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> On to the next one, which is the video already recommended right below Gopetyam, the one that's been in my recommended for a long, long time. <laughs> and if you've been watching this video, you've, it's also in, it's the first in the top left. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's been, it's been showing up here, like, the entire time, basically. Yep. <laughs> And I've left a Everywhere. comment here and said, hope you like linear algebra. Okay. Because this seems to involve matrices. At I least. do see matrices and I'm terrified. Okay. Yeah, let's... I see a matrix, what looks like a matrix product here. Yep, it sure does. Let's see. Let's see. Let's... Take them. All right, let's do it. Let's keep it at 1.25 and if we need to speed it up more, we'll then yeah. yeah. Take a look at this scene. What do you see? If you're a speaker of a natural human language, your answer is probably a fish and a tree. But why do we split the scene into two different objects, and why specifically these two? No. Theoretically, there could be a language with a single word, a it's single a morpheme that refers language. to this thing as a whole. There could also be I another really language that splits this scene into two <laughs> objects, one that we will call a fish head and tree branches, and the other we will call the body of a fish and a tree trunk. But natural languages don't do this, because humans don't think of the world this way. For humans, a fish is more of a singular concept than whatever this is. Natural human languages come with all kinds of phonology, morphology, and syntax. 
but they are I don't mind this being common. 30 minutes. Natural languages yeah. generally have content words that map decently well to the speaker's oh, mental no. model of the world. Oh, God. I'll call this principle the mental model principle. Oh, no. But what if we try to break this principle? No. What if we made a language where singular human this concepts are diffused across Hold entire on. sentences? Yeah. I've mentioned this before on a previous submission. I forgot which one it was. But there's this uh, quote by Ludwig Wittgenstein. Even if a line could speak, we could not understand it. Yep. Which the basic premise of it is that even if a lion could speak, the way a lion thinks would be so different from humans that we wouldn't be able to communicate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And this is going in that direction. It because sure I don't oh, think yeah. we could feasibly communicate with someone who conceives of a fish and the tree as a fish head and the <laughs> leaves of the tree being one part. <laughs> yeah. I already... Yeah. This is already my favorite um, cursed conlang that has been entered to the contest, including <laughs> the one that yes. I made. This is... I love it already. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. And what if we did it using linear algebra and modular arithmetic? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kat, and this is Hop Chan. That's how it's pronounced. Okay. So, where do we start? We want to map human concepts to something that's diffused across the entire utterance, and we can do this mathematically using linear algebra. The basic idea is that we map each concept to an infinitely long vector, and each component of the vector oh, corresponds no. to a position in the sentence. Oh, then, to add more concepts to the sentence, we simply add up the vectors to get the final sentence vector. Each number um, in the sentence vector is then mapped to a syllable right. in our okay. comment. This way, if we add or remove a concept from the sentence, or swap out a concept for another, it would have an effect on the sounds throughout the entire sentence. Oh no! Did I say infinitely long vector? Yes, I did. In order for us to be able to convey an arbitrary amount of information and make arbitrarily long sentences in the language, the vectors cannot be finitely long. But it's kinda difficult to pronounce infinitely long utterances, so we truncate it at the point where pronouncing more syllables conveys no more information. To spoil things mildly, it more. turns out that this can be done, and we will explore this later in the video. Since there are only finitely many possible syllables, there should only be finitely many possible numbers in each vector like component. Because of this, we will use modular arithmetic oh, for adding up vectors. What this means is okay. that we will constrain the vector components to be integers that are at least zero but less than some positive integer p. And these numbers wrap around, mm. like on the clock. So the number after p minus one is not p, but zero. There is, however, a subtle problem with what we have so far. Our conlang cannot convey information about the relationships between concepts. Let's what I mean is this. Second, yeah. <laughs> is, is it clear what modular arithmetic is and how it works? Or do we need to explain that one? I have no idea. Okay. Basically, modular arithmetic means that, um, for instance, you, you have two 8-bit numbers and you add them together. The final result has to fit in an 8-bit number. So you cut off everything afterwards. Meaning if you have the maximum number you can represent in an 8-bit number is, if you start at 0, is 255. Meaning if you add 1 to 255, well, it's now going to be 256, but the first 8 bits are now all zeros, so you take just those. So the result is 0, meaning modular arithmetic means it wraps around oh, at a certain point. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you add... Uh, 999 plus 2 modulo 1000 would be 1 because it goes to 1000 and then it goes back to 0. <laughs> oh, no, it goes back okay. to 1, yeah. Wow. Okay, so yeah, I guess that's the direction we're going here. <laughs> oh, man. All right. We want to express the cat eats the fish. The sentence vector would be the sum of the vectors of the concepts cat, eating, and fish. But this is the same sentence vector as the one for the fish eats the cat. They involve the same three concepts. And because addition is commutative and associative, the sentence vectors end up the same. So how do we know whether it is the cat or the fish that is doing the eating? There are a few ways natural human languages deal with this problem. English and Hokkien, for example, often use word order to convey this information. We have the cat eats the fish versus the fish eats the cat, and niao de jia hia versus hia de jia niao. Some languages, like Japanese, use small words called particles that attach to content words to convey this information. For example, neko ga sakana o tabeteru versus neko o sakana ga tabeteru. The particles ga and o mark the subject and object, respectively. Other languages modify the content words themselves to convey their relationships. Latin does this, for example, fe les biskem comedit versus fe lem biskis comedit. Yep. Most English pronouns also do this. Mm -hmm. The different possible inflections of the word are called cases in our conlang because there's no way for us to order the concepts in a sentence. It is impossible to use word order to convey the relationship between concepts. <laughs> 
adding particles is also not possible because there's no way to know which particle goes with which concept in the sentence. So that leaves us with modifying the concept vectors themselves. What we'll do is, instead of mapping each concept to a vector, we'll map each concept case pair to a different infinite vector. And the case oh, can be any positive integer. That's right, our conlang has infinitely many cases. Looking at this from a different <laughs> perspective, it is equivalent to saying that each concept in our cursed conlang has associated with it an infinite 2D matrix, uh, where the ith okay. column of the matrix is the vector associated with the ith case of the concept. But actually, we can simplify this. Instead of having to come up with a unique matrix for each concept, we can simply have one infinite matrix, which I will call the yeah. base matrix. Matrices oh, no. for different concepts will then be different multiples perfect. of this base matrix. Each concept yep. is assigned a positive integer between 0 and p minus 1, and really this concept good. number is multiplied with the base matrix to get the matrix for the concept. This simplification comes with a limitation. No two concepts can have the same case within the same utterance. Suppose we have a sentence that consists of just concept 4 in case 2. The sentence is then simply 4 times the base vector for case 2. But we can also get the same sentence by adding concept 3 in case 2 with concept 1 in case 2, or even twice yep. concept 2 in case 2. As we can see, there will be a Holy lot of ambiguity shit. if we allow for multiple <laughs> concepts to have the same case, so we prohibit this. To summarize what we have come up with so far, we have an infinite base matrix, and the vectors of each concept case pair is a multiple of a column of this base matrix. Then to construct a sentence, we add up the concept case vectors that make up the sentence, and the vector we get we can convert into syllables to make it pronounceable. You might recognize that this is simply matrix vector multiplication. Uh -huh. We can represent the mm -hmm. concepts and cases that make up the sentence using an infinitely long vector, where each entry corresponds to a different case. Yeah. We'll call this vector the summary vector, since it summarizes the entire utterance. Note that the summary vector is fundamentally different from the concept case vectors, so to differentiate them, I'll always write the summary vector in purple. If we want to construct a sentence consisting of concept 3 in case 1 and concept 4 in case 2, we make the first component of the vector have a value of 3, and the second component have a value of 4, and all other components are 0. If we then multiply this infinite vector with the base matrix, the first column of the base matrix is multiplied by 3, and the second column is multiplied by 4, and these are added up. All the other columns are multiplied by 0, so they don't contribute to the sum. The sum is then exactly the sentence vector. We have just written the procedure in a more mathematical form. So now that's left is to construct the infinite base matrix, but it can't just be any infinite uh, matrix. Remember, we had a condition yeah. the base matrix. <laughs> is everyone still following? I I currently am. Yeah, I'm holding on. <laughs> I, I wish I wasn't following, so I would be spared from what is to come. Uh -huh. No, I'm. I I don't understand numbers, so I'm not following, but I'm along for the ride. And you explaining it isn't going to make it make sense to me. <laughs> okay, but if you need think... an explanation for something, let me know and I'll try. Because right. what we're seeing right here is basically... It's difficult to explain even, because this is, this is very interesting. We have some sort of... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. difficult to explain because... <laughs> I want to say vector space, but I, I you think, don't really have two operations on it. So, but yeah. I think even if if everyone doesn't follow along completely, the confusion is part of the art of the video. Yeah, Perhaps. honestly, at, at that at this point, yes. Like we're we're seven minutes into a thirty-four minute we, chaos. I I, I, need, <laughs> I need to see where this is going. <laughs> yeah, and this is just the beginning. I'm yeah. very curious to see. <sighs> This... I'm, I'm very curious to see how the conversion process especially yeah. works mm. between like, this... like into the phonology how is that gonna work yeah but it's, the, it's like, yeah this it section is, is titled converting to linear algebra yeah what we like, have here yes. is already pretty horribly it reminds me of something i once read in a multilinear algebra book which was very fascinating uh, where they had some proof or something and said we start off by constructing the vector space of infinitely dimensional vector spaces <laughs> That was already a fascinating <laughs> sentence. And this sort of reminds me of that because we the our basis vectors are infinitely long vectors here. So oh, terrifying. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's 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 get back into it and see where this goes, because I have, to, and let's I have try, to see where this goes. And let's <laughs> try not to pause the video if possible. Because <laughs> yeah, it's this, long. This is a long one. It is a long one, yeah. Uh, and then next time the audio p starts popping, then then you can explain everything that's going on. <laughs> sure, or if someone is completely lost, then the yeah. once an explanation I can try. Exactly. Someone right. other than me is completely lost. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's let's go and let's do it. 
metrics has to be able to meet? How do we guarantee that the listener can always unambiguously figure out which concepts and cases make up the sentence? And how do we choose a cutoff point for the sentence such that that is guaranteed? Because we have translated our linguistic problem into the language of linear algebra, we actually have tools to tackle these problems. In linear algebra terms, how do we truncate the infinite base matrix into a finitely sized matrix such that the truncated matrix is invertible? These questions are not only relevant to constructing our cursed conlang, but also to the field of cryptography. Oh, the no. method we are using to no, convert naturally. from concepts and cases to syllables is exactly the same as a cipher called the Hill cipher. Also, I've used the term diffuse a few times so far, but it has a special meaning in the field of cryptography. If we change any entry of the input, then it should have an effect on most of the entries of the output. This is also called the avalanche effect. A related concept in cryptography is confusion, which is when each entry of the output depends on several entries of the input. In fact, the Hill cipher- I just want to say, I, I, I've started working on a video script that talks about this kind of stuff a little bit. <laughs> and I just wanted to Naturally. say that I was already writing this script before I saw this. So if this ends up mm. going in a similar direction, I will either give up <laughs> on that video or just know I'm not copying you. Anyway. <laughs> Cypher and Accursed Conlang have both of these properties, provided that the base matrix is dense, meaning that it has very few zeros. Unfortunately, the Hill Cypher is not used anymore by itself. But some modern ciphers still still use matrix multiplication in order to achieve diffusion of the input. Which means that in fact, there is some real world use of solving this mathematical problem other than making this cursed conlang. So without further ado, <laughs> let's actually try solving it. Here we go. The following two sections of the video will be more mathematical and will assume some basic knowledge of linear algebra. <laughs> if at any point you feel like you're lost or if you're just here for the funny conlanging, you can skip directly to the actually constructing the language section and you'll be fine. <laughs> but if you want to dive into the maths, that's great. Let's continue. So, invertible matrices. What invertible means is that you can find another matrix whose matrix multiplication undoes the matrix multiplication of your original matrix. One of the first things you learn in an introductory linear algebra course is that a matrix is invertible if only if it is square and all of its columns are linearly independent. Thus, we will truncate the base matrix to just the top left n by n submatrix, where n is the largest case used in the sentence. Furthermore, the condition that the columns have to be linearly independent is in fact not very strict at all. Most square matrices have linearly independent columns. So now, we just have to find an infinite linearly independent matrix, right? But here's the catch. Mm. The results you learn in your average linear algebra course assume that you're dealing with arithmetic involving real or complex numbers. Here, however, we're doing <laughs> modular arithmetic on integers. So do the results oh, yeah, regarding that's... invertible matrices generalize to modular arithmetic? The answer is yes, but only if the modulus p is a prime number. The reason that we're able to generalize these linear algebra results is that these results were not proven just for the case of real and complex numbers. Rather, they were proven for more abstract algebraic structures mm -hmm. called fields and vector spaces. The definitions of these fields and vector spaces consist of only the bare bone properties that make the theory of linear algebra and other branches of mathematics work. For example, fields are an abstract generalization of the real numbers and the complex numbers. A mathematical object is a field if it has the following properties. Addition and multiplication are defined and have the properties of commutativity, associativity, and distribution. Commutativity. commutativity for addition means that a plus b is equal to b plus a. Associativity means that if we have a plus b plus c, then adding a and b first will result in the same number as adding b and c first. Furthermore, addition and multiplication both have to have an identity element. For the real numbers, these are 0 and 1 respectively. Where adding a number with the additive identity and multiplying a number with the multiplicative identity both result in the original number itself. And lastly, each element of the field has an additive inverse. For the real numbers, the additive inverse of a number is its negative. And each element except for the additive identity, 0, has a multiplicative inverse. For the real numbers, this is 1 over oh, the, the numbers. It's not hard to again. show that real numbers and it's complex buzzing. numbers... Got em. <laughs> it's buzzing, yeah. Yeah. While we're handling the audio issues and such, or the buzzing, that is, I will say that I like that the music playing right now is this cheery, happy kids show music. Because it makes <laughs> it seem as, as if the... The abstract linear algebra is the easy part. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's so bouncy and happy just it's, going along this. It's like <laughs> it's this is building to something earth shattering and I am yeah here for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it reminds I'll, me of I'll like be right a, back. I'm just gonna get some water. How dare you? It it, it reminds <laughs> me of like the the LA beast, like that guy who like eats like wacky things and like does these stupid challenges. He's like do building up to, like to these chaotic challenges, and it's always just like the most happy stock music mm -hmm. playing. And it's 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 beautiful. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. <sighs> God. All right. 
Should we wait for Ren to get back, or should we just continue because it's just the math section? <laughs> hmm. <sighs> what would Ren want is the real question. Yeah, exactly. That is the question, yes. The, the true the true philosophical question. If Ren can hear us from the distance while getting water, what is By it? the way, uh, when I mute and unmute my mic, does it make a sound that everyone can hear on Discord? Or No. I don't hear I haven't said Okay, anything. cool. I, I case... have Ren turned. Hey. Oh, hello. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got him. Satisfy these properties, and so are fields. And so any result that has been proven involving fields also applies to the real numbers and the complex numbers. As for vector spaces, they are the abstract generalization of all these arrays of numbers that we've been calling vectors so far. By its definition, it must have a field associated with it, with addition defined between vectors, as well as multiplication between vectors and elements of the field, with similar properties to those of fields. So because of this generalization, we just need modular arithmetic over integers to be a field for the results from linear algebra to apply to what we're doing. And it Turns out the modular one, arithmetic over the integers forms a field if and only. What'd you say? Just an interesting comment maybe because you just mentioned vector space. You can actually define vectors without ever talking about numbers. Like all of these operations, vector spaces, you can what you can do perfectly fine is define vectors and do all sorts of calculations in without ever getting into numbers. Yeah. You don't yeah. need real numbers or anything for them. You can do like vector spaces can stand on their own. So weird. Interesting. But yeah. All right, let's get back to it. Only if the modulus p is a prime number. The reason for this is that if p is not prime, it has some factor k that is not one or itself, then k does not have a multiplicative inverse. To have a multiplicative inverse, there must be some integer that you can multiply by k to get 1 plus a multiple of p. But p divides by k cleanly, so 1 plus any multiple of p divided by k will always leave a remainder of 1. Therefore, k does not have a multiplicative inverse, and so the integer's modulo p is not a field if p is not prime. Mm -hmm. This Fair problem enough. does not occur if yeah. p is prime, and you can show that in this case it is is indeed a field. What all this means is that as long as we choose a prime number for p and the base matrix is always invertible when truncated, then there will be no ambiguity about which concepts and cases make up any sentence. But that still means that we need to construct a base matrix that is always invertible after truncation. It turns out that there are quite a lot of them, so let's pick one that has some particularly nice properties. What nice properties do we want our base matrix to have? Well, we want the base matrix to be dense, meaning that almost all of the entries are non-zero. This is so that a change in any concept leads to a change in almost all of the entries of the sentence vector. The other nice property to have, and this is more for aesthetic reasons, is for the inverse of the base matrix after truncation to be easily obtainable. It would be nice to be able to undiffuse the language easily, and the inverse matrix is most easily obtainable if it's simply the original truncated matrix itself. But notice that the truncation size is variable while we have a fixed base matrix. This means that every truncation to a leading principal submatrix of the base matrix must be self-inverse. We call matrices with this property leading self-inverse matrices. Since the language should allow for utterances of arbitrary length, we want to find leading self-inverse matrices of arbitrary size. We don't actually have to look very far to find one. The identity matrix is leading self-inverse, and so is this negative. But we want matrices that are dense, and it's not trivial to come up with dense leading self-inverse matrices. So do dense leading self-inverse matrices even exist? Let's find out. <laughs> it's not obvious how to construct such a matrix, so let's start small and see what we can learn from trying things out. If we truncate the base matrix to just a 1x1 one one matrix so that only the top left entry is left, then for it to be self-inverse, it can only be simply 1 or negative 1. Let's pick 1 for the top left entry. Now, let's try to expand it into a 2x2 two two self-inverse matrix. Crucially, if we keep the top left 1x1 one one submatrix untouched, we can ensure that the truncated 1x1 one one matrix is still self-inverse. At the same time, we try to fill out the rest of the 2x2 two two matrix so that it is also self-inverse. Let's label the three unknown entries. B is the entry in the top right, C is the entry in the bottom left, and D is the entry in the bottom right. Since we want it to be self-inverse, multiplying it by itself should give the identity matrix. If we do so, the product we get has 1 plus BC in the top left, B plus BD in the top right, C plus CD in the bottom left, and BC plus D squared in the bottom right. We want this to be equal to the identity matrix. This gives us four equations, so let's see if we can solve this system of equations to find the values of the unknown entries. Let's look at the top left entry. It's equal to 1 plus BC, and we want this to be equal to 1. This means that B or C has to equal 0, or both. Now onto the top right entry. It's equal to b plus bd, which we can factor into b times 1 plus d, and we want this to be equal to 0. This means that, again, b is 0, yeah, or d is again. negative 1, yeah. or both. Because Damn. But this is... this is... 
getting more wacky as time goes I, on. I don't particularly see this becoming anything else than just a bunch of ones and negative ones and zeros. <laughs> I, I don't think this is going to end with something more complex than that, at least not with this approach. Well, here's the thing, too. Um, that one uwu language is just basically ones and zeros, and that's quite a cursed conline. That doesn't mean that they won't be able to create quite a, a cursed conline out of several yes, ones yes, and zeros. Yes, yes, I'm just saying that a, a dense <laughs> matrix that has this property that has any numbers other than one zero, one zeros and negative ones in it would very much surprise me. <laughs> I see. Uh, I, do, I don't know enough about linear algebra to comment. <laughs> We're gonna find it's out. We're just only look at these through. equations. If if you have one, if you already know that one of them has to be zero, then that's already not looking good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Should we continue? Yes. Let's see. Because of symmetry, we get something analogous for the bottom left entry. C is 0 or D is negative 1. Lastly, the bottom right entry of the product is BC plus D squared, and we want this to equal 1. Earlier, we already found that BC must equal to 0, so this is simply D squared equals 1. In other words, yeah, D is, is 1 or negative 1. one. So okay. now we have a few choices to make. Let's first try setting D to 1. Then, by the conditions imposed by the top right and bottom left entries, B and C would both be 0. What we then get oh. is the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, which is just the identity matrix. That's not very interesting. So let's try setting D to negative 1 instead. In this case, the top right and bottom left conditions are already satisfied, so we just need at least yeah. one of B and C to be 0. Let's say we pick C to be 0. Then, in fact, having any integer for B would give us a leading self-inverse 2x2 matrix. In fact, we can use the same technique to expand the matrix to size 3x3, 4x4, and so on. At iteration m, let's say we want to expand it into an m by m leading self-inverse oh, matrix a m. The superscript denotes the iteration number. We have an m-1 by m-1 leading self-inverse matrix a m-1. Then a m would look like this where bm and cm are unknown vectors and dm is an unknown integer. Like in the 2x2 two two case where we multiply the 2x2 two two matrix by itself to get a system of equations that the unknown variables have to satisfy. Here, we multiply am by itself and set it equal to the identity matrix. We get four equations as before. Similar to the 2x2 two two case, from the first equation, we get that bm or cm has to be the zero vector. Then from the last equation, dm must be equal to plus or minus one. Now, let's say we choose c to be equal to zero. <laughs> then b just needs to satisfy the equation ab equals to negative db. This asks to find a non-zero b such that the matrix vector product ab is just a scaled version of b, where the scale factor is negative d. It turns out that this is possible, provided that in previous iterations, we have chosen a d that has the opposite sign of dm in the current iteration. The more such d's, the more freedom we have in choosing b. This suggests that a good idea would be to alternate the sign of d between iterations. So with this choice of d out of b and c, we have quite a bit of freedom in choosing one of them, while the other has to be zero. Through this, we can extend an m-1 by m-1 leading self-inverse matrix into an m by m leading self-inverse matrix. Since this process works for all positive integers m, we're able to construct arbitrarily large leading self-inverse matrices. There is, however, one problem. We are interested in leading self-inverse matrices because we want to use them to construct our diffuse conlang, and for that, we need the matrix to be dense, or else the concepts will not be diffused across the whole utterance. However, yeah. from our construction, we found it's that each time we expand the matrix, basically. The what? Yeah, so this is basically just, it's just the upper triangle that is actually interesting. The rest is just the, on the diagonally of alternating minus ones and ones, on the lower triangle is just zeros. So this is currently still mostly ones and zeros. I see, I see. Okay, let's see what happens. The matrix, either B or C, has to be completely zero. This means that at the very least, around half of the entries of the matrix have to be zero. That's mm, not very dense. There we go. So a dense leading self-inverse okay. matrix does not exist. This is very unfortunate, <laughs> but we still do have to come up with a dense matrix as the base matrix of our conlang. What we can do is, instead of the base matrix being just a leading self-inverse matrix, we have it be a leading self-inverse matrix times its transpose, the matrix flipped across its diagonal. This way, the base oh, okay. matrix can be made dense, and it will okay, still be easy to laugh? invert any truncated matrix. If A is a self-inverse matrix, then the inverse of A transpose A is simply A A transpose. Remember, our goal is just to have the base matrix be easily invertible. We'll also multiply by negative 1 just to spice things up. So mm. M is equal to negative A transpose A for some leading self-inverse matrix A. So let's decide on a matrix A. 
For simplicity, each time we expand the matrix, we'll always choose C to be the zero vector, and B will alternate between plus one and minus one, starting with plus one. Now, we just need to find what the resulting bleeding self-inverse matrix A would be. It turns out that we can indeed... The what? <laughs> No, it, it does not alternate, alternate because one between one and minus one because it's modular. I think that makes sense now. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. You find a closed form expression for A is equal to D plus D times B times the inverse of I minus two inverse B, where D is the diagonal matrix with alternating plus one and minus one on the diagonal, and yeah. I is the identity matrix. The derivation is on the screen if you want to take a look at it. The matrix B in this equation is what we can okay, use pause. to choose the values of B um, in each. Yeah. Some people will not get that reference. Let's go back. The, the the truly marvelous uh i is the identity matrix the derivation oh, is yes, this one um th does anyone get this reference uh, no i don't know um, there's this thing called fermat's last theorem which is very famous it states that for uh that the equation what was it a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n has no solutions for n greater than two and there was this mathematician called Pierre de Fermat who lived in, I think, the uh, 17th century. Is that right? Uh, yeah, 17th century. And uh, he wrote that something to the extent of, I have discovered a truly marvelous proof of this, but unfortunately the margin of this page is too small to contain oh. it. <laughs> and the theorem was proven some... 350 years later very recently i think in like 2000 or 1990 something or 2000 like it's like only a few <laughs> decades ago where people were able to prove this thing actually and the proof is very much complicated and used techniques that were very much not available for mars time so either he truly had some marvelous proof or he was simply just uh uh <laughs> trolling <laughs> and waving yeah yeah so that's a reference to that okay all right on it, on all right I have I have a truly marvelous proof. Can I see it? Apparently they actually no. do have a proof though and they've linked it in in the description. <laughs> Can I see it? No. <laughs> Alright. Well, there, anyway. there is a link in the description, so uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. in this case this is a truly marvelous proof we can see. There you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> it's on the screen if you want to take a look at it. The matrix B in this equation is what we can use to choose the values of B in each iteration. We are free to choose any integer for each of the marked entries of B, and A will still be leading self-inverse. For our base matrix, we'll simply set all of these entries to be 1. And what does A look like then? Well, it looks like this. And if we multiply A transpose with A and take the negative, then we get the base matrix, which is indeed now quite dense. So now great. we can finally start constructing our language. To recap what we've done in the previous Holy section, crap. our idea for a cursed conlang is to have each concept in the language be diffused throughout the entire utterance. To achieve this, we needed to construct a base matrix, which is an infinite matrix over integers modulo p. A property we needed to have is that we can systematically truncate it such that the truncated matrix is guaranteed to be invertible. By using generalized results from linear algebra, it turned out that such a matrix is possible if we always truncate it into a square matrix and the modulus p is a prime number. We then try to construct a base matrix that is dense and has the property that I call leading self-inverse, which will make it very easy to invert. It turned out to be impossible to make it dense, so we set up with a base matrix that is a product of a leading self-inverse matrix with a flipped version of itself. What we need to do left is to fill in the phonology, vocabulary, and grammar of our conline. But before that, we have to first talk a bit about history. The Tang Empire, which spanned much modern-day China, was at its peak in around the 8th century, and it had a huge cultural influence on all of East Asia. This influence, of course, extends also to the language, Late Middle Chinese, which was the language spoken at the time in its capital, Jiang'an. The literary language of classical Chinese, read using Middle Chinese pronunciations, spread across East Asia, becoming the lingua franca of the region and loaning large amounts of vocabulary into nearby languages such as Early Middle Japanese, Middle Korean, Old Vietnamese. Yeah, really. <laughs> what a yeah. tangent we dove into for this. <laughs> but first, we need to talk about the Tang Empire. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love it. <sighs> Vietnamese and other contemporary Sinaitic languages. However, it's a little known fact that the influence of Middle Chinese was able to spread through time and space all the way to Northwestern Europe well into the 20th century. One of the languages most heavily influenced is Dutch which has an estimated 50% no. of vocabulary borrowed from Middle Chinese, comparable to Japanese true. and Korean. For example, one such loan- Oh no! Chamil was- <laughs> No! No! 
I think I've seen this before, oh, before which has a lot about it. Oh, what Estimated 50% Germanic, 30% Tamil, 50% bit of Chinese. God, this is this. I, okay, we, I can't talk about this too much, but this rivals our pie chart, if you know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, when talking about Agnes, this rivals that one. It You'll does. see that one eventually in the video. It does, it does. We, we have a good. truly glorious pie chart, and this one comes close. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, it's, God. Let's continue see, the video. You'll see I, let's just see where this goes. Yeah. And the vocabulary borrowed from Middle Chinese, comparable to Japanese and Korean. For example, <laughs> one such loan is the word Shweshok, meaning mathematics, which displays the native word Vishkunde. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, that's because we'll be using Sino-Dutch readings of early Middle Chinese syllables as the syllables of our conduct. Because Middle Chinese has strict formal tactics, the phonology of Khopjam will be given by the correspondences to the initials, finals, and tones of the syllables of early Middle Chinese. Middle Chinese syllables are given using the Baxter Sagak transcription. So here are the Sino-Dutch pronunciations of the 37 initials. And the 102 finals. Ah, you can read it yourself. There are also four tones. However, since Dutch is non-tonal, they have undergone various changes. The level tone became a non-stressed syllable in Dutch. Kiang. <laughs> the rising tone became a stressed syllable, denoted with acute accents. Pai. The departing tone in oh Dutch God. is not a tone, rather it became an S. Yais. And the Czech tone is also not a tone, but it makes the final consonant a voice to stop. Nvot. The mapping between numbers and syllables will be done with the help of the Guangyun, the rhyme dictionary of early Middle Chinese published in the year 1008. If we have a number n, then we map it to the nth syllable that appears in the Guanghyun. Yeah, However, there are only 3,874 syllables in the Guanghyun, which is not a prime number. The next prime number is 3,877. Fortunately, in this CSV file of Guanghyun syllables I found, <laughs> there are three extra syllables for a few readings not in the Guanghyun. So, numbers 1 to 3874 will map to syllables in the Guanghyun, and the extra syllables will correspond to numbers 0, 3875, and 3876. Furthermore, since classical Chinese has a morpheme to syllable ratio, of around 1, the vocabulary can also be derived from classical Chinese. We simply do the reverse. For each concept, we find a Han character with that meaning in classical Chinese and see which place its pronunciation comes in the Guangyun, and that is its concept number. This also means that early Middle Chinese homophones will have the same concept number, and you're absolutely right. I have a question right. about this then. Yeah. Does this make the language a Creole of sorts? A kind? I think, I think it definitely qualifies for a posteriori. I think it does, yeah. <laughs> Which is a rather horrid considering it's a creole of Middle Chinese and Dutch. Middle Chinese and Dutch. See how it connects to linear algebra yet? Bubbling was losing it. I'm sorry, I'm so scared of where this is going. Okay, let's. Let's see, let's see. Oh. Now onto the grammar. Many theories <laughs> of syntax use binary syntax possible. trees to represent the structure yeah. of sentences, but since this language has no word order, that's not possible here. So what we'll be using is case trees, where each concept in a sentence <laughs> is placed on the node of a binary tree. There are four main rules. First, to have a concept modify another concept, place the modifier on the child node of the modified concept. You might call this head up case order. By default, what this conveys is that the head concept is related to the modifier concept, so any concept can be a child of any other concept. For verbs, arguments of a verb are treated as modifiers of the verb, so they are placed in the child nodes of the verb node. Second, if we want there to be more than two modifiers, we place a null concept with constant number zero onto a child so node, and then put modifiers on the child nodes of the yeah, null concept. Much. This can be repeated to fit more modifiers. Third, for transitive verbs, the argument placed on the left child node is generally the agent, and the right child node is the patient. So for the example sentence, the cat eats the fish, eat is on the top, cat is on the left, and fish is on the right. Arguments can be dropped if you don't feel like saying them. For ditransitive verbs like I give a fish to the cat, the order of the child concepts from left to right will be I, the donor, fish, the theme, then cat, the recipient. For causal concepts such as because and according to, causality goes from the left child to the right child. 
Fourth, relative clauses can be created with the help of a relativizer concept, which has concept number negative one and is denoted by a triangle. This is best explained with an example. If we have the cat eats the fish, then the phrase the cat that eats the fish would be this. Cat is in the parent node, oh, and the cat eats the fish is a child tree, but with cat replaced with the relativizer concept. Similarly, oh, the tree man, for the fish sense. that the cat oh, eats will look so like this. You can also have yeah. the eating that the cat did to the fish, which would look like this. Okay, <laughs> now let's say we have a tree uh, yeah. of concepts, but where does case come in? Well, here's the fun part. We label the nodes of the tree with case numbers, starting from case number one for the root node, then layer by layer, we incrementally label the nodes from left to right, okay. including no and unused nodes. This is done until all That's concepts have been labeled clever. and we get yeah, a concept yeah. case pair for each node. Mm -hmm. This procedure guarantees that there are no repeat case numbers and it's possible to reconstruct the case tree just from the concept case pairs. An equivalent procedure is to start with case one for the root node and for each occupied node, if the node has case number n, then label its left child as 2n and its right child 2n plus 1. I find that this tends to be easier That's to execute. Yes. So to translate yeah. into the language, we represent That's ideas nice. using a binary case tree. And with the node labeling procedure, we get the concept case pairs. From that, we construct the summary vector and multiply it by the base matrix to get the sentence vector. We can then convert it into Middle Chinese syllables using the Guanghyun. These are written uh, in their Dutch orthography, or with Han characters, and we yes, pronounce them the using choice. their Sino-Dutch pronunciations. The whole process can be reversed to translate out of the language. To automate part of this process, I wrote a Python script to convert between concept case yeah, pairs and the corresponding language. syllables in Dutch orthography yeah, and an IPA. This can be sense. found in the Git repo linked in the description. Oh, so yeah. now if I enter the endonym of Middle Chinese... Okay. Holy crap. Uh, <laughs> it works. It's this gonna... is... It is actually, it is a language because it's reversible, because the matrix yeah. is invertible. Yeah, you can just invert the matrix. It, this, this motherfucker invented syntaxless syntax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So so many so many after all these one way operations, we finally see what it takes to make like a cryptographic but like decipherable. Yes, it's actually invertible. <laughs> it's actually invertible. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> oh god. All right, it should be good now. But <laughs> get out is Hopjam which is the name of the language. Now, let's see just how cursed oh this God. language is. Keep in mind that the hold language on, itself on, only on, consists on. of the sino Yeah. What was the name of the language again? Goktiam. No, no, what it means. Uh... So just the... the Index cur... Comment is probably the meaning, or...? I don't know. Agma, you, you know, what do those characters stand for? Uh, Come on. Uh, uh... Uh, uh, it's been too long. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. If, yeah, yeah, no, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, that, that bottom one looks really specific. So, um, it's, it's, uh, if you look at the comments, it's exactly that. This is how you write in traditional Chinese, how you write Chinese, the language. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So the, it literally means Chinese in in. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Anyway. Now let's see just how cursed this language is. Keep in mind that the language itself only consists of the Sino-Dutch pronunciations and the two writing systems. Everything else is just for constructing the language. So first, a demonstration on the language. The example sentence, according to the laws of aviation, bees are able to fly, translated into Hopjam is Yais Gauss Grass Dry Jus Sick Miaus. If we change bees to birds, we get instead Deng Mais Bees Vies Quok Juxi. Because of the fusion, every syllable is different between the two sentences. Conversely, if we mispronounce the sentence, say we pronounce the last syllable Miaus with a level tone Miao, then it becomes something along the lines of the witty and deep sickle kneels in warm milk running frantically. <laughs> okay, let's look at another sentence. Its fat little body gets off the ground. <laughs> we want to change this after our first sentence. We don't simply say the two sentences one after another. Rather, we connect the case trees of the two sentences together into a single case tree. And we get this. <laughs> or, according Hold on, what? <laughs> what are you doing fucking food? 
playing with you. You tried to jump to one fucking market. Every time, everyone's cheating. Yeah, that's the point of it, yeah. That's why, you see how the, the title of the language says the unglossable language. This is why, because you can't, no one thing can be split into anything that is linguistically this, meaningful. This is. So, oh my fucking god. You cannot Holy gloss crap, this. You, this entire sentence means this but if you no, ever that's made not a single typo don't map to it if you ever made a single typo the entire thing would just completely yeah. be destroyed completely different sentence a valid it, sentence but no, a completely it's, it different go, it sentence. looks like it it looks like it goes beyond sentences it looks like it's almost paragraph oh, level. they're combining two sentences for this thing like yeah, yeah. So, oh so my like, fucking everything god you, everything you say has to be perfect <laughs> Mm -hmm. I sign out Dutch. All right. I, I, I sign out Dutch. Continue the shit. Let's see the rest I, I of knew this. I knew we. I, I see the rest of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Okay. According to the laws of aviation, bees influence. are able to. Yeah, it's obviously. Yeah, the Tamil. Yeah, it's, it really shines there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. Fly. Its fat little body gets off the ground. This is, again, completely different from saying the two sentences separately. There are two things at play here. One, by combining the case trees, the case of each concept is changed. And two, because of diffusion, each concept is diffused across all of the syllables and utterance. Because of the grammar of the language, all concepts have cases, even verbs and grammatical words. Case in this language functions more like word order in natural human languages. Some more consequences of the language being diffused. One, it's not really clossable. Like, in the utterances earlier, if you just look at a single syllable, it's hard to even fathom what it means. Which is not to say it doesn't convey information, it certainly does but I'm just unable to wrap my head around what information it conveys. It's like asking uh -huh. what the phoneme H means in English. It certainly yeah. conveys some information, but it's very, very hard to describe it. A consequence of this is that you can't really make a dictionary between this language and the natural human language in the sense of mapping between finitely sized concatenations of phonemes. The best you can do to get a finitely sized dictionary is to map morphemes to concept numbers, provide a formula for the base matrix, and provide a conversion chart from syllable numbers to syllables. Furthermore, I'm not even sure how to analyze the morphemes in this language. You can either think of each syllable as a morpheme, whose meaning is almost impossible to represent in English, or you can think of each morpheme as an infinitely long array of underlying phonemes with incredibly <laughs> complicated rules for combining phonemes from different morphemes into the resulting phonetic realizations. Oh but enough mm -hmm. of that. It's time for what you've all been waiting for. The opening lines of the B-movie in Hop Jiang. I'm Kat, and thanks for watching. Oh my god. Those aren't actually the first lines of the B-movie, because the entire rest of the B-movie are changed. Yeah, exactly. You have to have the oh, entire B-movie script in there, or else it's grammatically incorrect. It's not necessarily grammatically incorrect, I don't think, but just a it completely would, different would, yeah, sentence. Yeah, that's true. It would be, it would yeah. be an entirely different sentence, that entire yeah, yeah, yeah. script. So... What's very interesting about this is that, semantically, this has basically reduced morphemes to the level of individual phonemes. Yeah. Because just like phonemes don't carry meaning, in fact, you can't even call them morphemes because they don't even convey meaning. There is no such thing as a morph. This language is morpheme-less, basically. They're morphs. They're just morphs. <laughs> Morphs, no morphemes. <laughs> no, <Morphine>. yeah, <laughs> there is no smallest unit of meaning. Only the entire it's... thing at once has meaning. Yeah, you exactly. cannot. It's again, it's unglossable. I guess. I guess you could. This language this, yeah, has that, no. Yeah. That it doesn't have no morphemes. It just has one. Each sentence is its own morpheme. It's a morpheme. Yes. Each that's utterance is its own morpheme. Yeah. Yes. Monomorphemic utterances. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. So in order to speak this language too, the speaker would need to have their entire utterance from start to finish, no matter how many yeah. sentences it is, planned from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you make That's one which mistake. Which is, well, yeah. I think it's needless to say that whoever speaks this language does not have anything remotely similar to what humans would call a mind. <laughs> or maybe not to what humans would call a mind, but nothing remotely similar to a human mind can speak this language. Yeah, honestly.
Good God. Yes. Um, I, I'm giving this shit a perfect score. I, I, yeah, I, so, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, I confirm with this one. Honestly, Jesus fucking Christ, like, I can't for really. Creativity. Is anything more cursed than making a language that fundamentally fails at being a language in such a perfect manner? <laughs> like, this language cannot be used to communicate. Like, in, <laughs> at the it's same impossible. time, it's still completely reversible yeah, if you exactly. know how to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the only like, one yeah. that's still reversible. It, it is successfully <laughs> reversible. All the other ones that do things anywhere remotely similar to this are mm -hmm. one-way operations that can't come back the other way. But this one can. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> and even just, just stylistically, in terms of execution of the language itself... Exactly. Every single other video that has been, or every single other comlang that has been created for this contest has gone out of its way to be as complicated as possible. Uh -huh. This is a language that takes a concept that it wants to roll with and tries to make it as simple as possible. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. this is the Already. simplest way yeah. to make the language that has been displayed to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just saying, Any, not, only, it's, it's, not only is this a fantastic cursed conlang, this would be like a good method for like sending secret messages and wars and stuff. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, like, yeah, this like is, if we're, this we're is World cryptography War III, based. Like... <laughs> this is pretty much how cryptography works. You have a key, you encrypt a message with that key, and only people with a key, in this case, the key being the base matrix, can decrypt it. This is basically exactly how cryptography works. Yep. Holy crap. Yes. Board record. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, there's a comment on the. Uh, uh, maybe I'll say that when the recording has resumed. Actually. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, the recording's back on, so we're we're back. Oh, uh, so there's a comment on the Roptium video that says uh, English. Oh, I misspelled a single letter. I'll probably be okay. Roptium. My jam is ugly and sweaters will fly on Mars. <laughs> it's true though. Yeah. <laughs> Also, the one below is brilliant. The, the most <laughs> cursed thing is that you're throwing away any humanities major who wants... Throwing to... any humanities major, Agma, you can't read. You're throwing any humanities major who wants to study this into having to take pure math as a prerequisite. <laughs> yeah, this is quite something. Oh, man. So good. So very good. All right. Anyway, sorry to anyone who has to follow that, but who knows? Let's see what Jestish by want hildis is yes yeah. let's find out <clears throat> hello everybody and welcome to ha huh. this is my submission <laughs> for agma schwa's cursed conlang circus number two the language as called here is he he uh, also called jestish uh, it is a language spoken by Jesters are uh, both ancient and sense. new. That, that uh, the fair. language is known demonymically as <laughs> It's called Jesters <laughs> oh, by no, the scholars that's of studying and learning <laughs> it. It is spoken by the ancient Jesterine <laughs> Jester people, now known as modern-day comedians. It sounds like human laughter. It has 16 consonants, oh. divided into typicals, breaths, and getting and vibes. Typicals and yeah. breaths being divided into an ingressive, <laughs> egressive dichotomy. Oh, there are oh, eight vowels and 14 that. diacritics oh. of tone, quality, and length, which can be combined in a variety of ways. And there is one glide consonant, a snort vowel. Oh, God. <laughs> While it is technically a consonant, uh, it is different enough and behaves like a vowel to the point where I didn't group it as part of the other 16. Uh, so in total, there are 17 consonants. Gesturine anthropology. Oh, the ancient God. Gesturine hail from oh, Denmark, no. with records confirming their presence in the area <laughs> from at least the 11th century. Though some written accounts reference their existence from as early as the 6th century. Wild jesters were known to have naturally <laughs> colorful jesters. skin, believed to be from their diets, as, as domesticated jesters were known to go gray. It's related to the colorful your clown parts of the skin were tougher with. and more leathery than their paler, pinker <laughs> face and hand skin. Um, Ancient Jesterian were known to somewhat resemble humans, though characteristically their jaws were fused together in a permanent toothy <laughs> smile, more like a grimace or a rictus. The history of the evolutionary process in which their jaws gradually began to unlock and they gained full articulation is missing, <clears throat> though it is presumed that it was potentially a, an evolution or adaptation gradually occurring to allow them to speak human languages and not just um, early Jestish. 
and as a result, actually, their language changed as mm. well, because originally in uh, proto uh they only had their one sort of consonant, which was through the teeth, but as their mouths uh, opened up, they actually gained new consonants, like oh and, and oh things like no. that. Oh, <laughs> Because their jaw... Male gesturine had uh, hip pieces uh, that... For some of them were horns, while for others were floppy bits of flesh and cartilage. Oh, These God. were called hit oh, and they weren't covered no. in skin, so they weren't just dangling and fleshy. But, yeah. um, during mating season, parts of these hit tails would swell up and make a jingling sound when moved around. Uh, oh, it wasn't no. just the hit tails, by the way. They would um, also swell uh, into like these baubles on their feet and on other parts of their skin. And their, actual, mm. their faces would also actually flush, and they'd look like they were blushing. Uh, it's believed that this was that it was to attract um, a jester mate um, and they would dance and like m call attention to themselves when doing this as a display jesterine did not go extinct they evolved to look more human for some reason and are now known by a different taxonomical descriptor comedians <laughs> jesterine are also more intelligent than humans though i wouldn't give them that credit the consonants in I'm, I'm just imagining like Jerry Seinfeld with these like fleshy head tail appendages. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like on his stage with the music in the background. <laughs> oh god. Anyway. <laughs> and Jestish are m n n t k. Oh god, the fricative series. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, consonant blends are. Of course, it's there. <laughs> oh God. It's like free aspirate stops and. Yeah. Nasal Africans and regular Africans. <laughs> Uh. Okay. <laughs> uh, while that uh, sound is represented with a glottal stop, it is more accurate to have it be a uh, sound that you'd force out like that. And the um, velopharyngeal trill, the uh, is always ingressive and is not strictly a consonant as it behaves like a vowel. The vowels <laughs> in oh, uh, gestish are e, u, a, e, a, a. <laughs> Okay. Uh, is all uh, and the diacritic is uh, in tone we have low which is making that noise right the what it, it's basically snort it's like basically snorting right yeah um, uh, it, it, it yeah. says velar velo velar fringe pharyngeal ingressive trill yeah that you gotta you gotta trill trill your snort while you're making like an f with your teeth and lip and Ung uh, with your tongue, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Falling, which is a uh. neutral, which is a uh. oh god, the rising, tongues. which is a uh. uh. high, which is a uh. and highest, which is <laughs> quality. We have creaky, uh, screaming, ah, crying, <laughs> dry, uh, <laughs> dubious. <laughs> Uncomfortable. Why is there no symbol uh, for, for length, we have long, which is ah. Uh, <laughs> overlong, which is ah. Uh, super long, which is ah. Uh, sharp, which is ah. Uh, and if it's unmarked, no, uh, it's just ah. Uh, normally. Yeah. Oh. Labels are below the Oh, gotcha, letters. gotcha. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, excuse me. All right. Uh, grammar and syntax. There are two grammatical genders, uh, neuter and feminine. There are eight cases, vocative, nominative, accusative, genitive, instrumental, and ablative. Gotcha. There are four grammatical numbers, singular, dual, trial, plural. Egressive, ingressive rhythm structure called the veins structure. Ugh. Diacritical oh, no. notation, uh, which Ugh. is syntactic and uh, morphological, so veins? it changes meaning and changes words. <laughs> and it's typically an OSV structured language. The veins structure. Veins is an acronym standing OSV, for vowel, egressive, uh... ingressive, consonant and stem <laughs> the abiding structure of all gestish words follows veins in the fashion of um, parentheses v parentheses n close parentheses close parentheses e v e v e v e v i v parentheses n although longer words will often have i n or i v infixed between any e v within the pattern of breathing e v e v e v e v would be ha 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 plus i v would be ha 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 if we have a V at the beginning, <laughs> oh, we have no. a, ha, 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 ha. If we have an N at the beginning instead of a V, we get ha, 
ha, ha, ha. Dear God. Or if we have that N at the end instead, <laughs> ha, 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 ha. If we have a VN at the beginning and an N at the end, this is going to be that gives terrifying. Us, uh, ha, 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 ha. But this generally doesn't happen as when you're actually laughing at it, um, it's very strenuous on the on breathing. Um, and so you'd instead <laughs> do a VN, EV, EV, IV, EV, EV, IV, N. Ah, uh, hmm, ha, 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 hmm. V and why, N are types of scams in certain morphosyntactic with an and infectional N. circumstances. <laughs> oh, veins. All examples of the veins pattern above okay, ignore the fact. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. But N can be ingressive too, in those cases where more oh, context is required. Like the audio, can be pause. I... Need to pause for longer, the audio is... I see, I see. It's degrading it's again. It's done the thing. It's done the thing. This is this is gonna be terrifying as uh, like in, in its final form. I uh, I can just tell. <laughs> yep. <laughs> veins. The fact that it's called the veins structure. That is yeah. Good that's, God. <laughs> that's a cursed vocabulary term right there. Yeah. All right. I think we should be good to go in. Hopefully. In. E N or suffix N I N E. And as an addendum, N is in reference to consonants, which are either solids or breaths. So, n m or. Whereas E and I are in reference to typicals, which are all of the ha sounds. And no, the breaths and the has are not the same. These are <laughs> the pronouns in gestish. If you want to look at them, pause and read. But here they are. Oh, you might notice that there is a pedge by the other table. That is because those are pejorative pronouns. Um, and the plural <laughs> is a null because um, it's considered pejorative or rude to not address people when you're around them in the language. The jesters are an incredibly social species with an instinctive urge to form groups with one another. These groups, once formed, become very exclusive and even themselves contain varying levels of uh, levels and forms of in-groups. Jestish therefore makes a huge distinction over in- and out-groups and thus makes use of multiple sets of pronouns from familiar to derogative. Depending on familiarity, two or more jesterine may insult one another with it being interpreted as a bonding and social activity. Whereas a stranger <laughs> to the group, if insulted or should they do the insulting, would have it be considered the utmost of social disrespect. Jesterine do not respect anything non-jester. Pronouns mm. continued. Uh, <laughs> these are the offensive moment. and derogative yeah, exactly. pronouns. Uh, and with inoffensive pronouns, the reason for so many nulls is because the jesters think it is more offensive to not refer to someone when they are clearly there. Even so, it is considered more offensive to acknowledge only one person when they are within a group. The derogative and offensive pronouns are so offensive that they break the rules of jestish to facilitate such scathing rudeness. <laughs> uh, pronouns continue to be possessives. Uh, these possessives all correspond with derogative pronouns. No other possessive forms have been discovered. This is the inflectional patterning of uh, nouns and adjectives in gestures. Ugh. Cases have yeah, both uh. infixes and oh. uh, suffixes, but only the suffix is always used when declaring case, a longer vein structured word. Um, <laughs> there will be an infix as well. There's also number and adjectives. They share the same case stems as um, nouns do, but have different number stems. We are missing the inflection for negatives, uh, so the less and un words, but the inflection is the exact same as it is for verbs. And the way it goes is number, noun, possessive, case. Number is mandatory and adjectives agree with their nouns. Or number, noun, case, adjective, pos, case. Verbs. These are the varying inf um, inflectional f conjugations that happen to verbs. As we could see, the bottom there, negative, it's the same for nouns too. Uh -huh. When verbs are in any non-infinitive tense, they must have the correct pronoun also. So basically, if you're saying the bee flies, you'd say the bee he flies or the bee it flies. Gotcha. When verbs are in any non-infinitive tense, they must have the correct pronoun. Uh, the way verbs um, form is pronoun, mood, verb, and tense. The sample text. Uh, the original text is, according to all known laws of aviation, there is no way that a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, oh flies God. anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Yeah, exactly. And here's the translation. It is missing all of the... Uh. Um, all of the tones because I wasn't able to make them in time, no, but, but um, um, I do have a book w with the tones on me, so <sighs> let's have a go. And also, I'm not an ex- I am, as much as I know about the language, I am not perfect <laughs> at the pronunciation of the tones, um, so I will make mistakes, and no, I will not correct them. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nope. This> <laughs> good God. <laughs> uh. 
I think uh, I think we can see what this sounds like a little bit more. Fluid. Yes, at two times speed. Let's that would it. be brilliant. Oh God. <laughs> it sounds like someone trying to like fake their laughter. Like, <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful stroke. Which, um, is the glass, and it literally means it is apparent according to flying stuff. <laughs> Lord, be. Be sure to fly not. Both wings too small to lift its fuzzy body off the ground. Be it flies regardless. Being bees cannot as to what humans they believe to be not possible. I have messed up that translation text. I was adding more ingressives, I think, but you should get the picture. Uh, this is a follow-up recording to uh, just say thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope that um, you enjoy the rest of the conline circus. Um, and if anyone wants me to do a deeper exploration of jestish and the jesterine, um, I would be happy to do so. Um, maybe I'll even retry the sample text at some point. But that's all for me. My name is Wand Hildis, or Hilda. Thank you for watching. Beautiful. This Beautiful. is, yeah, um... <laughs> this is so. a labyrinth dig in Danish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, what's this? Wow, I totally just picked up all these Angma Schwa themed stickers right off the floor. How did they get there? Oh, they came from the Redbubble shop. That's right. Not only will stickers like these be included in the prizes for the winners of the Curse Conlang Circus this year, but there's a bunch of stickers, like a bunch more stickers than this, that are there on the Redbubble and on Spread Shop. There's shirts and hats and water bottles and everything that you could think of. I don't really get much money out of it at all. In fact, to this day, I still have gotten like pretty much 25 cents total off of any of these merch shops, but I just like the idea that someone could potentially have one of these like on their water bottle or something. So if, if you're interested, why don't you, why don't you hop on down to that concession stand in this circus ring uh, that, that is the description, just like all these things. Yeah, go to the description again, and there should be a link to uh, maybe the red bubble, maybe the spread shop, maybe all of it. Why not? You like it? You want a you want a big Nga logo posted on your shirt? There's Nga logo shirts. You want to wear a hat that says Checkmate Prescriptivists with the little troll face from my minimum phoneme video? There it is. It's right there for you. Just waiting. Just waiting to be to to be scooped up by your greasy little hands. Uh, I mean, do 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 do. Circus, circus, back to the circus. All right, uh, cool. Next one, next one oh, is Pogsmzebdom, or however you pronounce oh, Polish that, or various Slavic languages. Well, if it's AZ, like, okay, no, in, in Czech it would be R uh, with a... Yeah. Uh, with a... with what, Agma? Do you oh know? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. It would be a... come on, come on. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. I freaking forgot the word for the other one. What's happening? It's 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 a tip of the tongue thing. Oh it's, my it's god! The, it's so the I one that's you. not a macron. It's one, one is a, a macron. circumflex. The there other one is a Karen. There you go. It's a circumflex, right? Right? No, it's no. a Karen. God. Good God! Now you this incompetent of that. Oh my god! Oh my god! They're the same freaking. Uh... <laughs> okay. No, a circumflex is vastly more common than a Karen. Okay. Just like an acute, just okay. like an acute is vastly more common than a grave. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Let's see what the the F language is. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, hello, bonsoir, my fellow monkeys. Uh, yeah, I am a bit late to this. Uh, the only reason why I'm doing this now and not when I said I was going to is because I got ill with COVID, and also I had to go back to school. And now that I'm in year eleven, I have to do all my GCSEs, and it's really annoying. So I didn't have much time to actually uh, work on excuses, this. So, excuses, excuses. Yeah, inhumane science represents here for, and its sister language, Kolk. So. Yeah, let's just get in. Okay. This. Uh, phonology, or, or also oh known as, God. or F, is. Uh, good God. Death? 
<laughs> it's just death. Mm. <laughs> F and mm. F sharp and then death. And the shut up stop also another stand off. Yeah, about I really love respects. Not. And oh, then yeah. we've also yeah. got the Oh god, it might actually be and... <laughs> F to oh. pay respect. <laughs> and our final note, no. the well not note, but our oh, final no. sort of analogy thing is Yeah. <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> that sounds Technology better than what I thought. It is for a normal blast stop and extended blast stop and the manual percussion, which is, well, pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. The orthography is pretty nice. Uh, F has mostly colors for it and, well, while it doesn't, it just has some other stuff. You know? <laughs> okay. The only ones that don't change are just standard F. Look at and, the freaking F know, with the, the curls F, going no, over F sharp it. and the bomb. But, you know, the bomb is when you die, or the head explodes, because oh, I made sure bomb. that they can't talk okay. about anything. Oh, God. Well, they can't think too big. <laughs> Did you they think die. it was? Because why would you want to think? I, I, I thought it was, like, bomb. some really simplified representation of, like, the bite of 87 or something. I don't know. Oh, I, my I just, God. I, just, I, I, I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> was that the bite of 87? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, just because of that sound. But anyway, anyway language and words when if you do you die <laughs> why not just make it simpler <laughs> you know oh yeah this is the uh, when agma oh, released it also hello agma this. nice seeing you Hi. Uh, i'm hey, how's it late going? if you can tell um but yeah when you release I'm this right on the day i made this called the agma schwa cct p2 dick writing segment <laughs> no, where i just wanted to really get something featured in yeah, here the so that's why i added some things like um which is to um practically feel like a rock and to <laughs> And also, uh, oh my god, okay, okay, which is to ride a rock, okay, a hunt. Okay, not a lot of hunts, okay. it's a mystery, uh -huh, but a horse. Uh -huh. I, I see horse. how it is. I see how it now, is. Now, if you look really carefully, I've made a few mistakes on here. If you can spot them, uh, you win no money, uh. you're poor. I'll give you like <laughs> okay. 5p or something in American money. Go. I don't know, one quarter eaten Taco Bell bean burrito, I guess. I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, here's the cool F gang, all the people that have contributed to this absolute hellhole <laughs> of language that existed. Up and so, this is down. practically some of the worst. So, we have, oh god, oh fuck, or. <laughs> These are some of the people from our Discord, eh? Uh, when I was window. making this, well, when yeah, this yeah. would be made, a uh, person who's known as, well, back then was known as ChatGPT has now changed their name. So, this is technically the names are wrong, but whatever. Next one is Chat GPT bro, which is one of the members, GPT, it's not the literal AI. Was, yeah. Which yeah. is <laughs> in case you were wondering. And finally, well not technically finally because we still have like two others, but it's to never get if someone up nor let them down. Um which is Dear God. And finally to ruin one's image, which is really hard to say. <laughs> it's which just is... like barely audible. <laughs> <laughs> which was made by Chat GPT. The other one was never get someone up is by uh Ms. Geek. I'm not, I don't know how to say the first part. And also the final one to sound like an automobile oh. book or an automobile engine oh, is... Oh god. How nice. Now here are some basic verbs in both F and Q. Uh. I'm just going to ignore all because it's just going to be a whole bunch of silence for like a good bit. Oh so, god. Let's go. If you've noticed, F doesn't have a lot of verbs. They're all kind of short. So how's words made? Combining. Combination. Combustion? No. You just fuse some verbs together with some nouns and some other stuff in it to make it seem more logical. It's not logical. But whatever. So our verbs are, which not is to, to eat or to drink. They're the same thing if you really think about it. But, yeah, really. You know, it's too late for this. So yeah. Next one is, <laughs> which is sleep, which is something that I need. And you got just the run, which is to write, which is well, to read, <laughs> talk. Come on there. Uh, I have to. Gonna have to on on and, the advertiser friendly options. I'm gonna have which to is to play occasional sexual love, and, references. Which now. is means okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, the verb word order is, is uh that SVO, you have to you know, pretty common stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and the pronouns are well, with, with, the pronouns. Nah, with you instead nah. of having stuff like I, me, yeah, you, he, exactly. she, it, they, them, and all that, which is really convoluted. Oh. But, also, I think and we might be able to... The last one just means... No, the... Yeah, if you notice, it's also a noun, a verb, yeah. and a pronoun. Because, you know, we've also got that guy, Sungfist, Giga Chad, S speaker, and a non S speaker. What is a Sungfist? It's a misspelling of the word Sunfish. It's something that I made in maths when I was bored when I should have been paying attention. Okay. Uh, I failed the test. <laughs> hmm. And also, you can see the same thing with Glottal, where it has the Sigma Glottal speaker, the Giga Chad F speaker, the non F or Glottal speaker, and the Sigma, the Sigma Giga Chad F and Glottal speaker. I don't know what I was on when I was making this, but I guess I wasn't mentally okay. 
<laughs> our next word, our next ones are just a set of numbers, so I'm just gonna count them for you. They're all there for you to read. Oh yeah, F, uh, F plotl only has binary because why would we need to count anything more than zeros and ones? Said a computer. So, mm -hmm. but F uses base six because F is the sixth letter of the alphabet. So yeah. So the numbers are. F <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I see how it is. <laughs> So yeah, good, good set of numbers, I guess. And finally, oh, just, just this isn't the sort of thing for the B movie script. We'll get to that later. This is just something for you Americans out there, Agnes Schwal, whatnot. This is for you. <laughs> that is fact. It goes correct. What is it? What is it supposed to mean? <laughs> Is that supposed to be the gloss? <laughs> is the <laughs> is this supposed to be the uh... national anthem or something? It's like seventy percent silence. <laughs> Does the gloss so remind like, you of anything? Oh god! Oh fuck! Flee now! Object fuck f dash f. <laughs> what is happening? Agma, does that make any sense to you whatsoever? I just, I have this gut feeling that it's the national anthem because of the cursed little pixel flag above it. But I see, like, I don't know I have what no national idea. anthem is, so... I have no idea how this would translate to it, though. It... I see. <laughs> how long does this go for? Uh. Let's see how the, how we go fluent mode. Oh. This is rather mm. atrocious. It really is. It sounds like just paper sliding on a desk. <laughs> oh god, oh fuck, flee now. Object, talk, ff. <laughs> I don't even... How long does it go on for? Oh wait, it's my movie movie script. Oh god, oh, may, god. It, may whoever you believe in bless thy ears, because this is about to get really, really fucking oh, curse. My I, god. Sure. No? Oh, Good god. Moving on. So here it is. Six times in a row. I love how the F and the tone that Greg just meld together like a yeah. single letter. <laughs> I like how the color is part of the orthography. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, those... This isn't proper F, because the... The... Uh, uh, are supposed to be black, not white. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Ah, yeah. yeah. Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> How long do these sentences go on? Holy crap. The terrible mic quality really enhances the so experience. Yeah, in this case, it sits. Jesus Christ, I took a toll on me. Thank you for my submission and watching me pronounce a whole bunch of F's down the mic for 16 odd minutes, maybe 17. But, you know, thank you for oh, yeah. listening. Totally yeah, listen yeah. To the whole thing. Yeah. Um, just one last F word to go. And then I'm over. I can go to sleep, submit this, and then hope I win. Uh, yeah. <laughs> buzzing again. I mean, well, it's right almost now, over. There's not quite any part of yeah, it. I mean, it, it's it's four seconds. <laughs> you know. Let's yeah. resume, shall we? There you go. <laughs> Wait. I'm copying this Reddit link. Let's check out hey. this Reddit Ren. Ren. Oh yeah, judging. 
red. Oh yeah, that thing, Good the thing God. that we always do. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, we have a Reddit post. Oh, uh, this is. It's not a complete a... submission. Oh, it's a Google there's Doc. A video attached to it. It's a Google Doc. Um, but I mean, we you can, can still we can still that. look at it. Yeah. I can read this again. I've done before. Oh, oh this is a long doc. Yeah, this is a very long document. Um. I... Well, most of it is a dictionary, I suppose. Okay, yeah, it's mostly dictionary. Yeah. Okay, so we can... Shall I read this one, then? Yeah, feel free to narrate. Okay. And, uh, we... So, we have a language called what I suppose is maybe pronounced copy. If okay. we go by IPA. Um, copy is meant to be a challenge to myself and how much I can fit into phonology of only six sounds. Uh, yeah, we've seen that concept before, one of those, I think. Yeah. Another one of the minimalistic ones, yes. yes. Features from many other conlangs that I find interesting have been thrown into this one along with my own ideas that I think I need. I think any, every conlang is also familiar with this concept. Um, <laughs> the syllabary I use comes from... Patoka is that uh, I'm a bit. It's a bit embarrassing to ask, but is that a natlang or a conlang? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. I, I'm gonna I've never it. heard of it, so. But it's some language that they think is pretty cool. Look, the consonants are literally those sounds. So it's pa uh, ta ka and a uh, e o. Three consonants and three um... vowels. Did you find I any guess. evidence by bilingua? Uh, no, I found something completely unrelated. Oh, yeah, Patoka is <laughs> a minimalist calling. I assume that's what they're talking about. Okay, okay that makes sense. That makes that sense. Makes okay, sense. so syllable structure, it is strictly CV. Well, that makes sense, I suppose. Uh, Word roots can have a maximum of three syllables. Gotcha. That's pretty short. Yeah, stress really. is always ultimate. Main stress can be shifted by, re by reduplication. The ultimate stress becomes secondary. So let's calculate this for a second. If we have a maximum of three syllables, we have C, the, those are CV, CV, CV. We have three consonants, three vowels. So three possible sounds in, in every position. So there's three to the power of six possible words. And three to the power of six is, come on Google, 729 possible roots in this language. Wow. Yeah, Minilang, mm -hmm. certified Minilang. And it would seem they have a syllabary. If you could zoom in on this, maybe. Is it? Uh, well, I suppose these symbols there are supposed to be the syllabary. Oh, so yeah. So we have so... a assortment of lines, parentheses, a hyphen, a plus, a cross, and a circle. A rather scuffed circle, but still. More of an ellipsis, really. All right, let's 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 zoom out again, maybe. <laughs> Pronouns we have. Uh, it would seem three cases, if you can call them that: oblique, dative, and circumstantial. Okay. I have no clue what that is supposed to be, but maybe they'll go into that. Um, and apparently we have pronouns for I, you, and, and they, so we only, we have no gender distinction in the third person. Okay, uh, you scrolled past the paragraph there. Oh, there you go. In an interrogative sentence, uh, the third person becomes an interrogative pronoun, similar to Tokipona. Uh, Seme, I suppose, I do not know Tokipona. The yeah. word for person can also be used like one, as in one must know these things. Okay, that, that I suppose makes sense. Fair. Plurals are shown by reduplication. Oh god. So, uh, papa is we and coco is they. Oh, that's sort of the pronouns. Interesting. And you reduplicate the entire word, so taka becomes taka taka. Uh -huh. Okay? With three syllable nouns, repetition of the first two syllables is enough. I mean, <laughs> it would get a bit long otherwise. Uh, this is, I wonder if haplology would be a thing in this language. And haplology? because. Haplology is the array. If you have two adjacent syllables that are very similar, one of them is arrays. That's why people say library instead of library. <clears throat> so I wonder if that would affect it if you have literally four of the same syllable in a row. <laughs> Probably. And this will cause the main stress to shift to the second syllable, ultimately becomes secondary. That makes sense, I suppose. Uh, noun cases, cases shown by changing the last vowel. So for oblique, we have A. If both nouns are marked, verb is trans... Okay, I suppose that makes sense. Got it. Uh, dative is I. We do... Okay. Circumstantial is explained below, it would seem. Uh, adjectives. The language is head initial. The adjective slash adverb goes after what it modifies. That's what head initial means, yes. The ending of an adjective changes for superlative and diminutive forms. 
that are spelled as a diminutive, but no comparative, it would seem. Interesting. Uh, adjectives can also be used as intransitive verbs. So I suppose in this language, everything is absolute. There is no comparisons. <laughs> That's like the it. implication of like them not it. being comparatives. So we have this particle here, popo. All adjectives exist in their maximum state. That means every adjective except for true for true adverbs is always by default the furthest on a hypothetical scale and the use of this particle shifts it to the other end. Well, that is basically uh -huh. what I just uh, deduced or inferred rather from there not being a comparative. Um, it's nice to see that they thought about the consequences of there not being a comparative. Yeah, yeah. Because now you only have the That's extremes, basically. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of interesting. And this particle can be used on other non-adjective words. However, this is unnatural and is usually the result of someone forgetting a word and not knowing the right one to use. Okay. So bright can you can turn it into dark. That makes sense, I suppose. Noun conjuncts. Interesting. Uh, that's a Hebrew thing, I believe. Maybe, maybe I'm misremembering something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Hebrew. Sounds yeah, familiar. I'm pretty sure it is. It could it's, be it's wrong, a Semitic though. thing, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nouns can be used as descriptors for other nouns with the particle kiko. This marks a general ap a positive and can create possessive nouns that are kind of like the use of p in Tokyo. Again, I do not know Tokyo. Um, <laughs> we have this sentence here. Kapi, kapipa, ki... Uh, I, I forgot how the stress works. God damn it. Kiko, kapopa can mean either baristas or coffee enthusiasts. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So that are the people handing out the coffee or the people drinking it, or <laughs> sort of. Interesting. Uh, using this particle of verbs can create conflation if a noun is opposed, or concatenation if another verb is opposed. So we have two examples here that map to to be sleepy and to bat. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> gotcha. And the use of concatenation is rare and, and usually used when there is a lexical difference between a singular action and the state. Being sleepy doesn't necessarily mean you want to sleep. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Although it probably means you should. To express <laughs> that you want to sleep, you would put sleep in a subordinate clause while one serves as the main verb. Yeah, that's oh. basically like in English. Yeah, if yeah, I say yeah, I yeah, want yeah. to sleep, then that's this. I forgot what the name for that construction, but the thing with the two. Um... Aspect tense, they forgot commas. Uh, there's supposed to be a comma after aspect and, and after after tense. <laughs> Unless it's aspect tense, and that's one thing. Aspect is shown with a circumfix around the verb. We have a perfective, imperfective, habitual, and progressive aspect. And the, pro the progressive is the default. That is very unmarked, first. Okay. Unmarked progressive. <laughs> the progressive is the default. That is fascinating. Like Mood is shown with a that's suffix kind of for... Irrealis. If no aspect is present, use this circumflex. So, marked irrealis. I suppose I, they probably kind of meant fun. no mood or something, because otherwise that would contradict the fact that a progressive is unmarked. Yeah. They, I, unless they progressive is always, mood. unless progressive is always irrealis. <laughs> that, that, that would be, be quite horrid. horrid. That would be, kind of, be pretty curious. <laughs> Indeed, it I was that would be pretty Damn horrid. It. Yeah. You cannot express I mean, possessive actions other than to express the fact that these things don't exist or do not take place. So actual progressive, uh, progressive actions that, that yeah, it's... Because it's... who knows if it'll be finished? It's, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Who knows if it'll be completed? Is, is, it, uh, is it in the state of being finished and you just don't... The reality God. is... That's funny. Finished reality just, just doesn't exist. They cannot <laughs> yeah. conceive of it. Like some oh, secure war fever dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. I like it. Anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> Tense in copy points in both directions. What? Fascinating. I'm not sure oh? either it... I either well tense you could argue either it always does that it's always in one or if it points in both simultaneous that is pretty horrible let's let's keep reading oh I get it it is the aspect aspect can, kind of oh like... god oh no aspect <laughs> so can give further distance. context in which way it's pointing to but can also put the aspect's time frame in the future the only difference is made how close the action is will occur so we have a present tense a near to present oh. and a far from present so uh, if an so something 
have, having taken place in the far past and something that is going to take place in the distant future are expressed uh, in the same manner. Same and way. furthermore, you can also not express ongoing actions at all <laughs> unless they are actually not ongoing because they're irrealis. Okay. So you, you can you're express me. the hypothetical situation of some of an action being ongoing, but unless it's actually ongoing, because okay, then it wouldn't be hypothetical out. anymore. The, if we go with I the, think the, the in terms reality. of the tense analysis, yeah. then I feel like this is pretty similar to just kind of a deictic tense system, right? Yeah. You have yeah, proximal yeah, yeah, yeah. and distal in terms of time. Exactly. That's, I, I, that seems like pretty something much. that could occur in a nat language. In a way, like, I, mean, uh, I yeah, hope way, not, but yes, possibly. <laughs> Good God. We have, okay, we have some things with May. The, oh. Combined with the Irrealis marker, too, you could probably derive a sense of tense by doing, um, using the Irrealis marker the in addition to the sort of temporal dixis to refer to future tense. Uh, and you yeah, could sort of derive a past done. tense by um, not then you could derive the past tense by not using the irrealis, but using the temporal dixis. So you kind mm. of get some interesting machinery in which speakers would derive tenses from these mm -hmm. existing mechanisms. But then that's even worse with the progressive, which, because that means you can only <laughs> express the actions that will be ongoing in the future. <laughs> There are no. <laughs> There's How nothing happening currently. No, everything will happen at some point, but not now. It's... No. How we need to the talk about the present. Of how time passes and i imagine yeah. that philosophy of how time passes would also impact di different ways that they the kind of the semantics of the language works with just context and sequence of tense stuff like that completely mm -hmm. throws off a lot of that kind of core machinery of time passing linearly yeah Oh, God. Good God, that's beautiful. Okay, so on. This has some ones. really interesting mechanisms. Yeah, it is. yeah, and the consequences of this of this grammar is, are fascinating. Uh, yeah. We have another particle that can nest whole sentences and use them as nouns or for a relative clause. If necessary, the word kato can mark the end of a nested sentence because it's brackets in relative clauses. The pronoun <laughs> ko can be used as a placeholder in those nested sentences, I suppose. And we have kikoto, a contraction of kiko and koto, can be used to give further clarity if a subordinate clause is a relative clause. Well, this is not necessary if context is enough. The man who eats cats may have ran earlier. <laughs> or in the future, later. Or will run later. Oh, man. Because remember, <laughs> tense is deictic. Exactly. It's base six, of course it is. There's six, course, six right. sounds, of course, it's base six. <laughs> it doesn't have a zero. I mean, that makes sense. A lot of languages didn't get a zero until, like, a bit later. So yeah. zero is not that primitive. Of, it's a bit more complicated of concept. Uh, instead, it uses the word copy to mean power of six and the number immediately after it specifies how many. <laughs> okay. So it's basically just like saying two, like... A... Yeah, okay, you just repeat that. So it's basically like... Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like expressing... 234 as 2, 10, 3, 10, 4. Yep. <laughs> I think that's the equivalent to that. Um, that's kind of silly goofy. Silly goofy. <laughs> yeah. All right. um, okay, interjections. Interjections only affect the tone of the sentence and are always on their own. Some of them are homophonic with existing conjugated words, so they are separated from the rest of the sentence with a comma. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, that's the good old let's eat grandma and let's eat grandma yep. <laughs> uh, difference. Uh, hello, I give foods to you here is the example sentence here. <laughs> okay. okay, word order. A basic sentence VSO. Okay, uh, anything marked with dative can go either before the subject or after the object. Okay. okay. Or after the object, not in between. So it's like SO is like grouped together somehow. Yeah. Uh, circumstantial information can go at the beginning if it serves as background information or it's important for understanding, or can go at the end showing afterthought information, usually spatial, spatial temporal relations. That makes sense, I suppose. Gotcha. It's not that important, you just add it to the end. Dictionary. Okay, we're getting to the dictionary already, I think. All roots end with A. Oh, that's Okay, so it's sense. worse. So it's less than. <laughs> it is not. Six to the three to the power of six. It is three to the power of five. 
That's it, because the A is just, every root ends with A. It's just 3 to the power of 5, which means we have 243 possible roots. Wow. Why, why would you... Why, why would you classify the A as part of the root, then? You could classify it as some sort of uh, affix that just gets marked in all derived forms. Yeah. And then just no, analyze yeah, the roots as smaller. roots end with A. So that is strange. That is so it's, strange. It's not really a part of the root, then. Yes. It's like some sort of I don't know what suffix it's that the every root uh, just has. It's, it's uh, but what? Yeah. But it is. It would be strange. Yeah. For a, a, a <laughs> word to have a dictionary form that is not used in the actual language. <laughs> it's that an exclusively dictionary it's... form. <laughs> <laughs> that is God. not how dictionary forms work typically. <laughs> it's typically um, the infinitive, sometimes it's the first person singular. Some, if you want to be extra, you can do like Old Irish, where it's the third person singular is the dictionary form, because of course it is. Anyway, I'm not going to start anyway, talking about Old Irish, anyway. we'll, be, we'll be here for about See, two hours. I think the... Okay. Uh, because I think the, like, I, to my understanding, uh, Algonquian languages often have a root that uh, is like monosyllabic, and there's almost a singular suffix, of course, that changes between roots that just goes in to satisfy uh -huh. the uh, minimal syllable conditions of the language. So we could just kind of analyze the roots as not actually including the A, and then treat the A as sort of yeah. just uh, an inserted affix to prevent a minimal it's syllable, something. and then analyze the yeah. roots as smaller. Oh, it's just for fun tactics, because it's, it's supposed to be CV, CV, CV. So the actual roots are C, V, C, V, C, but okay. for no so the is a vowel, and the A is just empty. It's, yeah, okay. it's like inserting a schwa so you can actually pronounce it. Yeah. It doesn't, okay. the A wouldn't even be phonemic at that point. It's just... Yeah, it's <laughs> not even really for That raises the question whether speakers of this language would even perceive the final A oh, as God. a separate sound. If it's just it there says, to satisfy the, the phonotactics of the language. Oh God. We can read this as the author that is trying to describe this new exotic language is yeah. just doing a little oopsie of an analysis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, what a discovery. Yeah. And that's it. The, the rest is just the dictionary. That is it. I, I don't know. I maybe maybe in the comments. Something forgot to oh, wait, send the go. translation. Forgot to send here the translation go. too. And there so, it is. Would, would anyone like to render this? <laughs> <laughs> render uh uh oh uh, yeah, my God. okay. I guess I can read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can uh, you read it? Or do you need me I'm to gonna zoom in. <laughs> Here, I'll zoom in. I'm gonna pronounce it with a very anglicized pronunciation because I cannot be bothered to deaspirate this oh stuff. Oh my God! Uh, Just <laughs> deas it's not that hard. Just deaspirate the stuff. <laughs> It, it, it's it's not super hard to do it, but I I don't it's have very, the brain it's power. Fairly simple. Just, Your native language isn't English. It's got very it's got very few uh, phonemes. I think they'd be okay with aspirated consonants. <laughs> I suppose yeah. that distinction isn't particularly relevant in this case. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why you're. <laughs> what are you specifically <laughs> doing? <laughs> I need well, to the thing is. Typically, eight, eight, when eight, I look eight, at a oh, no. okay, keep going. <laughs> no, no, I, I was, I was kidding about how I needed to pronounce it. Oh no, it's just no, it's for me because that. when I look at a conlang, I, I always or any language, I've been, pretty much any language that is in English, honestly, I assume that the stops are or that any letters really represent the values that they have in the IPA, even if that's often not the case. So when I try to yeah. pronounce a language, I don't know. I typically just use the IPA pronunciation for them. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah. Um, does anyone remember the Does anyone remember the stress rules for this language? No. It was every it was, unless no. it was reduplicated. It, the last syllable gets the stress. Okay. okay so. Okay. Um. Why am I trying to deaspirate it? <laughs> Screw this. Coco. Coco. Ikika, 
I'm sorry. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> this is not working. <laughs> My can't tell where the syllables to... start and end. You had a pretty good okay, run. You're, you're probably the worst person we could have picked then for a language that has six. No, I have to do this. Buttons. I have to prove to myself that I can read one con language. Okay, okay, this should right. be the easiest one. Go on then. Go on. The stress throws you off, though. You expect it to be penultimate. Yeah, or at least I do. It is a challenging stress. Yeah. All right. Continue. Otoki. Ko Ko koto kito itako opo pipo kiko kikika kiko go kato okakapa opo go kapipa kitaki popo kokati kiko go oto go pokako kitiki pokakapa takoki go I hate that font. All of the A's and O's look the same. <laughs> that font is Comic Sans. Yes, it is. <laughs> of course I know, it is. I know. It looks like a slightly different version of Comic Sans because I feel like... I don't know. Maybe, Maybe it's Nito Sans or something like slightly off. Something like that, yeah. Anyway, Doesn't there you Comic go. Sans often been praised at making it uh, easier for people with dyslexia to yeah, yeah. the characters? As as I know for, me, it has been. for me, it really, really depends. Like, if it's larger, then yes, very much so. But uh, if it's, it's quite smaller, small. then certain letters uh, certain letters become extremely similar looking, and certain letters that are usually very hard to distinguish become a lot easier. Mm. It's just a different experience. But also, a lot of that, I think, is kind of overhyped. <laughs> that is a brilliant uh, yeah. <laughs> The comment, it reminds me of Zesse, but actually interesting. It <laughs> 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 oh man, oh that's pretty good. All right, yeah. Well, Pee -pee poo poo. Uh, 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 <laughs> no. Demonetized after everything we've been through. That that, that was it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, last three. Last, last three. three. I I, I this say one is a short last one. Three. Yes. Look at that. Five minutes. Cool. We still have thirty-three minutes remaining. This last one wasn't actually the hit. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. Cool. Let's do it. Oh, here we go. And away we go. So a few days ago, I learned that the cursed conlang. Oh wait. Oh oh. So a few days oh, ago, I learned that the cursed conlang circus was happening this year, and then found out that it was too late to submit anything. But I had an idea, so I'm making it anyways. Because conlangers don't care what humans think is impossible. Okay. My language, which can be okay, pronounced, okay. Okay. can be interpreted as can speak, is an international auxiliary language. Longkanaya's oh, consonants are pretty simple. Oh, no. Na, p, t, k, okay. A, okay, okay, f, off to a good s, start. Sure, that works. L, oh, which is the whatever language, right. which, depending on what you're comfortable with, can be pronounced l, y, l, r, s, z. <laughs> oh god. Or anything else as long as it's lateral. Literally. To make yeah, things simple, yeah, Nongkanaya uh, has a three vowel system. Its vowels are ew, ew, ew. It's both oh, English and Mandarin those. Chinese use <laughs> tiptoe. What is it easy for most people? To make Did it easy, even to easier. Map out the vowel in case some tip tongue is hard to <laughs> pronounce. Oh, no, square? <laughs> Hang on, wait. Are they trying to map out the vowel space in a square? Or did they just throw them in random orders? I can't tell. I think we well it. well. <laughs> I don't think they map out the vowel space too well because well actually yeah, it's not at all. so so yeah all uh, of them because, span well, the vowel a, space. A is not yeah obviously they do <laughs> because a is not a front a, a low front vowel. These are, it's a these are all mid. like it's really. Small. These are real yeah, ambiguous diphthongs, like that. Yeah. That e. Where, yeah, none, none of these, where, <laughs> where is a pretty horrible diphthong oh, that would man. probably collapse into a into <laughs> way in most sense of languages. Oh man. Uh, well, I don't know. You have to hold your mouth in a completely different way in order to get these diphthongs coming out. If, <laughs> if, if you if you play around with a jaunt type this or some shit. <laughs> Oh, I just realized how this is supposed to be read. Hold on. Yeah, this is diagonal. A. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. But the worst part is we have a, but the IPA for it is ill or way. So the letter A <laughs> means oh, is no. pronounced ill or way, and the letter O is pronounced. Oh, no. I think it's it's, it's yo, yo and oi, and, and the letter <laughs> A uh, is pronounced. 
<laughs> it's it's I can't even tell what well, well done. I need to like turn my head. It's I yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I yeah, I like, I yeah, as like a trip song. I yeah. That means that the language is pronounced Leoknaya or Leoknaya. Yeah, Leoknaya. Oh man, that's really funny. So this is fascinating because we have two diphthongs and and a trip song, but the vowels contained in those polyphthongs do not occur in isolation. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. language would not oh, yeah. last past one generation. Yeah. They would collapse <laughs> yeah. This would not last. Yeah, this wouldn't last. This wouldn't last like, last like a single conversation. Yeah. I mean, Th this is like one of the phonemes is extremely reasonable. A appears in every IAL, so it's like. Oh a yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> the cost, the cost, the cost. Ew. Okay. Okay. I would probably argue that oi, well, oi is actually pretty bad too. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the most sensible one of all of these, though. <laughs> How the hell is oi the most sensible one? I mean, you have ew is pretty I'm... bad, we is worse, and aya You're is right, also horrid. <laughs> oi is the aya least is like bad the of all of these. Yeah, yeah obviously aya were... is the most horrid, but I think oi is the think... least bad of these. I bet what happened is they originally had the I or Ya, and then realized, wait, I is not cursed enough. Yeah, well, exactly. I know what I'm exactly. doing. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, they did this, the, the vowels, they did very intentionally, yep. and it shows. Yeah, 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 I yeah, love yeah, it. yeah. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. It's also it's fascinating that you, like, meaning. need to put in a lot of work just to be able to pass this here. <laughs> it's just reading the vowels is already a, a, a not a just mental way. gymnast, but literal gymnast. I need to like turn around and contort yeah. myself in strange ways yeah. to be able to read. I mean, it's better than that researcher who used emojis for Marshallese vowels, so... <laughs> no, no. Ken Hale... Hale is a legend. He's fine. <laughs> uh, Certified. Wasn't that, video wasn't that, that you the one who used like, the, the like, a phone emoji or something for something? Also, I, I double checked. You, I it's important to distinguish. Yes, it's emojis, but in the original paper, they were wingdings. Uh, yeah. Way cooler. <laughs> it is cooler. No, I think it was an excellent oh, decision. I just think it's less readable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Anyways, the, the typography in me is screaming right now because this is atrocious. Yeah, let, let's, let's see where this goes. Good. For instance. Okay. Yeah, for instance, uh, we could have just done that. We could have just waited two seconds. The language of the most speakers, Mandarin oh, Chinese, right. has tone uh, to make it easier for oh, them. No. Lok Naya oh, no. also has <laughs> to tone. To make it easy for Mandarin Lok Naya has speaking. two types of tone. <laughs> Level and contour. Level can be high yeah, or that, low. That statement is contour fascinating. Contour can be rising or falling, depending on what's more comfortable <laughs> to the speaker and what. Let's let's keep playing even the video if your because language I is a tone language. Even if your language is a tone language, that doesn't mean that adding tones to a language makes it easy for you to speak <laughs> the language. Just because you, your language has a set of phonemes, adding more of those does not make it easier to pronounce. That is not how. Anything works. Again, I'm sure hey, that was very intense. Let's, let's keep playing the video because... Her language has a bunch of stops. Oh, yeah. Her language has a bunch of stops. It must be really easy for you to pronounce. <laughs> Someone tell that to the Salish family. Or fucking, yeah. uh... Or, like, fucking any of the Caucasian languages. Yeah, really. Oh, I yeah. had a curse, I'm sorry. It's really <laughs> easy to pronounce. We've asked, uh... We've asked... Well, like say twenty people. All of them have said it's very easy to pronounce. Yes, they were all Georgians, but who cares about that? <laughs> uh, yep. Oh, uh, let's keep playing the, the video. Just because, just because like we asked I... only exclusively Archie speakers. <laughs> let's keep playing the video because I guarantee they're gonna post a uh, what's it called? Um, a like more information the second we play it in yeah. two seconds. That sounds the yeah. best. Contour tone is marked in the spelling with the diacritic, since not everyone has the same keyboard layout, it can be any diacritic, whichever oh is God. easiest for you. Oh no. god, now! syllable structure is ZCBC. Okay. <laughs> Syllables may start oh. with a single hey. consonant or a cluster of two consonants. Consonant okay, hold on. Um, must be different <laughs> manners of articulation. Yeah. This is a bit of a lie because that V is really two or three vowels. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because remember, there are no isolated vowels in this language. We're talking phonemes here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, it should be but C otherwise, can be any two consonants. C C. 
Yeah, V V in parentheses. Oh God, V V in parentheses. That's horrid. Oh, kill me. <laughs> oh man. Let's just keep things simple, so speakers don't have to memorize any complicated phonotactic rules. <laughs> Like uh, uh, pounds, they have to memorize. Ah, yeah. Can be swapped without changing the meaning. So Xia and Skya are the same. Uh, oh no! Oh no! Cluster oh no! Can be spelled X. There's no pattern to when it's spelled that way versus K S or S K. Oh, Syllables God. can end with a consonant or not a consonant. If they end with a consonant, the consonant is unspecified for place of articulation, <laughs> voicing, and manner of what? articulation. I mean, it can be whatever oh, oh consonant the speaker finds easiest to pronounce. This unspecified oh, consonant is spelled okay, I will C, say... since that letter can be... <laughs> God damn it. Okay, I think we're kind of... I'm not even sure how best to express this, but they're trying to simplify it while completely missing the point. And that's yeah. probably on purpose, let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, but exactly. still, the fact of the matter is, is that I'm talking about, <laughs> you can pronounce it as ska or xa, depending on which one is easy to pronounce, completely ignoring the fact <laughs> that we have a consonant cluster at the beginning of a word that is causing these problems to begin with. Exactly. And we could just not have them by not having two consonants <laughs> at the beginning of a word. And ironically, that, like that is my so... favorite type of linguistics humor, is just yeah. people treating yeah. like people treating overcomplicated things as extremely simple. Yeah, it's like, it's yeah. Yeah. helping it out you know it just makes it easier <laughs> it's a very tongue-in-cheek kind of humor yeah. exactly i love it this is good all right let's continue used for so many different sounds across different languages and even within one language to make it easier for speakers of other languages to learn all vocabulary is derived from the top one most widely spoken languages if the majority <laughs> of source My languages don't okay. agree on something then the words are put into a super secret Magical phonetic averaging algorithm. Even I don't know how it works. Uh, I think phonetic try, averaging to squeeze algorithm. Squeeze it into oh, the no. phonology and phonotactics of Lognaya. Word order can be S O V, O S V, S V O O V S, V S O or uh, Oh, hold on. I just depending oh, on every single one. I'm not sure if you heard that, but he really did say he really pronounced it as Lueknaya. Yep, he did. <laughs> That's the name of the language. Lueknaya. Yep. And this language suffers from a, a bad vowel orthography. We can all read yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's I, I, beautiful. I find the CK uh, annoying as well. Why? Why? <laughs> why is it CK? That is true. Because it can be anything. It can be any consonant. So oh, it's CK. God. Why not? All right, anyway. Can I apply my speakers metathesis and, and switch the K and C? And if so, how would that be pronounced? Same way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Most comfortable with. To make it easier for speakers of different Word languages. Order. Yes. Nouns are not yes. marked for case number. To make it easier for gender. speakers of other languages. And verbs are not marked for tense, <laughs> aspect, mood, or negation. No. All of those are needs for that. context. That last one, All meaning is not being from context. as an additional okay. advantage than in Lokanaya, it is impossible to lie. And in fact, this is the meaning of the name, Lokanaya. I'm Lung not sure that's how it works. Lokanaya, <laughs> meaning can't. Take, for example, the sentence, I have a cat. Aya haya kaya. If it turns oh, out no. to be false, that's totally fine, that's because you could have also said no. this, Aya haya kaya, spit my water which means my I keyboard. don't have a cat. So now the translation of the... Passage from the B movie script. I, 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 but there I, is morphology. Go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. They said there wasn't morphology, and then they had a gloss with morphology. Oh, no. The, neg the negative is that it's, it's a zero. It's a zero. The negative is the only morphology, and it's a zero. It's. It's still morphology, though. Yeah. We were promising no morphemes, and we have covert morphemes, but morphemes nonetheless. I was tricked. Yeah. It's a covert morpheme. It's, a covert it's a morphology morpheme. right there. <laughs> Unless all morphemes are null. Yes, all morphemes, morphemes are null, probably. <laughs> ah, yeah. I case, honestly, if every morpheme is null, can you still call up morphology? It's like, is it really there at that point? Well, okay. Is it really a thing, or is this like, like if every mo if you have to analyze a language as such that every morpheme is a null morpheme, it, are there really morphemes in that language, or is that are those things just the product of a linguist's hyperactive imagination at that point? But no, but uh, the thing is, if every morpheme were null, there wouldn't be words. There would be nothing. <laughs> 
I mean, you you can't it, you can't have language without morphemes. I, I suppose morphemes includes low roots, so yeah, you're right about that one. Uh, if this um, I mean, if this uh, specific uh, negative particle uh, of a zero, which is not a particle, never mind. Uh, <laughs> if that specifically uh, is the only bit of uh, morphology or whatever, um, doesn't. You could also just interpret that as the root verb having just a really unclear meaning. Of yeah, I suppose. It, yeah, it's really guess, just lexical yeah. then at that point. Because, yeah. I mean, that's another way of putting it. The only morphemes are lexical. There is no <laughs> grammar here. Yeah, true. The only language that truly has no morphology has already been judged. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's oh, no. finish this. Aya Haya Kaya. Of the <laughs> passage God. from the B movie script. Paya, Aya, Kray, Laya. No, because you pronounce that as swain, multiple kaya, syllables. Laya, Oi, Knay, Fnay, Sman, Xaya, Fire, Sman, Poto, Fire, Floy. Poi, Foy, Laya, Xaya, Foy, Xaya, Oi, Koi, Mo, Kao, Knaya. Oh, God. Oh. And that's it. There that's you go. it. <laughs> There we go. So Very the next good. one we skipped because no submission of yeah. nothing became baseless on. Yeah, yeah. So So let's take another half an hour watching the next one. Oh my god. Alright. Two left. This one is our Nifnuff. Let's see what our Nifnuff's got. Oh god, the name sounds like some weird. Yeah, I'm some not actually weird sure website. how it's pronounced, honestly, but that's <laughs> we're last about year, to find out. I... <laughs> let's let's find out. Come on. Entered Agma Schwaz's okay, first online circus with Aoi, a language focused on pain. It didn't crack oh, the yeah. top three like I'd hoped, but <laughs> yeah. it was a fun project and a crowd pleaser. Oh, no. The name of the language this is Aoi also is one of our mods, on. by the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we can go normal speed for this one. And the fact that this language <laughs> emphasizes pain, that's pretty good. Now the grammar, that is like, I'm gonna give that a solid like 99 right there. That, that was, yeah, that was cool. All right, I liked it. I already knew I'd enter the second circus if it were to happen, but it wasn't until the day of the official announcement that I got the idea for my entry this year. Don Durmaja, the language of... Okay. Actually, I'll leave that as a surprise. Oh, For now, oh, we can no. skip straight to Dondermaja's orthography. Oh, Dondermaja is written okay. in the Latin script <laughs> in space-delimited syllables that each contain, at a maximum, a prefix, an onset, a glide, a vowel, a coda, and a suffix. Of these, only the vowel is mandatory. Incidentally, Donder Maja can also be written in the Tibetan script okay. if you feel like it, but <laughs> this showcase will skip it for convenience. And I know what you're thinking. Okay, Vanessa, that's pretty cool, but how is it pronounced? Well, my name's not Vanessa, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> After the morphology. <laughs> as far as Donder Maja is concerned, there are only two parts of speech, nominals and verbals. Both of them place all of their inflectional morphology, as well as some limited lexical information, onto a single syllable known as a determiner for nouns and an auxiliary for verbs. Determiner syllables okay. all use the vowel E, encoding one of five vowel classes oh, on the glide, one of 12 yeah, cases on the onset, and specificity on the coda. Okay. Specificity encompasses okay. things like definiteness, position related yeah. to the conversant and template. possession, effectively oh, merging definite articles, dictate determiners like this and that, and possessive markers into one affix. But the information yeah. density of determiners pales in comparison to the verbal auxiliaries. These use the vowel u and come in five varieties tied to the lexical properties of the verb. This information is marked on the glide. Verbs have three aspects. Aorist, okay. progressive, and perfective. Oh, nice. Aspects, nice. along with negation and emphasis, are marked on the onset of the auxiliary syllable. Meanwhile, quick, mode is marked on the coda and encompasses both verbal mood and non finite forms. Something we I got mandiv. The what? Is, uh, because, in case someone doesn't know what the aorist is, it's, it's the perfective aspect. But it's often called the aoristic aspect simply because. It's easy that we don't confuse it with perfect because perfect is not the same as perfective. Yep. <laughs> and those are often confused. Yes, indeed. Aorist is a term from Greek. It's like Greek, at least ancient Greek tense. I think modern Greek still has it. I don't know. But ancient Greek has it at least. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's. It, I, I use that in uh, in Phosphon, like Proto Stern Kicking. Mm. Anyway. When you hear the song they're about to sing, the music was starting to kick up. Yeah, really. 
forms. You got mandive, definite, participle, subordinate, supine, <laughs> all combined to make the five donor maja mode. Then there's also the six mode called the inquisition. <laughs> six donor maja mode that each come in like a realis and curialis not pair. Not saying in order. Oh, well, 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 maja yeah. in donor maja, numerals can be written out with Arabic numerals or written with successive syllables, all using the vowel o. Each syllable can be analyzed either as a single digit of a base 144 number system <laughs> or as an amalgamation of, of two base 12 digits Naturally. with the onset representing numbers from 0 to 11 and oh, the coda no, representing like multiples of 12. The yeah. type of number is represented <laughs> on the glide. Words are fine and all, but they're useless without a syntax to order them. And Donder Maja's syntax is best characterized as MAD, which is an acronym <laughs> for Mandatory Alternating <laughs> Direction. Oh, cool, in syntax, words are organized into a hierarchy of phrases that each contain a head and possibly adjunct phrases to further describe it. For example, in the noun phrase red balloon in the sky, the head is the noun balloon, and the adjuncts that describe it are the adjective phrase red and prepositional phrase yeah, yeah. in the sky. Sure. If the head noun comes before its modifiers, then the phrase is head initial or right branching. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Conversely, uh -huh. if the noun follows its modifiers, then the phrase is head final, or left branching. Can mm -hmm. you see where this is going? The MAD principle in Dondur Maja is defined as follows. All uh, phrases have the opposite branching direction of the maximal projection whose head they modify. Oh, no. uh, so even oh, if a no. phrase is head final as a whole, all of its constituents that aren't projections of the head, oh, no. i.e. the adjuncts, are head initial, and vice versa. Uh, if English no. used MAD like Dondur Maja, then the phrase, uh, I bought a cute no. dress at the mall, would actually read, I <laughs> dress cute a the, the mall at box. No. This, of course, assumes a no. head initial main clause phrase. In fact, Thunder Maja uses the head direction of the main clause <laughs> for... Uh, actually, nothing. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> I dress cute a the mall at box. <laughs> this is not what a sent expression. No, this is not what a sent expression look like. Uh, Good God. God. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, I, I wonder what natural language is the closest to this. I don't I think, don't we, think like, so. No, sorry. I, okay. Can we just go back a bit and play that one more time? How far back this? <laughs> yeah, just here. And just really process this. All phrases mm -hmm. have yes, the opposite it's... branching direction of the maximal projection <laughs> whose head they modify. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> left branching phrases have oh, right branching adjuncts and right branching phrases have they left alternate. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> oh god. Oh that's good. This Normally kind of it just that... goes one way. This is the kind of shit that if it occurred in a nat lang, no one would believe it's a real nat lang. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For the yeah. non linguists basically a, a very simple way of putting this, if you show that tree again. Uh -huh. uh, Normally, it would lean in one direction. This one just goes straight down. <laughs> it just goes straight down. It's, it bounces it's, its way back up. It's, it's, just, it's, less it's actually tree. nice this way because I'm not sure if you've run into this before, but if you've ever drawn, if you ever tried to either draw or generate syntax trees, it just don't, oh they never God. fit on the page. Yeah. They just run it's off the so page. Bad. Just, it's so bad. It's so horrid. JS syntax it's tree can suck a dick. <laughs> actually, that should, that should that should be cut out. Okay. Probably. <laughs> Wait, actually, no. Is it? I'm trying to think of this. Where do whatever you want. Sorry. You're, continue. You're fine. We already have enough little NSFW tidbits in here. It's whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but this is, f funnily enough, the a language with probably the worst possible approach to uh, branching is the easiest to render <laughs> like the easiest to typeset because the normal way is just horrid because the tree just never fits on the page even for a relatively straightforward sentence like this sentence I... would not really fit on the page i think if you um, if i you... love this it's yeah, like a, I am it's, obsessed with this. It's, it's, it's like a syntax I, I, root I, system instead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I think this, I think this would be so cool for writing poetry. Oh yeah. Oh. Would, oh interesting. Wow. Especially if you came up with a really cool writing system that kind of took advantage of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the wonky branching. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Well, let's move on and see what happens.
Actually, nothing. I couldn't think of a use for it. The complexity of Matt is somewhat tempered by the fact that Donder Maja only uses seven categories of phrases. Of these, modifier phrases deserve a special mention. That's a lie. This kind of phrase has a no head, but allows nouns with non-core cases, not nominative or accusative, and entire clauses deserve adjectival or adverbial roles for nouns and verbs respectively. Syntax also involves movement, and Donder Maja's movement patterns okay. are extremely simple. <laughs> Only auxiliaries and determiners can move, and they travel to the head of the MP that scopes over them. Oh, if no such MP exists, uh... then the auxiliaries stop at the head of their claws, and determiners don't move at all. <laughs> this brings me to my personal favorite consequence of math. Ah, uh, no! This participant clause from the upcoming translation. Just Here, so the auxiliary moves first to the aspect head, no. then the clause head, then to the empty modifier head. The auxiliary head. moves via the aspect head to the clause head. <laughs> This is like, uh, oh, this is like, little the best bodies. way I think to describe this is, is chaotic evil movement. <laughs> it's, it's like looking at a game of a, a frogger, where it's like dodging yeah. all the traffic cars. Yeah, or, or like, or like, um, a, like the sorry board game, where it's like, nope, sorry, yeah. move back to, <laughs> move back to this random I'll spot. Say, I will say, a, me when I try, this, this is me when I try to draw a straight line. <laughs> what's what's gonna happen how many auxiliaries are allowed to occur how many auxiliaries can you slap into a single sentence oh and how would God. the movement work in those oh cases no. how oh how bad can this get i feel like we'll find out i just how have bad a feeling okay. let's see. all right let's, let's see let, let's listen let's see this participle clause from the upcoming translation oh. here the auxiliary moves first to the aspect head then the clause head then to the empty modifier head. <laughs> However, even though the auxiliary phrase is head initial, and thus the auxiliary should precede the lexical verb, it ends up after the verb by moving to the modifier head. This oh. effective <laughs> reversal of head direction <laughs> through movement is having to all DT and CP adjuncts to the null modifier head. <laughs> <laughs> it's head initial except that it's, it's reversed except oh, actually <laughs> but it's, it's, it's actually it's a double reverse it's unreverses itself <laughs> oh, God. okay okay let's keep going let's keep going finally we get to the phonology <laughs> finally Strictly finally speaking, there is none oh god you don't oh, speak no. this language you scream it Oh, I scream no. it. In fact, <laughs> we all scream it. Because Dondermaja is a language oh, entirely no. encoded in ice cream. No. Communication with <laughs> oh, oh, oh. happens by feeding ah! your interlocutor several ice cream dishes in the appropriate order. Approach them with the first dish in hand and say, Arkadashima or Arkadashlarima if you're addressing multiple people. That's Once they are right. finishing the first okay. dish, present the second, then the third, etc., until the sentence is complete. If for some reason you are physically unable to hand the interlocutor their dish, then texting the pictures of the ice cream is acceptable, with the caveat that all <laughs> ingredients must be visible and clearly identifiable from the picture alone. Uh, Each dish corresponds to uh, one syllable uh, in the orthography. Ice cream. Each glyph in the syllable represents not one phoneme, but any one seafood. ice cream. <laughs> that is, any, any yeah, pepper ice, above ice 2500 SD2. What? Yeah, ice creams. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, let's God, take let's take this in for a moment. Is... Dry topping. It starts off fairly sensibly. Sprinkles, uncolored chocolate, colored candies, raisins, cook crumbs, bacon bits, <laughs> short gummies, short gummies, <laughs> long gummies, <laughs> marshmallows, nuts, chips, crisps, and crouton whatever that is. You don't know what you know croutons, know croutons are? Oh man, you're No, out. I don't recall. Croutons that. are the best thing on earth. I love croutons so much. <laughs> Interesting. It's just... It's just bit dried bread used yeah. as a salad topping. It's dried bread. It is more like than dry bread used as a salad it. topping. It is a way of life. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, you're right. It's used for soups as well. 
Uh huh. Oh, I hate soups. Maybe it's because of that. Uh, okay. you, no, you have to. You have to eat croutons on their own. You're you're not appreciating the taste okay. if you put them on other things. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah. No, no, I think anyway. let's keep looking at the table. Any chocolate yeah, marshmallow. Good good. Uh, caramel is anything first, else that's strawberry nut butter. Oh, the garnish. Um, Any pepper above? <laughs> <laughs> I already pointed that one out. Uh, oh, I missed oh, it. Uh, Any seafood. Oh, fuck. Yeah, cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick. <laughs> when it says kiwi, judging by the rest of this table, I don't know if that's fruit or the bird. <laughs> <laughs> or just anyone it's from It's the New people. Zealand. Yeah, it's a Either people. one is fine. <laughs> oh, oh, anyway. Oh, God. Seafood on the other Okay, also love cinnamon stick, stick, like not just cinnamon, no, the entire <laughs> goddamn thing. That's expensive. <laughs> right, anyway, anyway, let's 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 go on. Let's it's go an on. expensive language. Exactly, very much. So. Ingredient or category of ingredients based on the glyph's form and position. Note that the notation only encodes which kinds of ingredients are present, not their proportions or how exactly they are presented. The categorical approach to ingredients allows for flexibility with regards to personal expression, ingredient availability, and dietary restrictions, such as with mint ice cream being in free variation with pistachio. <laughs> Ingredient choice and presentation can also interface with the social dynamics between interlocutors. For example, if you don't like someone, you can feed them a sardine head hidden in the middle of some blueberry ice cream. <laughs> Although I suppose you can just do this with anyone you don't like, regardless of whether or not you're speaking Dondermaja. You may wonder how such a bizarre <laughs> language arose, and, well, here I must confess that I didn't actually make it myself. Dondermaja oh. was created in an alternate universe as okay. a secret code between a group oh, okay. of seditious ice cream merchants in okay. Turkey who, for a variety of reasons, want to overthrow the administration of their president, Pismis Yemek. The politics of this alternate Turkey are beyond the scope of this showcase, although I'm pretty sure that universe's version of Caspian Report has at least five videos on it. Being a secret code developed by a profession <laughs> we're true. renowned for playful antics should explain plenty about Dondermaja, from the backflipping syntax <laughs> to the very medium. I mean, how do you think the language got its name? <laughs> Can world renowned for playful antics should explain plenty about Thunder Maja, from the backflipping syntax to the very medium. I mean, how do you think the language got its name? Everything I've been uh, through the, the, oh, not today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway. Breathe. Anyway. Oh, moving on. Jesus moving Christ. on. It's <laughs> not so good for my health. Yeah. Uh, oh okay. God, I feel lightheaded now. Okay. Or if not, uh, you need to show me the original source video where that came from, and I need to keep it forever. That those. <laughs> and anyway, let's get. God. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> Despite being made primarily by monolingual Turkish speakers, Dondermaja's vocabulary is entirely a priori. One syllable roots okay. with fixed dry ingredient, ice cream flavor, and garnish are used on their own or compounded together with other roots to make larger words, agreeing oh god, in syrup flavor with their determiner or auxiliary. <laughs> Can we pause real quick because maybe it's not immediately obvious the like the extent of the cursedness that's at play here is not obvious because if you look at the lexemes it looks like it's ipa it's not ipa these are ice cream favorite flavors remember yeah, that. yeah those, those, are, those are the ice cream yep <laughs> they look like words but they're not <laughs> they're ice cream <laughs> and, it, and the name of donder maja is the covert ice cream speech <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, okay, let's see. Auxiliary. Because determiners and auxiliaries contain relevant lexical information, but they're often separated from the rest of the lexical unit due to MAD and movement, more complex sentences yeah. use the presence or absence of whipped cream and the type of dish on which the syllable was served for reference tracking. Hands. This is entirely optional, however, and is mainly used to help beginners. We conclude the showcase with a translation of the first three sentences of the B-movie script. 
A document containing the full notation, gloss, and syntax trees for each sentence is linked in the description. Now, unfortunately, I can't pop to. through each of your screens individually and feed you several ice cream dishes in a row. That would be a hassle to organize. Instead, I will present the dishes one word at problem. a time yeah. with notation and gloss. Note that the lexical items are considered separate words from their determiner or auxiliary, so these items will be listed separately. And out of sheer contempt for the human condition, there will be no additional referent tracking. For those of you that are concerned about food waste, Thank rest you. assured that everything you're about to see has been eaten, oh, with the God. sole exception of the cinnamon stick. Good and God. that's the showcase. Oh, I've been our Nifnuf, and with any luck, God. I still will be this time I next week. And so, <laughs> without further ado, <laughs> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Totality. The laws of aerodynamics. <laughs> 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 Bits. Hey, the key. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. All is eaten rush. except for the Wait, cinnamon stick. That? Did you eat the raw what? shrimp? Did was, you eat the raw shrimp? What is it? Did they just see strawberries brought, on it. strawberry ice cream? Oh my god. <laughs> That's the part you're concerned about? <laughs> Yeah, no, never mind. Any, Sorry, my bad. I forgot. Any one of these, any one of the, these images. The shrimp is also serve. concerning. This one is concerning. <laughs> any one of these images have... just posted on the Discord with zero context would get so many questions. <laughs> I like how some of I like how some of these are. I want to like. I'm checking real quick. Actually, tasty. Stay. Yeah. Um, and there's some of them that went. Yeah. Me. Like, to die. <laughs> exactly. And um, let's see if they've posted any of them on the disc. I gotta check now. I, I kind uh, of doubt it. I kind of doubt probably it. Probably not. Probably not. They, yeah. they better have cooked that shrimp before eating it. Yeah, really. All right. Let's let's finish this. Right. This this is this is. <clears throat> let's home do stretch. It. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh God! Surprise! There's the steak bite. <laughs> Strawberry. Oh, shrimp again. Oh. <laughs> oh. And gummies. Long gummies. You have to make the distinction. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I didn't see any hot peppers. <laughs> Not, I'm guessing. Not, uh, I'm guess the, Christ. Okay. I'm guessing. Uh, to see we we gotta take a now. look at the syntax trees, Agma. We gotta <laughs> take a look at the syntax trees. Oh yeah. Is that the one linked in the important. description? <laughs> Supplemental documents. Okay, we gotta take a look at this. Shook. Oh, did trees. you see the description? That was a really funny joke in the description. I told everyone that I'd make a language like no other, only to end up eating uh, my work. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. All right, let's see if this loads. It's probably a big PDF. Oh, okay, God. there we go. Okay. All right, so what? we we, we kind of got the point of this. I want to see the actual. Oh, they're thing. using Zelatech. Very nice. Very nice. Ooh. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh no! Man. What is the, oh god? Hold on, we have this auxiliary that hey. jumps to the aspect head to the complex. No, it stops there. Okay, at least that's okay. I thought it was. I thought yeah, it was like one movement. You so look at the other one next adjacent to it. The hopping the auxiliary phrase. It's hopping over there, and then it's hopping over to to the C node. Yeah, uh, and also <laughs> like the. A, <laughs> the determiners are like switching places. <laughs> like one jumps to the end, one jumps to the front. <laughs> Dear God. Dear God. Oh. Uh, oh oh no. I don't see anything wrong with this. Oh yeah. This yeah. is atrocious. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Look at that auxiliary. It jumps all the way to the front, all the, then all the way back. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. 
Oh, Look at the bottom. Uh. There's three hops down there. <laughs> to the fuck? Three hops this time. <laughs> oh, God. oh man! Oh no! Oh, oh no! No! <laughs> no. <laughs> you know it's fun when you have to make it small. Oh no! Oh, I thought there was one hopping all the way. To the tree. Say I, I thought I thought, but no. Fortunately, it's two. Okay. No, it is. Thanks. It's like five different instances of hopping yeah, yeah, yeah. two times. Yeah, fortunately, <laughs> otherwise there wouldn't okay. be too much. Good oh, God, good. this is absolutely horrendous. Oh, that's amazing. This... Like, look, no, look at this tree. This is this is not how it curves. <laughs> this is, I syntax tree should not it, curve. It curves back. It in curves. It's a syntax banana. It's a banana. Okay. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it kind of just looks like to me. It kind of looks like a guy sitting down. Uh, at, with a really, really big hairstyle. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, could, I could see it. I wonder if you, like, if you can construct a sentence that ends up looking like an S. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you write with sync? You can write with the syntax trees in this sentence. You can, like, turn them into letters. Yeah, turn them into big letters. Oh, no. Oh god. Oh, I, this is absolutely horrible. Out. Good god. Calling, calling this an ice cream language is really selling it short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good <laughs> god. Oh man. Oh, that that's good. Let's you guys ready for the final submission that we're going to be looking at in the big video. At this point we have to be. I hope we yeah. are. I never it thought I would see this day. As a side note, Y S M Q T H L Q Y H. Yes, Y S M. That's what is a fascinating channel name. Q Y H, with Pipilati or whatever it's going to end up being pronounced. <laughs> obviously, we don't know yet. <laughs> yep. All right, and Ugh, let's see. God. We'll we'll see what we, speed would be the best. Hello, welcome to this submission for the Curse of the Combat Circus number two by. <clears throat> Akmashua. <laughs> that is I. <laughs> so uh, you can see that uh, can the language is called Pipilati. Yeah, speed yeah. this one up. Yeah. Yeah, go. I'm going to go over the pronunciation later. Like, you get the point. It's, like, it's just a list of bullet points here. Like, I'm just going to more or less read it. Like, it's a polysynthetic including a language. You can probably see what's going like just a bunch of really long words. Like, it's just a bunch of words glued together, basically. It's a the sentence structure. Is Basically, always SBO, subject, verb, object, like. Maybe 1.25. Like <laughs> it's a syllable time language, and the stress it usually falls on the last syllable or to last longer syllable because there is a length like at the end. So it's pronounced Pilati, not Pipilati, Pipilati, it's pronounced. Oh. It has harmony, I'm going to go over that later. Mm -hmm. It's okay. supposed, it's not supposed, theorized to be part of the two big family of languages from South America, making it like it distant less nasal calls in a Guarani, if that makes. Oh. Sense as something you can probably understand. Okay. And okay. Basically, we'll no one speaks we'll it because they're all dead. Like, the next part is some <laughs> the lore of the language. <laughs> it's just the story of how the Americans were described. With. Like, you probably heard this story in school in like every single grade. I'm not going to read this. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, here we go. <laughs> this doesn't reach out or something. Good. It looks fine on OBS, so uh, yeah, I know. Uh, so, chapter 2, phonetics. So, we start with the vowels. They are just A, I, U. I suppose, that's uh, fine. Nothing too old the ordinary. Classic. And, yeah, there is the harmony between E and U, and A is neutral. Like, okay. I have to go over this later. Okay. So harmony with three vowels. The consonants. There is, like, a... There is more than three of them, so I'm going to... Instruments them a few at a time. First, the I'm glad those vowels are three. Ah! Basic ones. I think harmony with three vowels has happened which are before. Which not by voice close it for like voice. Latin. Trills. I'm not saying you're wrong. Just... <laughs> no, I feel like. You see, I can't think of the example, but I feel like I've read about that in a natlang somewhere. It it definitely feels like the kind of thing that some random obscure language would do, but the the, the only 
problem with it is that they said A was neutral. So how are you supposed yeah. to end it with harmony with the other two vowels? Because either they can go in the same word or they can't. And at that point, it's, it isn't really harmony if it's just one vowel. Or maybe A I mean, is I guess... just the one that gets cancelled out by the other two. Yeah. No, A is neutral, and then E and U cannot occur in the same word. That's why it's PP Lati and not Pipu Lati. <laughs> pipu. Yeah, but at that uh, point, can you is that harmony or is it like anti anti harmony at that point? Because <laughs> it's not like these vowels can occur in the, together. It's like these can't occur together. It's like the opposite almost. I see. It's eh. Yeah, let's 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 watch, see where this goes. <laughs> oh god. And then there is the god. voice lingual radial drill. Uh, you could argue that uh, uh, Pran Pra contrast with each other because they think that more contrast <laughs> is Oh no, the not the bilabial lingual label. What, what is that? You you you're going to ask for sure you, 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 to pronounce it, you, you have to grab a finger, usually the oh, yeah. index no. finger of the speaker's dominant hand. Place it on top of your lips, like oh, right in no. between the bottom and top lips, and you move the finger up and down, <laughs> making the trill motion, so you end up with a. It is a pulmonic consonant. By the way, the, the doctor prefix the... comes from the Greek word yeah, for like finger. Yep, well, yep. Got... Next is the. Remember when I said there was a harmony thing? It's all consonant harmony, so here's the part. Uh, so God. there's the harmony things in between. Oh, no. And <laughs> two different tones. There is also. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Not very good at that, but it's I think so it's good enough. And there's era and la for good measure. I... Those For are good, all the yeah, <laughs> obviously. Here's the romanization of them because, yes, I use X for the pillar trills because it's close enough. Okay. It's supposed to be easy to read and type. It will look everything the same, otherwise, it's good enough. So, balls part two. This is the syllabic consonants. Uh, uh, oh, yes, the syllabic consonants. So, the balls aren't really just A, E, U. There is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the syllabic consonants. There's also bone length. There is not just one distinction. There is short and long balls. With, okay. uh, yes, the of long course. ones is just written with a colon because it, it, it works. Classic. If it works, it ain't stupid, you know? Uh, there's also <laughs> over long balls. And you can even uh. have over, over long uh, balls. No. Uh, so funny. Santa no? moment. Yep, Santa. And now, for the tactics. The okay. call is mandatory. Only open syllables. The L intermediate is just re or la. And uh -huh. the others are what you will expect with re and la, it's only allowed after the voice explosives. And the syllabic consonants are also only allowed after the syllabic voice explosives or no onset at all. You can have a syllable that's just <laughs> that's allowed. <laughs> and oh my the God. maximum syllable will be something like pra, pra. Yeah. That kind of thing, it's the limit. Okay. And here's the full list, list of the harmony. Oh, there we go. Two classifications. There is a bunch of sounds that don't really play. And the brand bla is just break harmony. Like, well, <laughs> sometimes. Like, if you have a compound word and mm. at the border between the two words, there is one of two sounds, you will probably ignore oh if they God. have two different. So, okay. one has so, e vowels and the other. Ooh. The what? So would they be opaque segments then, or...? I guess. Something mm. like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, that's gotta be what it is. That, that, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that's what it is, and we'll see. <laughs> Transparent versus <laughs> opaque. And here's a list of all the reasons why it will break the harmony in state compound words. Oh god. I'm not going to read <laughs> this. It's sort of like how likely it is. <laughs> and if the harmony isn't no broken and particular one word has E and the other has O, it's just the, the less dominant noun is just going to get all the balls changed and it's going to be hard to recognize, but it is what it is. Chapter 3, Las Reglas Las. Oh god. So, yeah, the, again, it's like gluten and polysynthetic, it's kind of redundant. <laughs> uh, uh, there are no standalone okay. adjectives and adverbs. You should scrub a noun and use it if it was an adjective. 
that's your objective. If the world order is now the end objective. But like okay. you, that's you cannot reasonable. do that because you will form a compound now yeah. instead that's preferred. Mm -hmm. That's the Pipiletti way of doing things, you know. Uh -huh. And there is no no gender system. The, the, there is plurality, singular and plural, and the rest of the oh, public family, including corrupted this again? one, does oh. that. Of course, we can't have our last uh, submission without one last audio corruption. Hopefully it's the last. Uh, we have time for another one. Ah, uh, the memories. Ah, uh, uh, the memories. The memories. <laughs> God. Okay. <sighs> All right. Let's 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 do this. First person plural with exclusivity. So inclusive first person plural and exclusive first person plural. Ah, uh, you like, so just so you know. Uh -huh. Yes, um, verbs. Uh, it, because the agglutinate part, it's, all of those things are just have a prefix or a, a suffix, either prefix or, or suffix, affix. Yeah, that's a regular word, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I wrote affixes, so I guess. It's more for person, this aspect, null, and negation. No, not for interrogative, just negation. Interrogative is just implying the intonation. <laughs> like a bunch of languages, every language does that anyway, so it's not needed. So. The negation particle is just the colon at the start means that the previous vowel gets longer. It's, there's always a previous vowel because only open syllables. And it's, it's two because mm. of the mm. harmony. So mm -hmm. one for the E, for the close harmony, and the other for the open. It depends on. It has to always agree with the root word. I, I, you, you know what it means. Like, yeah. I, I hope. So here's a list of the, mm. the person prefix. So this is the conjugation for the person. and here it is the first person saying plural inclusion exclusive that i said before and here are the tenses yes there is a lot of distinction this is way too specific and then here are the aspects Three future tenses. is there yep. perfect and perfect <laughs> you fully expect there's a blue perfect which used to be oh, the perfective boy. suffix reduplicate and now it's, it's something frustrated. then there is the perspective <laughs> aspect <laughs> with a, a perfect <laughs> means a perfect <laughs> means that the thing is stated that perfect means it it was true. It, it finished being true like before it was stated, so it's no longer true when you're saying now. Prospective <laughs> is the opposite, so it's not even true yet. Something imperfect and prospective is something that hasn't started yet. And using first yeah. the, and using the perfective suffix and then putting the prospective suffix, making like a weird contradiction thing, it will give you a frustrative aspect, which is something that was supposed to be true at the time stated. <laughs> but, but you're frustrated <laughs> because it's not anymore. <laughs> it was supposed to go. I, uh, I, I get it. I get yeah, it. I know. What is the that, proper that, linguistic that, term for that? Yeah, is there one? That, like, I don't know. If there is one. Begin, like, 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 I'm not so fixed. Uh, 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 you. I don't need to explain this. It's, it's you should pretty know, classic. Either. Pretty classic. There is ones. nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, now, okay. Now let's get a fixes for plurality cases and aspect. Yes, aspect. Uh, it's the same as fixes that we've heard. Like, uh -huh. different. So uh -huh. now let's for get okay. Aspect. You could argue. <laughs> yeah, get it. Cool now. It's the same suffix for aspect. So we say that. So if you were to talk about I guess your no card, that you have to say necessary. card on the prospective <laughs> aspect. That was same card in prospective aspect will mean like a, will give you the meaning of my future car. But not my future guy, but like future guy. Uh huh. I uh -huh. think you understand. I'm so bad. Okay. I, like, I get it. Sorry. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the terminals, like articles, demonstrate that those things are also fixed at the start of the world. Uh, I said that about uh, making compound words, compound nouns, usually. Uh, yeah. He says another thing of the two family is like the nominative is marked. And so there's nothing to ordinate with the cases. There is no genitive because. You use the you say pronoun the thing as a suffix. Uh huh. And uh -huh. buzzing uh, again. The pronoun the possessor. The audio uh, again. Ah uh, yes, another. The last time I'd uh, hope. An another Good to, to cherish the is memories. It's crossed. It's the is it so thing. bad that we cannot bear five minutes of it? I can't hear well, the No, the thing is, no, it is, it is. Yeah, it is so bad. Oh, it is horrid. It? Okay. It is it and absolutely it horrendous. The longer it lasts, the worse it gets. Yeah. Yes, it, that's it, also it, the thing. It, it just kept, up. It keeps compounding onto mm, itself. Okay. Yes. Uh, gotcha. The, be the I, beauty of I'm my not bandwidth sure and Discord bandwidth put together. 
I don't really hear it on my end. I'm not sure if that's just my own yeah. shitty thing, like it getting caught up in the regular noise of my device. <laughs> That might have something to do with it. Judging by your mic, yeah. that might very well be yeah. the case. All right, I mean, we should be, we should be good to go. If you're not wearing headphones, then you probably won't be able to hear it at the levels. I am wearing, I am wearing headphones, but they're taped oh. together. Oh god, okay. Good god. <laughs> Yeah. Your setup might be worse than Agma's currently. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, let's... F you say your computer's dying. Yeah, it anyway, is. Anyway, let's it continue. Is. And, and this has been killing it. Any anyway, let's go. <laughs> My <laughs> desk so is a cardboard that give you That implies that it's the, that it's the okay, owner. Yeah. So if I were to talk about Agma Shua's channel, I would say he channel, and you will already know what I'm saying his channel. Yeah. Or channel of his. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make sense? Can you understand anything of what it. I'm saying? Oh, I know. I get it. <laughs> Do I even speak English? <laughs> uh, here's the pronouns. Uh, there is a whole list with the different cases, which is usually just a suffix that, of course, is not quite regular, so I have to make this giant chart. I'm sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> here's the plural suffix. Uh -huh, Nothing too uh -huh. the ordinary. <laughs> and, um, oh, yeah, that this list has just this. Sorry. Articles and... <laughs> <laughs> the articles. Uh, this one actually has examples. Like I actually tried for this one. There is indefinite and definite articles. Uh, you will be asking if art articles in English natural. Are, aren't they like an European thing? I mean, yeah, they are straight up loan from Spanish. Like it's just la. <laughs> like the indefinite. <laughs> well, la. they're still <laughs> the <laughs> definite <laughs> articles. They still yeah. complex. Yeah. So like, for example, there is the word turaca, turaca, which means table. A table will be la turaca, but D table will be la turaca la. Okay. Oh, I have no. another example in there. It was just to show a thing with a friendly, it's with an A, and the, with the A sound, and the article is loud, which ends with an A sound, so oh, the word wonder you get a oh, man. long A. So, okay. A, B, At least it's not A, L. just B is yeah. aperiti, <laughs> A, B is la aperiti, and D, B will be la aperiti la. Oh, See, this God. was Spanish, and, uh, the most sensible than el agua. We, yeah, had, we yeah. needed an entire flowchart for this. I, I know, I know. Graphic design is my passion. But... <laughs> <laughs> so you have to ask. It's the thing. fucking. Oh my god. Like, is it it's the railroad like, diagram. You can see it from where we are talking. If yes, it, they work like you will expect demonstratives to work. If the thing is yeah. far away, like you cannot see it, it's not present. Does you does have the diagram need to if be the speaker discounted? and the listener know what the thing we're talking about is. And I think a table would have been game. more comprehensive. <laughs> I, I like this though. It's, it's, I, it, it's pretty good. I, I like think it. I think every language should be just uh, diagrammed. I mean, di well, diagrammed with uh, flowcharts. Yes, yes, just flowcharts for everything. Who needs who needs graphs and tables? Just just yes or In fact, no. In fact, you questions. can all just make it one really complicated uh, flowchart. Like, oh my is gosh. it a noun? <laughs> yes. No. Is it a verb? <laughs> yes. yes. No. <laughs> Phonologists hate you. Try this one weird f trick: flowcharts. <laughs> is what is you're it bilabial? What, yes. Is. No? What, what, what you're describing, Ren, is basically a binary encoding of grammar, which, uh, in some theory, might have an application. Oh man. <laughs> Because it's it's basically just encoding grammar via just like you could do, you could. I wouldn't actually. You could do it pass binary. that to like I, an evolutionary I, algorithm, and then like you could do machine learning with that if you just encode grammatical features as binary. Well, you see, the thing is, uh, I wouldn't do it as binary. I would actually ask the question, "Is it a noun?" And it would be like, <laughs> "No, it's a fucking verb, you moron." Yeah, or, yeah, but no, that's equivalent. <laughs> but nouns get aspects. No, language. it would have multiple different things. Is what I'm saying. Oh yeah, nouns of aspect yeah. in how oh, my yeah. God, nouns yeah. of aspect in this. Exactly. Anyway, let's watch the last yeah, two let's, minutes let's and this. seven seconds of this <laughs> entire circus. Yes. Literally. If it's an object yes. or or someone or that's one class, and the other is if it's an event or abstraction. Yeah, yes, there is some, some kind of animacy distinction. Uh, there is no gender but leftover, I think. And there is also a different one because if neither the speaker nor they know what the thing is, it's just talking on some random concept that they don't know about. Yes, complicated, I know. Like, uh huh, uh huh. Necessary, probably. Yeah. And uh, now we have uh, this is. Oh, uh, um, yeah, uh, it's there. Oh, there we go. Oh, uh, Jesus I Christ. I need to read this, like, you get the point, like, now. We, we are reached <laughs> the point we were waiting for. The part where 
the moment you have been waiting for like when I speak and actually pronounce the thing or try to like hey, not an easy speaker like this is so bad I'm sorry but like but I'm good at saying it I think All I'm right. the best in the world of pronouncing this ah, I'm sure that's true <laughs> 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 that and was professional. <laughs> that was <laughs> can we? Okay. Really you can well tell he, they put all of the time and effort into. That I have a request. Yeah. Can we go back and watch it again on two times speed? Yes. Oh yes. Let's let's listen to it at two times speed. Oh, not quality speed. Native okay. speaker time. Native yeah, speaker yeah. level. Let's see. Okay, here this goes. Brilliant. Wow. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh my god. Well, that, there, there that, we go. You should, uh, you should and write that as like a proper con lang. Also, yeah. this is can... a, a this is such a nice site. Like, take it in. No more con lang videos in your recommended right yeah. now. Oh yeah, you're None. right. Right? Look at that. We watched yeah. them all. We watched them yeah. all. <laughs> oh, oh, this is so nice. Oh man. To be fair, the rest of us were still going to be getting them because they weren't watched on our channels. Yeah. 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 Uh, not my problem. Well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all right. I put my scores in. Oh. I'm going to leave without even really saying goodbye because I'm so tired. See, uh, okay. I'm not even going. Goodbye. All right, GG. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Her red's gone. GG, yeah? Uh, okay, what is the remaining what time as I'm about to click this? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, wait, hang so... on. Give me just one second. Oh, fuck. I missed it. <laughs> okay, hold on. We're going to do it again. <laughs> Bubble Do it again. Do it again. You had one job. Okay. Uh, which t which what... tab is it? I hey, know, it's, it's, it's the first tab. That's three. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm technologically illiterate. There's three tabs. Anyway, I can't three sheets. I give up. Bubblingwa, at the bottom <laughs> left, okay. there is a selection, yes. okay. tab selection, one that says okay. submissions. It's I the first it. one out Remaining. of three, I'm the first of three, the number that is two before three. I'm looking at the time, okay. <laughs> looking at the time, behold. Yes. Remaining. Zero. Yes. I don't know when this is going to come out, but it's currently the 18th of November. Yes, today is November yeah, When were submissions due, just for further context? September the officially 15th of September, so... <laughs> and when was oh, the original Calming Circus Season 2 announced? July 15th. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Agma needs a vacation. I do. I really do. I... I... I want to, I'll probably take like a couple months just to draw my comic and just live in peace for a little bit before we move on to the, the, the next era, the, the next phase of Agma Schwa land. Yeah. This, because yeah. it has gotten to the point where the circus has taken up a tremendous amount of time on our part. And this is only going to, uh, presumably, only going to get worse, quote-unquote, if you will. So we have to find a way to make it so that judging the circus submissions does not take us two months, because we have other things to do. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> it, it'll be better for everyone if we find a way to make this exponentially easier for us next time. So, yeah, well, and we'll keep in mind that... We've had like four to six hour sessions just judging stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, if yeah. Any, if any any final words? Uh, 2022 winner uh, with Seraphim Babalingua. Uh, <laughs> anything profound? <laughs> oh shit! Um, <laughs> no, sorry. Um, 
No, I, I, I think I'm, I'm, uh, good job, everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna go good now. Lord. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. It's, it is bedtime for all of us. Uh, yeah, this was a fascinating two months. It was, it was. It was an entire uh, era of my life. 120 submissions, almost an entire day's worth of videos. And two months later, we're done now, and um, we're going to do the circus again next year, but we're never going to do this again. Yeah. That I'm sure of, because yes. this is... Good God. We're, um, we're I now... I've heard th these goddamn three sentences read out 120 times now, to the point where I not, not only know them by heart, I also know them in French, pretty much. Uh, it's. I'm probably never gonna watch the B movie again, because <laughs> I, I get PTSD if I ever saw the opening. Uh, oh man! So, <laughs> yeah, good card. Go. Uh, very very profound. And my final words will be: I probably consumed about forty cough drops over the course of this. You watching oh. me on camera, audience members, watched me go from having relatively recent haircut to growing my hair out to getting a haircut to now having my <laughs> hair fully grown out again. Um, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I've aged a year in the past two months. <laughs> and you can really, you will really be able, or you, I have to talk like it's an all in the past because obviously it has been from the perspective, it's now all in the past and from the perspective of the views, but uh, you have pretty much seen the passage of time over the course of these. Yeah. I don't know how many hours this yeah. is going to be. And, and, you, and you've watched the, the platform, the, the medium of this video gradually degrade because it has literally been <laughs> killing my computer. The, these massive files and recording sessions. My internet is spotty. My webcam died. My computer has started to lose access to the memory. So like the little the little Patreon image and the uh, logos that I had in the corners of the little uh, circus judging screen are gone now. And, and now I'm recording with my video it's on an falling iPhone. Apart. It's falling apart. The computer's dying. And I just have to hope that I can edit the video, render it, and get all that out before it dies for good. That is my mission. That is that is it. The, the end. All right. Thank you all. I'm going to end this recording for the last time of the Curse Conlang Circus. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll see you in like one last live action Bye. segment. Goodbye. GG. The end. Thank you all for being such good circus freaks. Uh, yeah, the end, bye. All right, on this phone I have with me the winners of the 2023 Cursed Conlang Circus. And yes, I know, I cut out all like the judging segments on here because I didn't want anyone to feel bad if they got a low score. But just know, I'm, I, I appreciate all of you. Thank you all so much for your submissions. They were all amazing. It was a great time. It was, it's, it was a long time, but I appreciate it greatly. Again, we did score them though, based off of the three criteria. Creativity of the concept, cursedness of the content, and execution of the language itself. With that in mind, the top score you could possibly get is 100, and a lot of them got very close. And there are the honorable mentions, which we'll get to in a bit. But in third place, with a score of 99.333 repeating, is drum roll. <laughs> Eleanor's Hanzi Yu. That's right. The uh, that the cursed phonetic realization of Chinese characters. Absolutely amazing. Good content. Solid. That, that, that's your third place. In second place, with a score of 99.91666 repeating, we have... Drum roll again. We're drum rolling one here. Two-handed it is... Kdex24's 
Klong Critic episode number 69, This Thing. You know, that absolutely chaotic one with the frickin' phonology iceberg, etc. Chef's kiss moment right there. Absolute certified beauty. Thank you for that. And in first place, our 100 straight perfect score for this year goes to... God, this suit is tight. It goes to Cat Mistberg's Goptiam. Like, holy crap. If you've seen that one, I mean, you have. It just happened in the video. But well, holy crap. Absolute masterpiece. You freaking created an encryptable... <coughs> an encryptable and decrypting... Decryptable? Is that a word? You created an encryptable and decryptable language where the grammar is fully encrypted as well. Holy crap, so many people make one-way operations, but that one is successfully a two-way operation all the way through. It's a freaking algorithm. Oh my god. Majestic. Yes. You heard Babalingua's words, last year's reigning champion. Welcome to the uh, first place club. Awesome stuff. Like, seriously, congrats. Let's get on to the honorable mentions. First, our honorable mention for the highest scoring language involving rocks, like physical rocks involved in the language itself, with a score of 95, Shadriarch's Geolang. Mmm. So certainly the rockiest of rock langs indeed. Next, our highest scoring a posteriori conlang, as in a language based on another language. With a score of 98.666 repeating, we have Stephen Kramer's Delure, the, the other ultra French. <laughs> what a well, what a majestic thing. Like, oh man. That one was awesome. It was weird seeing myself in the thumbnail of somebody else's video for three months without being able to actually click on it, but I'm so glad I finally was able to click on it for this. And finally, <laughs> the crazy honorable mention, a language that is both a posteriori and involves rocks. Not too much ended up truly qualifying for it, but of the ones that did, they all got very close to winning this award. So. With a score of 94.5, we have Efnemisch's Stendansk, the Danish but with rocks in your mouth. That one. Again, still zero idea how to pronounce your name, but I hope you get immense joy every time I botch it. Congratulations, Stendansk was beautiful. And in all reality, so were all of the languages that were submitted here. Absolute monstrosities that drove us all to the brink of insanity, and I think I'm beyond that. For you winners, I'm gonna reach out to you the same way that you sent me your submissions, hopefully within a week or so of the circus video coming out, and I'm going to, if you, know, if you want, I'm going to send you your prizes. If you choose not to accept a prize, then it'll go on to the next scoring person and so on. This time, instead of me sending out like a big thing with a physical Autojune book that might get lost, like what happened to Babalingua's, like I don't know if you knew this, but Babalingua, the first place winner from last year, he didn't get his because I sent that package out to where he was and then it arrived, but his roommates didn't recognize his YouTube username and so they sent it back, but by then I had gotten rid of my P.O. box and boom. Poof, it's just gone. It vanished into the ether. Nobody knows what happened to it. <laughs> so, in order to save money, so just in case something like that happens again, it won't be like a massive financial loss to me, um, I'm, I'm gonna be sending envelope-sized prizes this time. And these envelopes are gonna be full of, they will be filled with several Agnashwa stickers from the Red Bubble, a drawing by me that tries to represent the language in some way. Who knows how I'll be able to f like physically represent it, but I'm gonna try and make a drawing for each of you and include those drawings in the envelopes. And a $25 Amazon gift card. Just for the first place winner, I don't have extra money. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Who cares about the scores? Who cares about any of it? It's not even really, really a contest. This has been just a showcase of all the awesome things that y'all are capable of. Creating 
disturbing content, sometimes with production value much higher than anything I or any of the other online YouTubers are capable of. Like, you guys are amazing, and posting them on YouTube was great, because look at all the ones that got, like, great views, right? Like, if you wanted to be a conlang or linguistics or world building YouTuber or whatever, this could be the thing that gets you into it. And you know, it's, it, that, that would be awesome. I would love to inspire the next wave of conlang related creators on YouTube. So, and uh, you know, I think it's fun. Go do it, try it. It literally, you know, what's the harm? Literally can't hurt. And I just wanna say one more time that if your submission somehow didn't get into the big video, I, I apologize, like there, there's a few reasons that it could have been uh, not put into the big video, as in it could have been an incomplete submission, it could have been submitted to me incorrectly or with insufficient content, it could have been that it contained content that was too offensive to go onto a YouTube video, um, you know, if, if I wanted to keep some semblance of monetization or it was like really offensive and like there was no way I was voluntarily putting that up on there anyway. Um, in which case I'm not sorry, but um, anyway, <laughs> yes, there, there, there is however like a slight chance that like I actually genuinely missed someone who submitted it on time and did everything right. Um, I, I doubt that because I double and triple checked it. I, I tried really, really hard to make sure I didn't forget anyone who shouldn't have been forgotten. Um, but if that did happen, I apologize and I'll, I'll get it onto the, uh, the, the playlist or whatever. And one more thing while I'm standing in this spot, after this circus, shenanigans are all done, which I am very excited for. I only have a little bit more editing to do as of standing here and uh, talking to myself in my studio. I'm going to be kind of uh, a little absent for the next couple months. I'm taking a much needed break just for just for like January and February. There are some things that I'm going to do casually though. Um, there's going to be the announcement of who won fan favorite. That'll just be a YouTube short. There will be a special little live stream that was intended to originally be the 10,000 subscriber q and I'm gonna do that sometime in January. That doesn't take much effort. And then there's going to be a thing with my patrons and channel members, which we've been talking about doing for a really long time. And you know what I'm talking about if you know, but we're, I, I'd like to actually do that. And uh, that, that should be pretty easy. And then in February at some point, we will be doing our review of the 2023 Conlanger census results. So that'll be another live stream. So just a few live streams and a couple YouTube shorts maybe, but other than that, I'm not doing anything that requires a lot of commitment in the next couple months. I hope you'll understand after all of this. <laughs> I hope you'll understand. So yeah. Well, that's pretty much all I got for you. But there is one final thing, the elephant in the room, the question you've all been wondering, is there going to be a third Curse Con like circus? And the answer is, I mean, probably, but it cannot be the way that this one was. Like, I'm sorry, like it was, it, it was entertaining to make such a comically large video, but it is literally not feasible for me to do it in the future because in, in the future, I'm gonna have even more subscribers, presumably, and it's, it's just not gonna be realistic to do it the same way that I did it. There's gonna have to be time limits on the video submissions or something like that. So I know a lot of people have already said like, oh yeah, I'm already working on my language for next year. And that's cool, that's cool. Feel free to work on your languages, feel free to make them, but please hold back on the video submission part until I know exactly what to do. I'm gonna talk to people, we're gonna have a little discussion and figure out how we're gonna make that work. Because it can't be like this way. It, there's gonna have to be some kind of limit, some way to shrink down the amount of things that we have to go over or to shrink down the amount of time that each submission takes up without speeding up people's videos, etc. So keep that part on hold. Feel free to work on the languages, we'll figure it out. Also, I got a lot of things going on in my personal life in the coming year that's gonna make me quite a busy person. So we'll see what happens. 
All I know is 2023 was an extremely cursed year and this was a beautiful, beautiful finale to it. You've been getting these videos and you're recommended for months if you're anything like mine with my algorithm. And now here it is, complete in its full picture, potentially two enormous videos or one if I got lucky. And this is it. That's the end. Have fun in 2024. May it be an even more cursed year than this. And with that, Nuh is out.